Yeah. So um uh, ni uh, all uh, the the uh, other speak other participants will no have will not have right to talk right until un unless they are opposed. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Because last time we organized one conference and that was like a. uh somebody was even singing in there so so i have a question so if there are some question uh, there are some questions from the participants will i be able to see it yeah it will be in the they can raise it in the chat so there is a chat button button uh, at the bottom where you share the screen from there you can actually check it so uh, check it in the chat my, and i'll moderate the the question uh, question when you have finished the talk Sure, sure. Okay, that. And then good. they will have a, a better, uh, will better take a question, not like what is molecular biology, something which is, if they are not understanding what is molecular biology, then this they need to read it from book or Wikipedia. But the question which is important from the material will be taken into the consideration. Otherwise, we may end up seventy-five questions for you. So. Yes, yes, I understand. also dr kumar um the questions that yeah. people may be posting on youtube live yeah there there we will answer as we go uh, okay. go so i will be watching there also okay. right. so we will answer that and if there is a question which is very specific to the to the speaker uh, or the trainer mm -hmm. we will go where we will moderate it and we'll answer it maybe today tomorrow so okay there right. they, there one can even go later on right so uh but i'm monitoring there also so as soon as we are going live i will be on another computer where we i will be silently seeing so it's like i have a studio here so uh okay yes so and as we go there uh, more and a student and all uh, from my team will also be be uh, be available there on and they will also start answering questions on the life and even i will answer the, them live so all set to go yes dr kumar yeah okay 0 1 2 3 let's go okay so uh, uh dr uh, pankaj uh, stage is yours please introduce dr priyanka yeah so uh, welcome all and very good open good morning uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, dr priyanka singh she is an assistant professor at indian institute of technology jodhpur in india uh, she is uh, a cell uh, biologist by profession and She has been uh, working uh, almost now for three years uh, in, at IIT Jodhpur. Before this, uh, she uh, did PhD uh, and postdoc from um, Munster in Germany. And uh, so, uh, it's um, for today's session uh, we are uh, going to talk about uh, fundamentals of biology. And uh, Dr. Pinkal uh, is uh, an expert. Thank you, Pankaj, for the introduction. So I welcome you all to the first talk of this workshop. So uh, I hope you all had your morning coffee and you are all pumped up to actually uh, learn some basic molecular biology. So uh, this will be a, a nice uh, jog up kind of a, a lecture for students from biology background. and for the participant who do not have a biology background so during this lecture you are going to hear few keywords uh, which will basically help you in the coming uh, two days of this conference so there is a great lineup of speakers and we all are looking forward to hear some of the good talks in the field so let us begin with learning some fundamentals so uh, i'll start with a uh, uh, the uh, fundamental uh, unit of living system which we all know is a cell 
So there are diff there is a diversity in the cell types. Uh, there are two major types of cells, which is one is the prokaryotic cell type, the other one is the eukaryotic cell type. So prokaryotic cell type, basically uh, the example is bacteria. And for eukaryotic cell type, the cells which are found in human body are the eukaryotic cell types. The uh, main difference between the two is that the genetic material, which is called the DNA, uh, in case of prokaryotes, it is uh, present inside the cytoplasm, whereas in case of eukaryotes, it is present inside a membrane-bound organel, which is called the nucleus. There is, of course, differences in the way the DNA is packed, the DNA in prokaryotes is circular, whereas in eukaryotes, it's linear, and it is condensed with the help of packing protein into further, uh, there are different levels of packing of the DNA in the eukaryotes. There are certain membrane-bound organelles present in the eukaryotes, like mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, which are absent in prokaryotes. So, uh, now I mentioned that DNA is the genetic uh, information storehouse for the cell. So this just represents how uh, DNA is packed inside the eukaryotic cell. So in eukaryotic cell, there is nucleus. Inside the nucleus are present chromosomes. So chromosomes are made up of this genetic material called the DNA. Now let us start by looking at what is DNA and uh, what, it, what it is made up of. So DNA has this double helix. It is around two nanometers in um, size, the diameter of this double helix. If we look at the basic unit uh, by which it is made up of, so it is made up of these nucleotides. So a nucleotide has three main parts. One is the sugar, which is a five carbon sugar uh, called the ribosugar. In case of DNA on the second carbon. So this is the first carbon and this is the second carbon. Instead of a hydroxyl group, there is just a hydrogen atom. So there is one oxygen less. So that is why it is called deoxyribonucleic acid. On the first carbon is attached uh, covalently bond, a nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous base is also falls into two categories, purines and pyrimidines. So purines has this double ring-like structures. So purines include adenine and guanine, whereas pyrimidines have uh, cytosine and thymine. And pyrimidines has a single ring-like structure. So if you uh, might, if somebody has handled the DNA uh, or the uh, nucleic acid for that matter, they would remember that it absorbs light at 260 nanometer. So this is mostly because of the uh, nitrogenous base present in the uh, structure of the DNA that is responsible for that absorption. Now they, on the uh, fifth carbon, there is present a phosphate group. This phosphate group is involved in the linkage with the next nucleotide. So uh, using those uh, phosphodiester linkages, a sort of backbone of DNA double helix is formed and the nitrogenous bases are projected uh, in between that double helix. And these nitrogenous bases are involved in the hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding is a, a non-covalent type of interaction. It plays a very important role in holding a lot of uh, biological molecules, DNA being one of them. So there are certain rules by which uh, this DNA is organized. So if you remember that uh, in uh, the... Uh, there is a lot of contribution from different fields. So uh, at the end, uh, Watson and Grick in 1950s, they got Nobel Prize for elucidating the structure of uh, DNA, but they had huge help uh, from Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin, who basically identified the uh, uh, X-ray crystal structure of DNA. And uh, the Chargraph's rules basically defined what, how, in what, what combinations these bases uh, interact with each other. So that basically, they, that forms the basis of this particular structure that we know now today. So A, adenine and T, thymine, they are involved, they, there is a double hydrogen bond in, uh, which is uh, by which they are interacting with each other. Whereas guanine 
is basically in, uh, in, involved in interaction with um, uh, cytosine with the help of three hydrogen bonds. Uh, now there is a polarity also involved with the nucleic acid. So they have a direction. So they have a five prime end, which has a free phosphate group. And they have a three prime end, which has a free hydroxyl group. The double helix is anti-parallel. So one strand is running in five to three prime direction uh, and the other one in the opposite direction. So by convention, we read DNA string in the direction of the transcription. Transcription basically happens uh, from five prime to three prime direction. So you might, must have seen uh, the way we write uh, the nucleic acid. So we say, uh, for instance, in, these, in this example, at the five prime end, there is a cytosine. So we say C, A, G, T. So this is five prime to three prime direction. And for the other strand, the five prime to three prime direction is in this, uh, in, in the opposite way. So there is G, T, C, A. Now the DNA in eukaryotes is uh, condensed to actually fit into that particular nucleus. Uh, so as I mentioned that the double helix, the diameter is around two nanometer. It packs around these proteins called histones and uh, forms this bead on a string like structure, which is called the nucleosome. And it's around 11 nanometers in diameters. Then this a nucleosome further condenses with the help of some scaffold proteins and forms this chromatin structure, which is around 30 nanometers. This chromatin structure further undergoes different levels of condensation. It loops out and it finally uh, forms this uh, 1.4 um, micron structure, which is called the Chromosome. So you might have seen these chromosome if you have done some basic biology experiments. For example, in um, during the cell division, you see that uh, during the metaphase stage of the cell cycle, these chromosomes are arranged at the metaphase plate. Now, uh, talking about chromosomes, so uh, every organism has a sort of fixed number of chromosomes. So in humans, we have uh, 22 pairs uh, of autosome, autosome uh, uh, and two pairs of, uh, and uh, a pair of sex chromosome. So in somatic cells, which are uh, non-reproductive cells, so you have these 22 pairs. 22 pairs, these are called homologous chromosome. Every pair, so this is a uh, chromosome number one. These are homologous chromosomes. One is from the mother and one is from the uh, father. So you have 22 such pairs, plus depending if you are female, you have a XX chromosome, or if you are male, you will have a XY chromosome. So 23 into two, so in total, there will be 46 chromosomes in the somatic cells. But, but the germline cells in humans, they are haploid. They will not have this, uh, this is a diploid phenotype, but these are haploid. So they will have half of the number of chromosome. So 22 autosomes and one uh, sex chromosome. So there will be total 23 chromosomes in the germ cells. Now the uh, DNA that I mentioned, I said that it's a, it is the genetic storehouse of the cell. So it has all the information how the cell is supposed to be behaving, but it itself is not doing the work for it. So what the gen DNA does is that no. it basically creates some workhouse, workhorses, which are called the proteins which can basically do the work for DNA. Now there are different, uh, uh, there's an intermediate molecule, which is called the mRNA or messenger RNA, uh, which is a mediator that basically, <coughs> whatever information that is present in the, in the DNA that is translated and a protein is formed. So this is also the central dogma of molecular biology that we know uh, now. So uh, in this uh, central logma, there are certain important steps. One is called the transcription. So in the process of transcription, so the, uh, the DNA has all the uh, generating information. There are certain promoter sequences. There are certain protein coding sequences, which is depicted in blue in this picture. There are certain, and these uh, protein coding uh, regions are called the exons. There are certain uh, uh, sort of, um, intersecting or the non-protein coding regions, which are called the introns. 
so uh, initially people thought that the introns were like junk dna because they are not coding for any protein but now we all know that introns also play, play a very important role in the regulation of gene so they are not there just uh, like that there is a purpose that we have introns in our uh, genetic material so there is always a start site some sequences are important for the transcription uh, starting and the other and th at the end of the gene there will be a stop site so rna polymerase will recognize the promoter will sit on this dna and it is going to read these uh, codes which are present in the dna and it is going to transcribe it with a process called the transcription i'm not going into too much detail uh, it's an overview so you will now a sort of mrna messenger rna which is also called the transcript is going to be formed now the transcript has the information for protein coding which is interrupted by the information which does not code for the protein so there is a requirement to splice off these intron non protein coding region from the mrna so this transcript or the messenger rna undergoes splicing event that's also a highly regulated event and it is also uh, important for the gene regulation so the uh, introns are spliced off and the exons are joined together and this is the final finished product that you will get a continuous uh, uh, information of protein coding sequences this is the mature uh, messenger rna and that basically is read by the translational machinery and a protein is formed the protein once formed will also undergo a lot of post translation modifications for instance phosphorylations uh, or uh, any other kind of uh, post translation modifications modification that will basically help in the folding of the protein as well as regulate the function of the protein and finally we'll have this sort of work ho horse for the for the cell and this is the finished protein that is going to go and do the function for that particular cell chika chika so now i have uh, introduced you to this another uh, nucleic acid which is called the rna so let us look at the rna and how it is uh, different from the uh, dna so rna is a uh, ribonucleic acid so uh, the major difference from the dna is that it it is a sort of not a double helix but uh, unlike the dna it's like a single standard molecule uh, one important difference in terms of the nitrogenous bases is that instead of thymine it has a uracil so adenine is uh, so adenine can bond with uracil in this case of rna the rna also forms secondary structure so it, you will see that they have a sort of they stem loop like kind of structure they also have a polarity 5 prime end that has a free phosphate group and a 3 prime end which has a free hydroxyl group there are different types of rna uh, molecules these are major types this is a messenger rna so basically it, it gets translated it has the information uh, which is read and uh, to make the protein then there are ribosomal rna so ribosomal rna basically help in the translation they together with the uh, they associate with certain proteins and they form these ribosome subunits uh, and these ribosomes basically assist in reading this mrna it helps in translation then there is transfer rna transfer rna uh, helps it has two ends basically one end is recognizing the code which is present on the mrna reading it and the other end is basically uh, trying to um, uh, catch the particular amino acid which is uh, suitable for that particular uh, code which is present in the mrna now i am talking about this genetic codes so genetic codes uh, it's uh, amazing the kind of information present in the um, dna so there is a sort of uh, uh, a sort of code uh, the information is not like random you have certain rules or guidelines uh, which is followed by this uh, molecular machinery and this is a great amount of work that has been done to elucidate this genetic code so the uh, code is basically a three nucleotide code so three nucleotides are read uh these are called triplet codes so uh, so now i said there are four uh, kind of nitrogenous bases in the dna Uh, or rna so if we if we say there are three uh, 
nucleotides which forms a code so there is a possibility of total 4 to the power 3 64 codons uh the uh, codes are non overlapping so they are read in the um, units of 3 they are not overlapping this is the example which is shown in this diagram here then the codes they do not have any punctuation so no uh, sort of uh, nucleotide is left uh, it's continuously read 3 and after uh, and the next three set and the next three set the codes are degenerate so there is a redundancy uh in which the code uh, is read because if every code will code uh, have uh, a unique amino acid then you can imagine then you should have around 64 or amino acids or so but that's not uh, correct uh, so in um, uh, natural occurring amino acids are 20 so that means that out of the 64 code some of the codes are going to code for more than uh, one amino acid so this is a kind of map you will come across uh, which will help you to read the codes so you take the first letter from this column second letter from this column and the third letter from the other column and you will see that they for, for instance this is u u u it is going going to code for a phenyl alanine there are certain codes which are going to which are not uh, coding for any amino acid these are called the stop codons so this basically at this place uh, if a machine ji come across this stop codon the uh, translation is going to get stopped now the proteins uh, so once the uh, information is uh, read by these um, machinery and the amino acid are going to be arranged uh, taking into reference how the codes are arranged on the uh, transcript you will have the uh, proteins being formed they also have a polarity they have a free amino group at the n terminus and the free carboxyl group at the c terminus these amino acids have a very basic uh, this is the basic structure of amino acids uh, which forms these protein they have a amino group they have a carboxyl group these uh, carboxyl group and amino groups they are involved in the peptide bond formation there is a free uh, hydrogen there is a hydrogen atom and there is a side group which is called the r group here so there are different uh, amino acids are also categorized depending upon the kind of uh, side chain they have so they are positively charged amino acid negatively charged amino acid there are polar uh, amino acid uh, non polar amino acid aromatic amino acid the property of that amino acid is defined by this r group and that plays a very important role in the folding of these proteins the way they behave in the uh, physiological environment the way they are going to interact with their uh, binding partners so uh, so there is there is a very basic questions that comes to one's mind that the genetic information of the dna is same in every cell but we see a diversity in these cells for instance uh, you have this uh, erythrocyte you have this epithelial cells you have neurons so they have same kind of genetic information then how come they are they look different they behave different uh, so there has to be a sort of uh, regulation or the uh, uh, way by which these genes are expressed in these different types of cell cells so indeed there is so they uh, are so, so basically on the chromosomes are present these genes so genes is the basic physical unit of inheritance so as i showed you about the in the last slide there are these uh, pairs of chromosomes so these are called homologous chromosome the one is from the uh, male uh, parent and one is from the female parent so the location of a gene on this chromosome is called the gene locus so uh, the there is a allele there is a pair of allele which basically uh, are alternative forms of a gene on a given locus for instance some people have blue eyes some people have uh, brown eyes so basically the difference in the eye color they get from their parents and depending upon which gene is dominant that particular uh, color the progeny is going to uh, have so these genes are around uh, in uh, we know now with the human genome project there are around 20000 genes which are present on the human chromosomes so these genes are basically uh, regulated 
uh, and there is a uh, it's a quite a complex and equally beautiful process there is a, a regulation at every level uh, it's a diverse topic we don't have time to go into details so i have summarized the major events which help in gene regulation at different levels so uh, at the dna level so when a dna information in dna is going to transcribe into rna so there is a lot of uh, uh, regulation that can happen which is called the transcriptional regulation regulation so there are genetic elements i briefly mentioned about promoters so there are certain uh, promoters there are um, some inhibitory sequences these are all cis transgenetic elements though they are play an important role as to which genes are going to be uh, expressed at what what time point in the cell uh, life there are epigenetic regulations so i mentioned about histones the dna is packed around the histone so there are modification of the histones that you can do uh, or which are basically uh, some acetylation that can happen on histone which basically uh, 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 kind of uh, the packing of the dna is kind of decides which uh, genes are accessible for transcription or uh, which are very tightly packed they will not be accessible for transcription so this is one way of regulating the uh, gene uh, expression at the transcription level then at the rna level you have these post transcription uh, re regulations so as i mentioned that you have the uh, uh, rna that uh, uh, that has some certain regulatory elements you will have this intron elements present in between so the splicing of this intron the way it is spliced that will also affect the uh, way by which gene is expressed this mrna is supposed to be matured by the processing events so the processing stability of uh, this rna the uh, regulatory rnas micro rnas basically are the regulatory rnas these are also rna molecules they are not coding for any proteins but they are going to uh, go and uh, bind to the complementary sequences on the mrna and they are going to decide the fate of that mrna am i supposed to degrade this mrna or i am supposed to sequester the kind of information in this rna by forming some complex structures that the so that the translation machinery is not able to read that rna then at the protein level you have uh, some post translation uh, regulation some modification some uh, functional groups that you add to the protein which can be reversible for instance phosphorylation is a reversible uh, modification you have phosphatase enzymes that will remove that phosphate so depending upon at what time point that protein is supposed to function maybe a phosphorylation is required for that then the kinases are the uh, proteins that phosphorylate those uh, protein then they come and phosphorylate that particular amino acid now that phosphorylation is no, no longer required because the protein has to shut down the function then the phosphatase will come and remove it so it's a reversible modification then there are irreversible modifications so they are uh, ubiquitinylation pathways which will basically go and uh, mark a protein so that now no longer the function of that protein is required by the cell so that attract now the degradation machinery and the protein is going to be degraded so it's very, it's quite an amazing way how a simple looking cell is uh, carrying out such complex uh, cellular uh, functions now coming uh, to the experiment technique in the field so the field has basically advanced a lot so there are certain very basic techniques which were introduced in the uh, 50s or so which has a huge impact on the modern techniques that we see now in the field so i'm not going to go into too much detail into experimental techniques just to give you an idea so there is a lot of uh, uh, work going on which basically adds a lot of data uh, to the um, to the field and this is what we are trying to address in this conference also that how to manage that data how to make a sense out of that data so and here i have just listed few important techniques so we are have now techniques to modify this gene we can cut it at a precise location we can change that particular gene by inserting some elements or removing some elements we can now knock out certain genes or knock in certain genes into the um, animals where they it's not naturally present then it's called the transgenics we can sequence this gene we can understand the exact sequence uh, in which it is present we can even sequence the proteins uh, we can ex over express these proteins 
And then there are these microarrays uh, uh, work where, wherein we can actually understand how the genes is, is expressed in different cells. So just an overview of few techniques, uh, a few basic techniques that forms the uh, sort of uh, basis of some modern uh, advanced uh, sort of techniques that we, you might come across in few lectures in next few days. So DNA sequencing is a, was an important uh, sort of uh, step, a milestone in the field. So there are certain different sequencing techniques that were introduced, uh, Maxim Gilbert, uh, then Sanger sequencing. So Sanger sequencing is the one which got the maximum kind of acceptance. It's easy to use. Uh, it, uh, you can uh, use small amount of DNA and you can basically sequence it. This is the basic principle. So that, that uh, Sanger sequencing techniques is also advanced nowadays. Um, we, de we do it very frequently. So the, this is the basic principle. You have this original DNA sequence. You PCR amplify uh, this sequence with the help of this mixture of uh, deoxynucleotide, DNTPs. Um, and uh, you also add in this reaction uh, fluorescently labeled dideoxy, DD. Uh, nucleotides, the dideoxy NTP. So dideoxy does not have that uh, hydroxyl group on the third carbon. So that will basically restrict the formation of the um, phosphodiester bond and the chain uh, of DNA formation is kind of stopped. So uh, different, so uh, uh, different uh, DD NTPs are labeled with different fluorescent tags so that in a sort of automated system, you can read those fluorescent signals. You synthesize these uh, uh, DNA with the help of this mixture and you'll run it onto this capillary gel electrophoresis. It's an automated system nowadays. So you have this laser beam, which will excite that fluorescent molecule and you will read the fluorescence. And with the help of photomultiplied tube, you'll get certain graphs like this, which will tell you the sequence of that particular DNA. Uh, so which nucleotide got added? And then you can basically read the sequence of the DNA. So this uh, DNA sequencing, uh, nowadays we have this next generation, generation sequencing. So it's a lot of uh, added information. Or, so basically it's a high throughput sequencing technique. So um, the inspiration is of course the previous sequencing techniques, but now we are doing a lot of advanced uh, tricks and techniques so that we can sequence bigger genomes in a short interval of time. I'm not going into the details of next generation sequencing here, but uh, then uh, the gene expression analysis methods, there are several. This is one that I have just listed here. You can go back and maybe try to uh, read uh, more onto that. So DNA microarray is uh, basically involves that you uh, have these genes. Uh, for example, in this case, there for uh, they are there are three genes A, B, C. This is the their expression profile, the mRNA that is formed from these genes. What you do is you are extracting the RNA out of the cell. You are fluorescently labeling it, and you have this sort of uh, microarray chip onto which this oligonucleotides uh, are attached. Uh, then you uh, hybridize this uh, fluorescent labeled RNA with this uh, DNA microarray, and then you can read the signals. Uh, you, uh, with the automated systems, you will be basically able to see that what is the expression profile of this RNA in the cell. And you will be able to see this, for instance, the B is not expressed so much, you have less uh, RNA for B. So you will be able to see that it's uh, if you're going to detect, you will be detecting less um, expression level of gene B in this case. So DNA microarray is basically, um, this is another uh, domain, di di dimension, biomaterial in sort of engineering where we come up with different chips, which can basically help in the sequencing of, uh, or the uh, look at the expression profile of these genes. So it's very small uh, chip. So millions of DNA strands are kind of built up on uh, each location on this chip and you tag your probes uh, and they hybridize with this, um, these uh, DNA strands on the chip. And this is what you're basically reading in the DNA microarray. 
So uh, I would like to uh, come to the end of this uh, talk by basically emphasizing once again that the basic molecular biology uh, has, is contributing a lot to the field of data science. So these simple, these three major molecules that I have mentioned, DNA, RNA, proteins, they are contributing. There's a lot of data or there is a lot of information present in these molecules, which is uh, a kind of read by these advanced techniques which are present in the field. So you have uh, uh, now several sub fields emerging from the field of biology. For instance, you have genome. So genome basically, uh, involves reading all the gene sequences. You have this copy number variations in the gene. You have single uh, nucleotide polymorphisms. You're trying to understand the, uh, you're trying to make sense what is going on. Uh, why you have certain copy number variation between individuals. You have single nucleotide polymorphism. Uh, this kind of information is required because this will help you to uh, go into the direction of personalized medicine. Then you have epigenome. Epigenome field basically look at the different modification, different individuals, the DNA methylation, system modification, which has an impact on the gene regulation. Certain individuals are more susceptible to certain disease, the other uh, they uh, are immune. So this is basically because of this genetic variations. So this is an important emerging field uh, contributing to a lot into the um, health of uh, therapeutic in the field of uh, this, uh, coming up with therapeutic uh, techniques to uh, for and personalized uh, medicine. Then there is transcriptome, RNA expression, RNA structure. There is a proteome, proteomics also nowadays with the advancement in the mass spec uh, techniques. You can uh, look at the expression, the uh, modifications, the uh, uh, present at the protein level also. So in terms of references, so you can refer to any basic biology book like uh, Molecular Biology of the Cell from Alberts, uh, Molecular Cell Biology from Lordish and Freeman, the Cell and Molecular Biology, CARP and Pruitt. And there's a huge amount of literature present if you are interested in looking and uh, uh, so basically you have to go on NCBI and you have to uh, look at the latest uh, publications if you look want to have a more in insight into the advanced information. So with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention and um, I will be happy to take up any questions. Thank you so much. So let me check if there I have question. Sure. So they have not raised any question here. Um, so please ask if we have a question. And alternatively, you can go to YouTube and uh, raise a question there also. Let me check questions in YouTube. Okay, so you see. Good morning, Madam. Do SNP also help it in protection against diseases? This is the question. Pardon? Can you please repeat that the, question? Uh, do SNPs also help in protection against diseases? Yes. So basically, single nucleotide polymorphism is. Uh, uh, so basically, they are single nucleotide um, sort of changes in different individuals. So in certain, so it, there's not much actually known in the field. People are still studying its developing field, but it has been shown that um, certain individuals are more susceptible to certain disease. It can be positive also, and there is no reason to think why it cannot be, uh, it, it's, it, it's negative in a sense, basically. And there's no reason to think why it cannot be uh, positive. Maybe you have certain changes in your nucleotide and, you uh, are kind of immune to certain diseases. Uh, if we take example of um, the recent pandemic situation, uh, we say that certain individuals are more immune to this disease. 
that could very well be because their genetic material is kind of uh, had certain variation which makes them more uh, 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 immune as compared to the um, other individuals which uh, might be more susceptible because they and at the end of the day they are all uh, kind of uh, uh, you are some you uh, basically express these receptors that helps in the uh, infection so maybe you have certain variations in your receptors uh, because of that changes which can have important implications so they can be positive it can also be negative mm -hmm. or it can be neutral also it does not change anything okay so there is one more question uh, dwani vora is ask, asking is yes. there a, a way to identify causation again not correlation from RNA and protein expression profiles. Pardon, can you repeat that? Is Could there you... a way to identify causations, not correlation? Uh, see, uh, uh, see, mean to say that if there is a possibility to find cause rather than correlation from RNA or protein expression data. Cause data. in what sense? If she can clarify, cause uh, meaning. Uh... A cause, I think, so we seem to say disease, a disease as a cause, a cause for the disease or cause for circumstances. Yes, so basically, the information in RNA is translated into proteins. Um, so, if you are doing a uh, RNA sequencing or if you are doing a, a sort of uh, the um, you uh, basically. It's kind of interlinked. You know that if there is a, a change in the RNA level in terms of their expression, for instance, if you have overexpressed uh, transcript, if you have, if you have overexpressed transcript, transcript underexpressed transcript, so you have to do a lot of profiling. You have to see in the healthy patients what is the level of that particular transcript, and then in the diseased uh, patient, if that level is changing or if the sequence is changing. You can also do it at the DNA level as well. Uh, you have to see if uh, the DNA sequence has changed or the uh, the uh, the no copy number, for instance, has changed uh, for that particular DNA. So you can do a lot of analysis directly by looking at this individual molecules also. But the understanding is linked. So you know that if I'm looking at DNA, it is kind of uh, having a functional consequence. Is the I hope that answers the question. Okay, and then uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so basically, uh, the the uh, there is another question, and uh, somebody is asking to repeat the uh, DNA RNA part again. Actually, no need to explain, uh, but, uh, because you can always watch the video again on YouTube yes. Live, YouTube video. Yes. And uh, we will be putting the individual videos uh, also later on, but time sure. is limiting. So, uh, the, but there is another question. Is there any specific characteristics of virus that is making it hard to develop vaccine or it is purely just long process in general? Uh, for vac vaccine so basically, against yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting question. Actually, every one of us are... Uh asking this question uh, i can because i'm not an ex uh, expert in the field i can just uh, tell you what i have learned by reading some uh, papers some information so uh, i think uh, there are two important points here so uh, first the understanding of virus how it is infecting it is uh, very important it is you require an in-depth analysis and we know some receptors, uh, for example, ACE2 receptor is involved in this um, viral infection. We understand that receptor. We understand the spike proteins present on the virus, which uh, are uh, basically involved in infection. But we do not know if that is the only mechanism. So we are right now, the strategy is focusing on that. Uh, so, and it of course takes a lot of time also to develop vaccine because um, uh, even a simple antibiotic, for instance, if you uh, have read the story of penicillin, for example, I think it took 50 years or so to have those antibiotics in the market or, uh, from the day it was discovered and the way it uh, came into market, but that was a different time, of course. So you need a lot of clinical trials uh, to for the vaccine. You have different phases. You want to check it uh, at, a low, uh, at different levels. You actually look at the... Uh, 
properties of the vaccine that you have developed not every vaccine will be able to elicit uh, the kind of immune response that you are expecting a long lasting immune response so you have to test it what are elements i have to add that to that particular uh, molecules that i'm going to use for my uh, uh, vaccination so that my immune response is maximum it's a long lasting it's not it does not having any side effects or so so you need to do a lot of testing also so that actually takes quite some time and you have to be sure uh, that and you have clinical uh, phase trial one clinical phase trial two in phase one you would first do experiments on cells then you go to the phase one trial you do experiments on some lower organisms if the data looks promising then you go to uh, the clinical phase two uh, you look at the properties of vaccine you try to improve that whenever you change any small thing in a vaccine it might change the other aspect of that so it's a study and then you will have some volunteers you, uh, initially you'll see how they react to the vaccine so i would say biology takes time um, i think the everyone now is basically trying their best to um, get this thing um, i think in the record time uh, if it gets uh, by this year uh, so that is also the case uh, and second aspect is that you cannot be 100% sure that you understand a system from a to z you understand one aspect of the virus and the host interaction but maybe it is uh, the viruses also tend to kind of modify or so this is a kind of discussion going on uh, that if we have different strains of viruses also so maybe we develop vaccine from one strain the other one might still be there so people are trying to understand also the so studies are going hand in hand like trying to understand the basics how it is working uh, how it is infecting and then the other group of people they are looking into the vaccine or so so i am quite optimistic i hope this will be positive for us and we will get some good results soon so i hope that answers the question yeah there is a one more question uh, how do you use date science in reading modification by checking expression profile of proteins So as I so, yes yes so this is I think this is something that you will also hear from experts in uh, next uh, um, coming days or so. I think maybe uh, Dr. Pankaj is going to also shed some light onto this. I will very briefly tell. So it's a lot of information. I think this is the impression I want to give with this with this talk. So the uh, biological system or biomolecules have a lot of. It's like a Da Vinci code. You have so much of thing embedded. in the context of how they are read uh, the arrangement of the information so you have a lot of data present in biological system now it is up to you how you want to understand it what are the means that you are going to take to understand that data for instance i want to compare uh, i want to come up with a model where i can um, predict that if this is a gene profile then this person is going to tend to have this particular disease or it is more prone to this particular disease how will you do it you will basically try to interpret this data uh, the existing data the uh, and then you will try to uh, come up with a model or algorithm uh, to um, see if that particular biomarker for instance can be used for a sort of prognostic or diag diagnostic marker or not and then you will try to train your system and see if how it wo work out in the disease uh, condition or so if your predictions are accurate if you need to tweak your model or you need to tweak your algorithm with respect to the information present so there is a lot of scope and, and this is the i think also the aim of this workshop uh, i think the participant they will learn a lot in the from the experts in the next uh, coming days yes yeah, so basically yes. Uh, with uh... Uh, with this we'll uh, stop answering the question live but we will be going uh, okay so somebody has asked mm -hmm. let me uh, put another question before we end can we you shed light on your opinion of virus being synthetic and the idea of herd immunity oh, okay. <laughs> that's okay. actually going into complete uh... yeah so basically uh, uh, dr priyanka is not working on viruses and then this is a debatable question Yes. but i am working on viruses so i can answer uh, lightly that uh, first question is that is the virus being synthetic see virus uh, mm. ca can be engineered but such an uh, rapidly growing uh, 
DNA patches. Uh, still, science is, we are not at the stage where we can mutate and make a complete virus. Yeah. So natural uh, by natural means by com combining two viruses, a new strain has developed. That hypothesis is, is much more. Uh, solid than uh, saying a virus is synthetically ma made by any country. So the countries or labs are still not of that capable that they can produce uh, uh, produce a virus because uh, uh, if you're doing such experiment, you are also at this virus will be go out of your control. So scientists will also they lose their lives if they are doing so. And then secondly, uh, the idea of herd immunity is is like that if you're in a population you have uh, you get immunity by recovery and immunity by vaccine and then comes uh, herd immunity so basically the population over the period of time gets immune say in case of polio in india mm -hmm. so we have so much vaccination that majority is now uh, safe because of immunity but there are a few cases will be stay still staying but that's majority mass mass is safe but in case of SARS-CoV-2 or coronavirus, uh, uh, which is existing at pandemic, uh, this is far from reality because first of the vaccine has come. Second, uh, uh, people have get covered in a larger population. And those, those countries who have tried herd immunities, uh, we saw what is the result in England or Sweden. Yes, for instance, they deep on her, uh, largely on herd immunity. Uh, these, uh, these can be uh, far from reality in time, but over the period, maybe in a, say eight, 10 years later, maybe we achieve that in case of uh, uh, COVID-19. So, but yet this is not the case here, right? So, Yeah, so basically I was uh, thrown out of the system uh, from, from the online. Maybe my internet is unstable also. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, so basically uh, it can happen in online system. So basically herd immunity is far from reality as far as COVID-19 is concerned at the moment. At the moment, um, uh, major challenge is to when we get the vaccine and uh, globally several countries are working and several laboratories are working thinking the strategies but as dr Prenka told you before it is very very tough uh, to uh, reach uh, reach uh, uh, reach uh, uh, as if now and with this we'll uh, stop answering the questions uh, live questions and uh, live questions and uh, we will be answering your question in YouTube for sure. And uh, thank you, Dr. Priyanka and uh, Dr. Pankaj, you have to say something. Um, I will mute myself. Thank you very much and uh, clap for the Dr. Priyanka and the Dr. Pankaj will take over. Dr. Punk.
Hello. I think my Zoom connection. Ah, uh, I think you're audible. Ah. Uh, ah, okay, okay. I was wondering whether I'm audible. Yes. Because it says unmute your my audio. So, uh, uh, thank you very much. Ah. Uh, oh my God. Um, ma, 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 doctor. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, Doctor Pankaj. Yeah, uh, so I would like to thank uh, Doctor Priyanka Singh for such wonderful uh, session on uh, molecular biology. So uh, thank you uh, once again. So in few minutes we will start the next session. So uh, let's uh, wait for four five minutes.
So, um, yeah, I'm good to go. Uh, so shall we uh, start for the next session? Yes, we are good to start, uh, Dr. Pankaj. Yes, so uh, good morning uh, to all again. Uh, uh, myself, uh, Pan uh, Pankaj Yadav, I am an assistant professor at Department of Bioscience and Bioengineering at IIT Jodhpur. So uh, welcome to this uh, session of the uh, Fundamentals of Biology session. So uh, this is uh, uh, the session on big data in biology. So today I'm going to talk about some basics and big data and uh, in, also in the coming uh, sessions uh, on talks from uh, different speakers across the world you will listen to the more applications and also some anal analysis in this field so uh, this uh, the objective of this uh, workshop uh, in, in this session is to introduce you to the to the basics of this big data field in biology so uh, let's start. Okay, so uh, before uh, we go further, uh, so before we go further, let's uh, start with some definitions. So uh, the first thing is probably uh, in your mind is uh, what is uh, data. So let's start with the very basics. So data is basically a set of values of qualitative or quantitative variables about one or more persons or objects. So how we define this is actually very simple and straightforward. So maybe we can have different kinds of variables. And they can be, mostly can be categorized in qualitative or quantitative variables and how we do the observations on these variables on different persons and objects. That's called the data. And now the next thing is that data set. So it's data set is a collection of related sets of information composed of separate elements that can be manipulated computationally as a unit. So basically it's a collection. It's a collection of related sets. So for example, it can be a collection of height and weight of certain set of individuals. So uh, another uh, definition is that is a very important nowadays also in, in data science is database or data repository. It's a virtual data storage that stores, organizes, validates, and makes accessible core data related to a particular system of its kind. So we will also give uh, see some examples of the databases in uh, its coming workshop sessions and also another uh, uh, definition is metadata that is uh, sometimes also uh, confusing to some of the um, researchers and students is a metadata so it's it's actually a data that describes your data for example it can if you consider in terms of very basic example so uh, let's say we have uh, a publication so in a publication we can have um, we can have metadata as a title, author's names, abstracts, keywords. These are all your uh, metadata that describes your publication, right? So this is uh, metadata, and we have also next uh, next is workflow. So workflow basically defines a series of tasks for processing your data. So uh, there are different work workflows are very important when it comes to data analysis. So you have to make some uh, some workflows to create or to do some tasks. For example, in NGS, or in next generation sequencing data analysis, you will you will have a set of tasks that need to be completed before you, you before you get some to conclusion. So workflows are very important in uh, in data science. And now coming to the mo most important uh, definition, I think. 
this conference is data science. What is data science? It's, you will also hear a lot of these different definitions on data science from different speakers, from different uh, presenters in this, uh, in this conference. So to me, the data science is an interdisciplinary field. It's, uh, it requires skills of several uh, basic skills, at least in computer science, mathematics, and biology uh, when it comes to domain knowledge. In, uh, so interdisciplinary field in which quantitative and analytical approaches, processes and systems are developed and used to extract knowledge and insights from increasingly large and or complex sets of data. And also uh, nowadays deep learning has also become an important methods to uh, that are kind of uh, um, uh, that is complementing the data science field, it's a deep learning. Deep learning in very basic uh, definition is that it's a type of network. And, and um, I'm not going much into technical, technical details of this. It's a type of network in which different successive layers uses output from previous layers. So it's a, a network of layers. Each layer uses information from a previous layer. It's similar to, uh, you can think of it as a communication pattern in a biological network, a narrow system, if you come from a biology background. Uh, so another uh, last definition that is uh, more relevant for this session is omics. Omics uh, in the sense of multi-omics. Omics is a collective term again. It's a collective organization, uh, characterization and measurement of biological molecules that translates into structure, function, dynamics of an organism or organisms. Examples are genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, and other, other uh, sources of uh, biological data, which ends with the omics. So we will also hear uh, more on, uh, on this in the coming slides. Okay, so, uh, so what are uh, biological data types? And I think uh, on uh, this conference point of view, it is more important to introduce you with the different data types that are, are more popular or that are more relevant in, uh, in biology. So uh, genomics uh, is one of the probably the most basic uh, types of data types and in, in biology. So it, what, what does it uh, comprises? It comprises of nucleotide genome sequences, metagenomic sequences. And what can we do with this? We can do several things with this. So we can do gene finding. We can do functional annotation of the genes. We can do sequence alignment. We can do homology determination, comparative analysis. We can also do phylogenetic inferencing with the help of nucleotide sequences. We can also do association analysis, like we, if you heard about genome-wide association study, GWAS, this is also uh, relevant in that context. And mutational, uh, mutation functional prediction of the, of, the, of the genes. And we can also do a species distribution analysis to the, as people do in the population genetics field. So the next uh, data type is uh, transcriptomics, RNA expression levels, and transcription factor binding, chromatin structure information. These are all, all different data that comes under transcriptomics. So uh, what can we do with such kind of data is we can do uh, differential analysis. We can do uh, clustering. We can do functional enrichment, enrichment analysis. We can also do transcriptional regulation and causal reasoning uh, analysis. And the next category of the omics data is proteomics. It basically uh, has uh, data on protein levels, it also protein structures and protein interactions, how different proteins interact with, e with each other. So uh, what can we do with uh, such kind of data? So we can do uh, what kind, uh, we can do protein identification, which protein is, uh, uh, which protein is actually there in the data. We can do protein functional predictions, what kind of function is done by a particular protein. We can do structural predictions based on the sequence of the protein. We can also do uh, structural comparison, molecular dynamic simulations to study the, the 
more uh, logical biological uh, in a biological environment how different uh, proteins behave in the cellular um, system we can also do a mutational function pro uh, prediction and docking predictions and also we can do a protein network analysis so, and the next category of the omics data is metabolomics it has uh, metabolite and small molecules that are present in in, in our uh, in body and uh, it, what can we do with the metabolics is we can construct pathways how different metabolites are involved in different biological pathways and also different network analysis uh, based on different uh, different other different types of data like you can integrate uh, genomics and metabolomics data together some slides will come up follow in the some follow up slides will come on this in few minutes so uh, another uh, different uh, source of uh, nowadays very important um, in the biological field is imaging uh, bioimaging data it's basically comprises of microscopy images mri images ct scans so these are also now these uh, included in the biological big data actually it is one of the important uh, part of the big data in biology so what can we do with this kind of data is you can do feature extraction you can do high content screening we can do uh, predictions of different uh, we can do diagnosis of different diseases uh, with the help of cellular imaging data or we can also see we can also determine cellular structures sub substructures based on the imaging data and another sort of uh, data is cytometry it has cell, cell level cell phenotypes how these cells are behaving or cell population clustering and this is one of the nowadays also used in single cell analysis and just uh, to uh, give you some uh, background also in systems biology it's a huge field it, it actually comprises all of the uh, all of the above data sets that data types that i have described Uh, in addition to this we can also do network analysis we can also do reversal causal reasoning drug target predictions these are all some sub domains of system biology okay so when it comes to uh, the volume of the big data so uh, let's say how uh, big and comes when it when we measure in on a scale of the bytes comparative uh, on scale then as computer scientists some of you might already know that the byte is the basic unit of measurement after that uh, we can have kilobytes megabytes and up to uh, gigabytes so biological data is basically uh, so huge that uh, in coming times we will need to go to the, to those upper end scales in order to store and to analyze such kind of data so you can imagine how challenge how challenging it will be when it comes to uh, analyzing such huge amount of data so, uh, so just to give you a feel and how what are different if you go uh, like more in in depth of data kind and in data levels in biological research so we have different types of data that let's say this is a, just just an illustration that we get from mice for example we can have experimental metadata which kind of mice was used in the experiment what kind of cell culturing was used and then we can have different sequencing methods we will also discuss a few in few minutes uh, what are different sequencing methods then we from sequencing method from experimental data after sequencing and all we get to the primary data that is probably more relevant for Uh, for computer scientists and also for data statistician so after the sequencing we interested uh, in this okay so this uh, after this stage uh, we, we go to the this uh, numeric data and basically this is where the job of statistician starts where we uh, analyze primary data we do pre processing we do normalization different kind of step to make sense of the data after doing all we, we get to the derived data from the primary data and from prime, uh, from derived data we go to the interpreted data and knowledge where we do a lot of data analysis statistical analysis do pathway and network analysis we comes to the knowledge that comes from our experimental data so this is a basic cycle of uh, data levels in biological research 
So you see there are different peoples that are involved in such kind of from, from here to here, if you come, if you think of doing an experiment on mice and creating such kind of knowledge, it's, it's such a uh, interdisciplinary field that different peoples of different uh, skills are involved in this cycle. You can say molecular biologists, probably cell biologists starts here, and you can see uh, the data scientists and computer scientists probably lead us to there, bioinformaticians and all of they work in these different stages of this, in this uh, data levels. So uh, coming to the uh, to the NCBI, probably most of you uh, just uh, heard, know about NCBI. So uh, this is one of the probably the most important uh, portals that are available and relevant in, in the field of biology. Uh, it's from National Library of Medicine. So it's the, the, this picture actually just shows you, this figure shows you uh, that how big the data or how the data has grown over years of time. So if you look at here, so uh, after like before the Human Genome Project, in 2003 or something after that, the data didn't grow much. But after that, just after this Human Genome Project started in uh, 2000, in 99, sorry, and uh, you can see that the exponential growth of this the amount of data that has compiled. So on, the, on this side of uh, this figure, we have sequences in millions that have been available in this uh, NCBI data portal so far. And on the here on the right side, we have users. So you can see that the, as the, as the uh, amount of data has grown, also the number of people that have shown interest working in this all uh, have also gone up to five millions and even more. So, so this is actually uh, actually showing us the the level at which we have reached, or in these two decades, uh, in last two decades, uh, when it comes to the biological data. Uh, so, I uh, just want to show you uh, some example uh, on uh, data science. Uh, interests of data science in, in this field. So uh, NIH has a strategic plan for data science. So I really like this slide where they have shown this different, uh, different uh, plans that need to be uh, accomplished when it comes to the data science field. So we have data structures, which in this basically uh, they plan to, uh, their plan is to optimize data storage and security. These are very fundamentals of uh, data storage and connecting NIH, NIH data systems. So different types of data, how they connect to this. And then modernizing this data ecosystem is one of the another plan they have proposed, modernizing the data repositories ecosystems and support the stories and sharing of individual data sets. Better integrate uh, clinical and observational data into biomedical data science. And data management uh, is another, and, and analytics and tools. So this is also a, an important part of their plan to support the useful, generalizable, and accessible tools and workflows for analyzing and for uh, making sense of the data that they have tried to gather. And broaden utility and access to the specialized tools to the, for the public uses and um, improve the discovery and cataloging resources. Workforce development is also an important part of this because without that, we will not be able to, what we will be doing with the data, we don't know. And hence, NIS data science, data science workforce, expand the national research workforce, engage the broader community of the scientists to get involved in, in, in data science and biology field. And stewardship and sustainability develop policies for a fair eco data ecosystem. So there is a, there is also a policy of fair data access and fair data uses and privacy law in the, in the part of their plan. Enhancing uh, this kind of stewardship is also their plan. So um, this is an example of the, one example of the big data in biology. So NIH has come up with this uh, big data knowledge, uh, big B2B, uh, 
big data to knowledge. It's uh, an example uh, that has been proposed uh, by NIH. So we have more than in this uh, BD, um, BD2K uh, achievements. They have around more than 30,000 individuals have been trained in, in biomedical data science. And now more than 255 bi biomedical data scientists educational resources are available as a part of this project. And integrative digital media for analyzing biomedical data has been also been uh, has also been uh, uh, is available now as part of B, uh, B2, BD2K, and now more than 200 software and tools are also uh, available as a result of this project, and and also now uh, they have been able to do a data index prototyping to easily find and access the biomedical data sets. So you should, uh, you will be more uh, interested in looking at the NCBI portal where you will find a lot of data sets that are available. Will, I will also now take you to the next example of the data set. Uh, that's uh, most popular in the cancer uh, genomics field. It's uh, the cancer genome, uh, the cancer genome atlas, in short TCGA. This is also one of the uh, most popular uh, data and data repository when it comes to the cancer uh, cancer research. Uh, it has about more uh, over the next two dozen years, TCG has generated over 2.5 pentabytes of genomics, epigenomics, transcriptomics, and proteomics data. The data which has already led to improvement in our ability to diagnose, treat, and prevent cancer will. This will actually will remain publicly. Uh, this is the most important and most beautiful part of this data set is it's publicly available for anyone. So in the search community to use. So if you are interested, you should go to this uh, website, www.cancer.gov. And then you can have an access, open access to this data without paying any fee or any money. And a lot of other tools are also available. So it's, uh, if you're starting your career in data science and biology, I think you should uh, definitely look at this portal and try to learn some basic things from there. So, uh, and it's data is huge, as you, as you can see, it's growing a, like exponentially, ex exponentially in, in coming years, it will be really difficult to manage uh, such kind of data. And, that, and we need computational tools and methods to you know, to uh, analyze data in future. So, uh, even more recently, uh, this uh, new data set that has, that has come up in, in, in biology is human cell atlas. It's an effort to map all the cells, what are the functionality of, each, of the cells, what kind of gene, genes are expressed in a particular cell. So it's basically focused on single cell level. How uh, so this? Uh, how the mapping of human? Uh, it's basically mapping the human body at cellular level, and you can see uh, this very huge data. There are almost 4.5 million cells data on available on those cells, and from uh, 33 organs from around now 300, almost more than 300 now. In recently, if I check, and there are around 30 and 28 projects that are going around in, in different labs across the world. So, if you are also uh, interested, then you definitely look at this human cell atlas data portal. There, you will have access to all the data also freely. You don't have to pay any uh, money for that. So, uh, it's multi omics basically, it's not only just genomics, it has different, uh, different types of omics data that has been stored on in different those different types of cells. So, um, now um, the second part of this uh, workshop is focused on uh, sequencing technology. So, um, you also heard about uh, some basics in the previous session. So, uh, Basically, what is nucleotide sequencing? It's a genetic, uh, as you know that, as we know that genetic information is stored in, in the nucleotide sequences of the DNA or RNA of an organism. Okay, so... Uh, Sorry for this. Uh, so genetic uh, information, as you know, 
And so it has been stored in nucleotide sequences of the DNA or RNA of an organism. Now, the process of determining the correct order of nucleotides is very challenging, and it's also a part of nucleotide sequencing. So uh, basically, we have four bases, as you heard, and it's uh, in a given fragment. Now, the nucleotide sequencing has huge applications, ranging from genomic studies to the forensic studies, biology, in bio like in nowadays, and also in coronavirus, in COVID pandemic situation, we also are using different types of sequencing technologies to sequence the, 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 uh, the SARS uh, COVID, this, uh, this virus that, that has caused COVID 19. And so, um, yeah, so we, we also have uh, different fields to analyze the function of the genes, and different types of sequencing methods have come up in, uh, by different scientists. And as you heard, the Sanger sequencing is probably is one of the oldest uh, methods that has developed in 1970s uh, by uh, scientist Sanger, Frederick Sanger. And uh, so uh, this is um, basic sequencing uh, pipeline, you can say, it's workflow. So all the methods that are available nowadays also follow this, uh, this basic uh, strategy. So first is that you extract the DNA from the, uh, from the cell and then you uh, chop large uh, DNA of molecules into fragmentation because it's easy to sequence fragments of instead of sequencing million, billions of nucleotides together one at once. Uh, so um, in the B, step B, you do sequencing of those small fragments. And uh, in the next step after these have been, I'm not going in depth, but after these are sequenced, you are again back, going back to assembly of these small DNA sequences. Remember the uh, objective is to, uh, ob objective is to sequence or to find the correct order of these four nucleotides. Though it looks very simple, but it's very challenging computationally. You will have millions of uh, fragments, and each fragment will be sequenced multiple times. So uh, overlap, making assembly out of those uh, small fragments is indeed a challenging task, and a lot of nowadays uh, algorithms are available uh, for that. So uh, thanks to those researchers who have contributed to this. So after this um, use of different algorithms, you come up finally with the se uh, a sequence of four nucleotides. So this is our nucleotide sequence. So this basically maps back to the large DNA sequence. So no matter what method we are following, so this is the hallmark of this sequencing approach. And now uh, coming to uh, NGS sequencing. So NGS refers to uh, a modern high throughput sequencing process. Uh, because the systems that are uh, followed here in the NGS are high speed, they are more accurate and cost effective in comparison to Sanger and all traditional other approaches. And the beauty is that the large number of DNA or RNA strands, millions can be sequenced parallelly, which allows sequencing of the entire, it allows, NGS allows sequencing of the entire genome of organisms within a short time period, unlike Sanger sequencing, which takes really uh, days or more, more time. And the number of different modern sequencing technologies that, that are available nowadays uh, are basically uh, three or uh, three, Illumina sequencing, Roche, Roche from Roche, company for 454 sequencing, ion proton sequencing, and, and also nowadays so solid, which is sequencing by oligolocation detection sequencing. These are different most popular uh, technologies nowadays available in, in the era of NGS. And they are, they are basically using different for, uh, approaches for uh, sequencing. So for example, pyro sequencing, sequencing by synthesis, uh, by Illumina and sequencing by ligation and ion semiconductor sequencing. These are different methods that are, and that are used in, if you're more interested, you should definitely uh, read about those methods. If you are planning to make a career in the sequencing technologies. So uh, this workshop, uh, we will not be able to cover all these um, te technologies and methods because of the shortage of the time that has been allotted for this. Uh, so just 
uh, give you an idea why NGS is more important or why uh, NGS has become so popular uh, in comparison to traditional sequencing methods such as Sanger sequencing. So uh, NGS, as I said, is refers to a high throughput sequencing method uh, process. It describes a number of different modern sequencing technologies. Whereas Sanger sequences is a sequencing method developed by Frederick Sanger which determine the precisely nucleotide orders of a given DNA fragment. In terms of cost, the NGS is cheaper process because it reduces time, manpower, and chemicals, whereas Sanger sequencing is costly and it also takes time. In terms of speed, it is very quicker. And nowadays, in one day, uh, we can do uh, sequencing of whole genome in humans. And it's uh, because uh, this chemical detection and sing single uh, signal detection um, of many strands are happening in parallel. That makes it faster compared to the Sanger sequence, which is time consuming and it's going serial wise. So, uh, NGS is reliable, Sanger sequence is less reliable nowadays. Uh, NGS requires less amount of DNA, whereas in Sanger sequence, a large amount of template DNA is required. So Amplification has to be done, um, which requires more. It also makes it uh, technically more expensive. Uh, DNA based uh, per sequence, the number of DNA bases per sequence fragment is lower than uh, in Sanger, Sanger method, whereas generating sequences are lengthier than, uh, than NGS because we have like, uh, we are doing it in parallel. So, so fragments are smaller in NGS. So now uh, going next, to the uh, field of um, omics slowly i'm taking you the field of omics so um, when it comes to uh, these two different domains biology and statistics but everyone now feels that the close interaction between statisticians and bioinformaticians and my molecular biologists is essential to provide a meaningful uh, results from any biological problem so uh, nowadays, unlimited quantity of data are available from different multi from multiple and heterogeneous sources. And there are different challenges, computational challenges, biological issues, biological interpretation is also a big issue for validation. And this is, we need to keep a pace with the new technologies that, uh, that, that are coming up. So this carton basically just, I like this carton, get all the information you can, we will think of use for, of it is from a biological point of view. And then, yeah, so this is um, a holistic view of biological system. In nowadays, it's not just cells and biology. And we also have, um, we have DNA at the level of DNA, RNA protein, signal, signaling networks, we also nowadays have environmental uh, environment also as an important part of our biological system because it's always a debate of nature versus uh, nature versus nurture. So uh, we uh, believe now that environmental should also be a part. It has been all, also uh, been proposed by many scientists that environment cannot be separated from our field of biological system. So uh, this is. Uh, the introduction uh, to uh, different types of omics data so that is available in biology. So uh, I also introduced in, in, in the in beginning. So as you see that uh, we start with the transcriptomic data that is basically uh, the, uh, from DNA to RNA, how the RNA is transcribed. So we have transcripts and in at this level, then we have proteins, how these proteins are translated after transcription. Uh, so from begin from RNA to protein, we have a, a different. Uh, if you if you uh, if you have followed the last uh, session, that we have now a different level, and and we have now in proteomes, in omics, we have sequences of proteins, protein structures, and how different proteins are functioning, protein protein interactions. This kind of data is available at this level. Then we have metabolome level which are including the chemicals metabolites that are interacting again back to different at different levels of the data. And most importantly, though it's uh, nowadays uh, also part of omics is microbiome. So how the different microbes in your gut are interacting with the host in that is also nowadays considered as part of omics biological dogma. 
and now also there are other layers of data in between though but uh, if you look at just at a broader scale we also have nowadays clinical data such as clinical history of the people uh, of the person uh, of the individuals uh, what are different uh, other records like ecg uh, and other reports that are available from clinical data like also molecular profiling so things like that uh, so um, yeah but omics relations are not straightforward so that is uh, the message of this slide so uh, yeah so as you see that uh, the data is really huge and you uh, what we are like intending or what is uh, what is our plan is to you know integrate different levels of this uh, information from different levels and making sense of, of this, these different levels of data is not that straightforward. There are several challenges from computational point of view. And uh, also like in, in this picture, if you see how we cross check uh, this relation between genome and proteome and how proteome is related with metabolome and transcriptome, this is just a smaller picture. The, the overall picture is really huge including when you're including microbiome, when you're including clinical data in this picture set. Uh, so, um, yeah, so one of the uh, interesting goal of this uh, omics data is to integrate, to integrate different layers of data. So as you see that we have DNA, RNA uh, in genomes, we have transcriptomes here, and we have proteomes, metabolome, and how we can make, uh, the, the conventional approach is that we do a, a, a single level analysis. So we do genome analysis uh, on genome level, and then we do a transcription analysis, gene expression analysis, things like that at different le at this level. And then we have protein interaction studies, and then we separately also analyze. So this is probably the conventional uh, way of doing this, uh, this kind of work. But uh, now, um, when it comes to the single omics uh, and transomics, we have we can have different uh, different directions to go. We can go from genome to transcriptomics and uh, transcriptomes and down to the to the to different levels. And we can also come back to this uh, to different levels. We can jump to different levels. That is that is quite challenging, I think, from my point of view, to solve such kind of problems. So we should uh, adopt a holistic view rather than a traditional uh, reductionist approach when it comes to omics data integration. Yeah, so different definitions uh, that we um, sh we should be familiar uh, when it comes to integration of the of the data in multiomics. So let's say we have uh, one side in this slide we have showing that lipidomic analysis. When we extract the lipids, we do uh, follow this protocol and what we do is we follow it, uh, this reductionist approach, we do data analysis on this level and then we come up with identification and quantification of lipid species that are relevant uh, for, the, for the disease, you can say. And other side of this, we can have uh, proteomics analysis, we, we can do peptide mixture and all this is the old protocol that are followed in proteomics analysis and it comes to the identification and quantification of proteins that are relevant. Now, um, more, more holistic approach will be to you, uh, you know, that how we integrate this kind of information together. So this is uh, the this is the idea of this uh, omics integration approaches. How we integrate different kinds of information or different types of data That's that we have got. Data integration from an analytical point of view. So that was. In the last slides, you've seen uh, more um, known technicalities of the uh, omics integration. So here we have, uh, when it comes to uh, analytical point of view, uh, we have different techniques that people should be uh, should be learning uh, before they they get to use to such kind of research work. So uh, for mathematicians, uh, I think uh, these things are probably familiar. So we have matrix factorization. Uh, Bayesian approaches, network bases, networks, multiple uh, different steps that are available in, uh, in, in, in mathematics. Uh, so we have matrix factorization with, uh, which uh, kind of separates uh, this information into different factors as latent variables also. 
and then we have invasion, we have priors, and then we in for the posteriors. And we have in the network-based analysis, we have different networks, and we, how do we integrate, find seven networks, and such kind of works is done. And in single omics analysis, we also have information from different levels, and then how we can correlate different uh, information that we have or results that we are obtaining from different levels into uh, into this uh, into this together in an integrated way. Uh, so finally, we reach to this uh, approach uh, of integration of different uh, different methods. How we integrate PCA uh, matrix factorization, Bayesian approaches, and network based uh, analysis, and also single level together in this, uh, in this together in this integration. Uh, so, what do we expect uh, out of this integration is uh, probably uh, that we want to reach, make an overview of the role of each omics in biological system. So, this is our expectation. We want to describe the role of each omics in biological system. And also, we want to have a better understanding of the relation between or across the omics types. So molecular signatures with insights in uh, the trend, we intend to find molecular signatures with insights into molecular mechanisms. We also have a predictive analytical model that can help us to infer or do some predictions for the patients in future. And probably all of these are our expectations out of this omics data integration approaches. So, um, so uh, the idea of, and the focus should be here integrate and reduce the dimension of the omics data into multivariate fashion and identify molecular signatures. That should be our overall focus on uh, in this uh, data integration approach. So there will be uh, another uh, talks in the conference also in in regard to the multi omics. Uh, one, one will be from Harvard Medical School, so I uh, definitely recommend you that if you are interested, you should uh, attend that talk uh, from Professor Jessica. Uh, so um, this is uh, coming back to omics, so tools. So if you are familiar with uh, some of the tools that are available uh, in, in, in online, which are open, so this is one tool that is mix omics. This is basically uh, in R. So R is a freely available software package that, that can be uh, downloaded and used. So different people uh, are using R packages for doing the data science and also. So this is, if you're familiar with the R, then I think I will recommend you that to use mix omics. It's one of the most beautiful R tool kit for multivariate data analysis and statistical integration of biological omics data. Uh, as you can see, there are different, uh, in, it focuses on feature selection and visualization. Uh, so these are different, uh, this is just an overview of uh, how this, uh, how the work is done by this uh, uh, mix omics toolkit. So you have input, which is basically different layers of data, uh, genomics, transcriptomics, metabolomics, and so these are multivariate methods that are incorporated as a part of this tool, the PCA, IPCA, uh, and all PLS. Uh, and Dablo is one of the, I think, most, uh, most popular feature of this tool. And Mint is also another advanced technique to uh, kind of integrate this kind of multivariate analysis of these different sets of data. You see that uh, it's in also different approaches. It's uh, using horizontal integration. It's using vertical integration. So these are different approaches that are followed in, in these in these two strategies. And another important sorry is the graphics. So that is also how you visualize the data. So these, there are different uh, visualization options also available on this uh, in this in this R R toolkit. Uh, so different integration, as I said, is Diblo is following the N integration, I Mint mean, is following the P integration, where um, data sets measure on same P features, but from different uh, independent studies. So uh, just keeping this part because uh, I'm running out of time. So um, yeah, so uh, so the take home messages from this uh, session of the workshop is that 
we are entering into a new era that first requires data-driven approaches to make sense of big biological data. We are in different and we are in an exciting era of time. And from a holistic to hypothesis as generating approach, we should uh, be think, thinking in this way if we want to really make, uh, if we want to go and use this kind of data. And as you see that the data does not exclude a priori biological knowledge. We need to have some prior knowledge from biological point of view, maybe the pathway analysis in a computer center method, for example. As we, as we go with the time, the new fields are emerging and that blends computationally is very biological uh, scientists and vice versa. So we need to have people from different backgrounds to be working in this field to come up with some fruitful results. The development of computational tools is an important, uh, is an important part of uh, this, uh, this field to advance the knowledge. So with this, I would like to thank uh, and I will end my talk with this uh, beautiful uh, picture that was I took from Santiago, Lombiada, and this is one of the, uh, so what this is showing is the complexity of the data. So it's basically each dot, each node over here is a cell. And as you can see, there are a lot of data that has been integrated in, in the background to cluster different cells together based on different gene expression data, based on how they are different metabolites are probably interacting. So you can see that uh, this, is, this is the complexity of the data is so huge that making cha it's challenging and making sense out of this data is actually interesting and will be challenging for those who would like to make their career in that sense of biology. So thank you so much. So are there any questions? Thank you. Uh, Dr. Pankaj, and let us see. There's no question here. Could you please share your uh, share any recommendation for further reading YouTube uh, playlist on topic omics data integration? Any top yeah. any any suggested material you can recommend on omics data integration? Yeah, so uh, I think the mix omics is uh, one of the um, popular tool. And then you can also look at HCA portal, that is uh, the human cell uh, atlas portal. There are a lot of uh, advanced tools and basics understanding of uh, omics integration is available. So I would recommend you take a look there. Okay. So any other? What is the main difference between R tool kit and Excel? Yeah, so Excel is a very primary um, way of analyzing data. We cannot do advanced analysis in Excel. And R is an open software tool that you can do a lot of uh, advanced things uh, from um, statistics analysis to graphics. Graphics cannot, uh, is also advanced graphics for quality of publications. And you can, um, the, the borderline is, uh, the advantage is that the R is all freely available and you can uh, install it on any PC and do uh, your data analysis, graphic generation. Uh, so this is, um, and the drawback of the Excel is that you cannot uh, do uh, the things like omics analysis, various you can do in R that's possible. What is the future scope of data science? Yeah, I think uh, I personally feel that the data science is uh, glooming uh, and in uh, coming at least five to 10 years, it's going to actually uh, excel and also get getting attention from different fields, especially in terms of uh, when, when it comes to biology, I think the data science is taking a different another level and a lot of scopes are there as I have explained that it's also very challenging and also requires interdisciplinary knowledge. 
So uh, this is, I think, going to be an exciting field in at least coming five to ten years. Okay, then. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, uh, there is no further question. I would like to thank uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Pankaj uh, for a wonderful uh, discussion and initial uh, excitement for you to... Uh, okay, there is one question. What is the name of Rx app, Advanced, then Excel? So name of the Rx apps for Advanced... Then Excel. Hari Bandhan Joshi is asking. Okay, sorry, I didn't get that. So uh, the name of that RX app. I mean, he means to say data analysis apps, which are uh, uh, advanced than R. Yeah, I think we will also have some session of, on Python in, in few minutes starting. So. Uh, Python will also be uh, fruitful. Uh, okay, so be, be, with uh, uh, I have an announcement to make. Uh, Mr. Manish uh, has some issue in joining today, so he will send a recorded video. But then I thought, why to uh, not I teach them programming, introduction to Linux, and introduction to Python? Yeah, so I will take over uh, his uh, Mr. Manish, who is in next session in programming Python. He will send. And a, a, a recorded video for our YouTube later on, it will be available. But I will take over uh, his session. I'm Dr. Abhishek uh, from Institute of Bioinformatics. And I will treat you, uh, now you understand what, how you can use the big data, but to use the big data, you need uh, how to handle the data and then you need a programming skills for that. And then I'll teach you very basic programming. And uh, some experiences and uh, uh, these, uh, and then we'll discuss in, I think we have a break of 15 minutes, right? So any other further question? Could you suggest a project to work? Oh, somehow, uh, could you suggest a project to explore genome, explore in genomes as a data science, genome as a data science? Okay, so they are asking a question. Uh, Dr. Pankaj is there. Dr. Pankaj, they're asking a question. Uh, where could uh, uh, where could uh, you know? Okay, so I will answer this question. So basically, you can ask me as uh, Dr. Abhishek from Institute of Bioinformatics or Dr. Pankaj and other speakers for a project training. If you want to do a training, and, and we are all are involved some way or other in genomics of genomic data science. So we'll be helping you. Another question is these videos will be available for future. Yes, these videos will be staying to this YouTube channel. Yes, there will be practice material available on my GitHub for our uh, uh, pra practicing R in material science. How do we do network analysis? One more question. Dr. Pankaj is not available. So I will uh, answer this question. The network analysis is uh, okay. So uh, network analysis, you can do it by several tools. Uh, what kind of network analysis you want to do? You want to do pathway analysis or so string 10 uh, is there. There are several tools. So basically uh, we, when you are, uh, when you are going to uh, uh, going to uh, do the analysis of specific purpose, I can tell you the, the protein to protein interaction analysis, string 10 will do a simple analysis and you have to invite several pathway or network analysis tool to combine information and bring it to one single uh, conclusion. And then there are several other questions. It is mentioned that Sanger is less reliable, but SMP that Exome are validated by Sanger mostly for clinical. No, uh, I don't say Sanger is less uh, reliable. I would say Sanger is uh, time consuming. Sanger was limitation of Sanger was time consuming and cost. That uh, Alumina has bypassed or next generation sequencing had bypassed. And drastically, uh, today I can sequence my genome and my family's genome 
in less than uh, 10 lakh rupees yeah and then that means i have a kind of a genomic kundli kundli if you understand kundli so basically uh, geno uh, genomes uh, or uh, string genomic uh, data will make uh, match making in future and uh, so suppose my family is prone to diabetes then i should not marry to a, another diabetic prone uh, person or a, i should not date a partner something like that is possible in near future which is was not possible with the use of sanger uh, yeah so let with this we end up the question as uh, dhara i have seen your question we'll come back to it uh you all will you all will get your uh, your you will all will get your uh, your certificates and also do register and feedback it you can give by email and also you can write in the youtube channel if you have some suggestion okay so with this uh, we'll end this session and i again thank uh, dr pankaj uh, for uh, excellent talk on big data uh, yeah so uh, let's discuss this uh, bioinformatics project so we are all doing bioinformatics and genomics so you can directly request me or others participants professors in this two uh, three day meeting if you want to do a project dr pankaj also is very much interested uh, in um, helping uh, students and a project uh, person who want to do internship or training and uh, so we have a 15 minutes break as if now i guess or i have taken it up all the time so we'll have a short break and then i will uh, uh, be going and teaching you the uh, i will be going and teaching you well uh, how the linux operating uh, system uh, and linux python and introduction int introduction in 5 minutes time yeah okay so somebody want to join okay so uh, okay so there may be we, since we are not stopping somya is asking what is the uh, what is the eligibility of uh, what is the requirements for the doing this project someone with no base can take part in training see you will be trained uh, foundation on this and a uh, nobody is in born uh, programmer on uh, uh, one who is uh, uh, coming if you if you are capable you can actually learn python in two months and if you are understanding you by practice you can learn linux within a month so uh, give, not giving up and a good attitude uh, towards work or uh, being honest to each other, each other like if you are working with me and if you are not on you are saying yeah, i can Uh, break uh, everything in python and you are not able to then uh, this will be uh, problematic but if you are understanding that what is your uh, everybody has if you are uh, not having a python programming skill you will still have some other skill and you can work on your uh, other skill uh, for the project and then uh you can improve your know, programming skills then uh, you are most welcome so you you have to uh, goes uh, goes with your uh, coordinate uh, person with whom you are working that this is my skill i can do this best and i am ready to learn something uh, uh, something and do so depending on the requirement of the projects for me if, uh, no programming skills is required if you are a btech mtech or ms or phd student uh, or a phd scholar or researcher want to do a training uh, no other than your motivation no other skill matters because of the rest we will manage in uh, do a training for you and uh, uh, provide you enough training to you do uh, based on your skills 
sir i have completed a, yes there is a uh, there are python course a, a, a course uh, on which uh, training is provided and there are several and we will give, give you uh, details uh, details about it let's uh, give uh, get in touch with us here on the uh, there are a lot of courses mm -hmm. online as well and the, on youtube as well and then if you need that proper trainer they, they we can provide so my team has to learn programming and they are training with a very good uh, uh, teacher so uh, can you tell us a project on the start of with the bioinformatics yeah so you take any genomics project uh, uh, project uh, or bioinformatics project uh, re annotate entire genome that could be a good starting project uh, to start with and we have several such projects where we are re-annotating uh, a human genome or other genomes and there you can participate with us and train. Okay, so uh, let me, can I go live? Uh, let me drink a cup of water first here yeah, so that I'm talking a lot, right? Okay, so okay, so all set. Uh, we are live, and I hope, and then I can take over the presentation, right? So okay, so let me come to the slide screen share and. So, uh, which slide it will be? Okay, just a minute. Okay, so you are here. Sharing, I'm sharing. Okay, so now uh, am I visible? Yes, Dr. Kumar. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, you are seeing my video as well? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay, that's best. Basically, uh, my, me is not important. Presentation is more important. So let me introduce you to the programming. And uh, there are several uh, who are good programmers uh, who are sitting with us, and there are several who are not. So it's like uh, uh, when it comes to programming, uh, programming we are having several ideologies, and we are having uh, some who don't know, and some who knows very well, some who knows Python, some who knows Perl, some someone in Linux, someone knows Windows, someone knows Mac OS. I'm sitting on a Mac OS teaching you, teaching you Linux, but I'm yes, parallelly using uh, Windows. And so, it's programming uh, uh, is something which you what? So you'll ask what is programming? So basically, I will teach you some Python programming, bioinformatics, uh, and uh, Linux introduction. But what is programming? Programming is nothing but uh, but uh, placing things in our order. So basically when you are cooking, you are actually doing some sort of programming. So basically you know how to cut your vegetables, how to, when to fry, when to add salt. So, and uh, the more you practice, you more better you are. So what is the top skill if you ask uh, for a great programmer? So famous uh, Python, uh, as famous uh, Perl developer or uh, inventor of Perl, Larry Wall once said that for programming to get an expert, you need to program every day for next two years. If you are want to program in any language, so uh, uh, good at any language. So basically practice. So the more you cook uh, your 
curry or dal or rice you would become better at it right so you all it's uh, so program for the programming the skill the most important skill is that you start reading and do not uh, uh, do not wait just start it today and uh, start thinking how you can organize uh, organize and how the more the more you practice the better you will be and with this uh, i will uh, because my, my first interaction to programming was with pearl and uh, uh, primarily because we all worked on the the sequencing uh, sequ strings or genomic data uh, which is involved by in us uh, in like our you know our body is made up of uh, cells and cells all cells are carrying a gene uh, gene and genes are genes are strong uh, small strings on on a larger string which is called uh, uh, genome yeah so if you are python if you are a programmer you are from coming from it background you are under, understand what is genome is genome is a, a very large string and on large string genes are a small strings and so uh, basically one how big is the large string the human genome is for uh, uh, 3.4 gb long now yes yeah? so 3.4 gb long means one dvd uh, you need to uh, store and so the big data has already covered many aspect of that so why, that that's why the big data is in so my genome my genome requires at least 3.4 gb to be stored and if i have 100 joint family of 100 members and i want to sequence genome of all of them to understand from where we are coming and where we will be going yeah uh, in future and what the kind of disease will have we will need a, uh, 100 dvds yeah uh, minimum and that's when the that's when the uh, big data comes in and that's when the programming is important and uh, we i will discuss you more theoretically like this and also with some examples let's start okay so let me so uh, uh, when it comes to linux you think okay what is linux linux is an open source operating system and there are different flavors and it's many people ask which open which of the linux version i should start with so there are uh, in linux is open source so basically today i am developing something and tomorrow you can develop something else using your a uh, group of friends so basically debian is one group on which ubuntu uh, debian was very popular say from 2000 to 2005 6 and then ubuntu take over uh, from debian means it was originated from debian and it became much more popular so ubuntu 20 is running now and those who are from biology uh, there is a bio linux for biological uh, bioinformatics application uh, there is so the advantage of Ubuntu is uh, in contrary to Windows is that in Windows, you cannot label it and resell it because it's a proprietary of Microsoft. Here, nobody is a proprietor. Here is open source and uh, it can be Abhishek uh, Linux. It can be your name Linux. You have to invite certain features and you have to improve and uh, take over. So Debian is still very famous, but Debian is outcasted by ubuntu and in ubuntu there are several flavors and one of the very famous one is mint mint 20 what is mint and again mint is based on ubuntu debian is uh, ubuntu is based on debian and uh, mint is based on ubuntu and uh, then a community of people a community of uh, uh, developers uh, uh, develop it for much more stable version and much more media savvy uh, savvy easy to use uh, suppose you are going from windows to uh, linux i will recommend you either use ubuntu or uh, uh, linux mint so if you are, want to plan installation uh, install one of these and you can do it in a virtual box uh, virtual box is something you do not uh, you as a uh, suppose you are using windows you can actually uh, you can actually take over uh, take over uh, the, as a software it, it, it's a free of cost and inside it you can install operating system so you basically your windows uh, machine is running inside that uh, operating system will run it, it can be any operating system and uh, so uh, then there is a second school of thought and there is a second school of developers red hat is a company now and red hat, red hat developed initially red hat and red hat from red hat several uh, open source flavor has uh, originated like CentOS and Fedora. 
and they are uh, primarily linux and but there are some minor changes the community has made it for itself like the way ubuntu install software red hat will not install red hat will install in their own way the command if commands will be slightly different uh, for the not overall for 90% will be same but then 10% they will have their own um, improvement it's 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 like it's like a famous example i will tell you uh, pongal pongal is uh, the uh, uh, dish made in tamil nadu but actually pongal is not nothing but a, a form of a khichdi yeah a khichdi which you in north a lot of people know khichdi and west also so pongal is some sort of khichdi so basically at the time of pongal entire india is celebrating khichdi a pongal khichdi whatever you name so the flavor is changed as as i was started adding some flavor to it and over the years uh, uh, flavors do change and that's when operating systems uh, develop and you know there are several operating systems uh, 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 based on linux and the these are two major versions and as told you that we can uh, do a virtual box uh, installation so what this is virtual box on which you can go to the virtualbox.org it's it's open source software now uh, it is uh, hosted by uh, oracle Well, I guess, and uh, initially it was uh, just called Virtual Box. Now it's called Open Source Virtual Box, and it's a free of cost software. So actually, you just take a, a download your Linux and download the software and install it in like any program and follow the instruction on their website. You will get it. So uh, Virtual Box dot org is the website, and then uh, I am coming to. Uh, Uh, what is bioinformatics? So, as the name suggests, it's a uh, informatics for resolving biological problems. So, it combines biology, computer science. In computer science, it it can combine math, ma mathematics, uh, statistics. You develop software, you uh, develop algorithm, and also those who analyze the anal uh, data. Also, they are called data analysts. In this case, genomic data analyst or uh, biological data analyst. and then uh, so combining biologist and computer scientist together and to degree of uh, 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 to a degree uh, of combination maybe you are strong at biology and you start doing linux programming and after 5 years you are uh, uh, getting very used to it and then you are not using windows so uh, and the less you use the windows and if you use the windows you know how to use windows for computing yeah not for just writing text based uh, solution like excel or uh, word obviously you need it but that's not computing uh, this is very uh, basic computing right so uh, uh, and then you uh, you can say sir i don't have uh, uh, my in my machine linux how can i use uh, uh, learn commands so their windows has already invived uh, uh, linux cell in in it so if you are using windows cell uh, 10 you can use it there is Sig sigwin which we can use for uh, as well then there are lot of uh, google collab will have all python uh, uh, python uh, 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 online you can use there are several ways you can use you can look look how you can use an internet will find it so um, what why you need programming actually so basically i am taking one of the examples i show all the time the gene prediction so on a larger string of chromosome uh, chromosome genome there is a gene which you want to predict and there is a pattern of it right so most of you who are coming from biology probably you are knowing even if you are not knowing then i will tell you the how the gene structure look like gene uh, start with atg signal yeah atg string has to be have first atg then the red portion in the uh, coding region of the gene and that atg the signal that now gene is going to start and gene will end at the end at a signal uh, stop codon uh, TG, uh, tga suppose and uh, tga so that that's when it will uh, gene will end so a string a linear string or passing and you find atg okay you can start guessing uh, uh, after atg at a certain interval first exon is ending then you get a signal gt again after certain uh, certain uh, length you will get a ag so that the intron will 
that intron will end then aggt aggt until uh, you get a tgs signal and full gene is there in the larger string so uh, uh, that's how the a gene look like so if you have to predict uh, entire you know human genes which are about 23000 in number in codings uh, gene so basically you have to look this pattern and this pattern how you look by eyes uh, by hand no it's a, you need a cam kind of a calculator or a tool which can make use of it so that's when uh, that's when uh, we are uh, using program I mean, so you can save a program. Look for these uh, features. It should start with ATG. It should go to GT, AG, GT, AG, and end with TGA or other uh, stop codon. There three, the two more uh, stop codon. So, for example, this one. So this will this will pick. So it's like an you have to tell your pseudocode will be uh, start looking into the string. Yeah, you have to provide your string in a text file or in the program itself, and then say. Uh, search uh, search for atg and then if it if atg is found search next find uh, find uh, uh, gt at the uh, distance you find a ag so intron in human is much larger than fungi and all so you can define how what will be the distance between gt and ag so you primarily um, uh, uh, on a rough scale you'll know and that, that's when you uh, will program it to know uh, that how, how much distance you have to give and by trial and error you will find start finding it or you can say any length if you get it and then get the second pattern third pattern and the stop uh, stop put on tga then this is complete gene and uh, you will make some errors when you are doing programming and then you optimize it and you will get the solution for it so it's like again i'm i always correlate with cooking so or any other event is a programming so um, uh, which you continuously do and improvise it and uh, tr uh, try to uh, bug it debug it yeah so uh, what uh, in our uh, work we have developed several automated uh, pipelines okay so um, uh, in one of this pipeline i'm showing we collected fungi from marine sources so Uh, we actually did actual sagar manthan yeah sagar manthan uh, i mean uh, digging inside the sea and we got the uh, got the marine samples from the sea and the marine fungi in this particular case extracted marine fungi uh, from the uh, somewhere in the coastal sea somewhere or we send the ships uh, for exploration and uh, see collected the sample and then they bring it to the lab their dna is extracted then whole genome sequencing will happen and on, on whole genome sequencing we'll give it for sequencing by illumina nowadays very commonly earlier 454 or and also alternative is a pec bio or, or nanopore these days and then you do uh, do uh, de novo assembly mapping hybridization 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 and uh, uh, hybridization and then you detect the repeats and it, the entire process will go so you need to program it uh, when it comes to data comes to the computer uh, at the stage 3 to stage 11 is analyzed on the computer so basically you are doing the bioinformatics or uh, computational analysis for all these steps uh, all these steps so basically you need to uh, need to uh, systematically organize this workflows uh, programmatically or semi programmatically so that you can repeat the analysis Uh, and the more the more you automate the more save you you save the time so therefore you, whether you program in python or cell scripting or perl it doesn't matter but or even in java or c it doesn't matter but what matters is that you have a systematic way whenever the sample is given to you you analyze it and similarly in the second analysis what we have done is that we take the sample of insect from europe and then uh, we did the similar analysis Uh, by collecting uh, uh, or by a very similar analysis they look differently but they these are this is a transcriptome sequencing but then we also we have to make sure that our pipeline is uh, working so on a day zero there will be no pipeline um, or maybe an existing pipeline of somebody else or from um, literature or from github or any source will take it and then will optimize with our requirement or it, because nobody has developed for 
based on our requirement so we have to gauge it for the our requirement and uh, set up so you have to so each step is kind of a module you can uh, get in get out yeah, so if you have a, a python defini- uh, in python or perl it's called function or in python if you uh, have ever ever read a code it's called def definition and def is a function and then function you need to develop a module or a function for each step and that mm, out input of the first step uh, output of the first step will go to second step third step fourth and fifth and that's how uh, you will get start getting uh, getting the result this is the after we develop the uh, successfully the pipeline it looks like this but during the pipeline it was never linear we were always trying different angles and optimize it uh, do a discussion over it that okay uh, guys uh, in our team we have uh, we have done this 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 with the five possibilities we can do what is the optimal solution what is what is the best solution for us and the, those best solution we have we are showing you now but it's, it's never and uh, advantage of automated pipelines are they're never static they are evolving over time yeah so uh, today if these pipelines were developed today we are improving on it and in my group uh, there are people who are developing uh, improvement to this pipeline so and then similarly there are several other pipelines i mean i'm not going to detail for comparative genomics here but you can read on our web pages and also you will get in touch with me if you are interested uh, this was published in immunobiology in 2014 and so basically you either you do programmatically or semi programmatically or non programmatically but you have to develop a strategy and a pipeline and in life you always have to develop a strategy right uh, so Uh, if corona hit how you will survive we have to develop a strategy and uh, pipeline is nothing but your strategy how is the stronger your strategy the better your uh, uh, analysis the quicker your analysis results and so they in fire uh, there are in several uh, several several analyses are done and this is our phylogenetic analysis we are analyzing genes and putting in the evolutionary history and then you have six, 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 uh, right size is a Uh, signal signatures and then uh, we are doing sequence analysis and ngs analysis so what i am do- showing you as uh, up- um, on top is the sequence uh, protein sequence analysis and the bottom uh, ngs sequence analysis so there is massive application of programming in different areas of research and gene expression so here we have taken this is was published uh, recently uh, in bmc and uh, we, here we are taking uh, four different con- condition of flowering uh, and uh, and one condition we have developed a mutant by inserting uh, uh, inserting uh, tdna uh, tdna or uh, suppose you have made some changes so it's like i i, I just inserted something in the naturally occurring system and then want to see the changes so the poco one is that changed after i uh, after i shoot a gun to uh, a system suppose and then uh, what you see that upper poco one is a muted uh, changed one and then then you see all the bars on the are on the first uh, side so where it is inserted before that they have a very high intensity in the wild uh, wild or natural condition the intensity was in the fourth exon and the right side and that's that uh, that just inserting is like a, it's called genetic engineering you are engineering your system and that will show how what is the difference between flowering conditions what is to find a mechanism we have done this gene expression analysis and there also you, you need to program you can use existing tools and plus you need to program you have to think your strategies and then uh, you will ask from where the data are coming actually data are coming from public resources from different data and you are probably aware dr pankaj has already told you and if not you will go and look a lot of data are available and some and some data you generate locally and then analyze it so uh, what what this line is shows that one who who uh, uh who will uh, uh, not program will look faster in the beginning but over the period the, the, those who no program 
in this red bar they are saying geek to them they will feel annoyed because they are developing something the process so one very good example i can tell you that yeah yes uh, suppose you want to supply the city a water you can take it uh, take it by, by tankers but how many years to send it by tankers if you develop a pipeline of water supply actually you can uh, sustain it much better the same applies to programming so if you make your uh, water supply or your supply regular by systematic way you will a uh, reach to up an optimal level where you it's normal for you so it's uh, when you're saying a developing developed country what they have done is that that's different they have this developed a small city and replicated it to many many cities so smart concept of smart cities is also the same that you make a, um, if you really implement it you have replicable cities and say replicable programming is therefore important that you learn how to automatize and not just supplying water by tankers because that will not solve the problem that the, the day tanker will fail your system is failed so the better to supply water with uh, uh, water supply with pipelines yeah so same applies to the programming better to not today but maybe two years later you do everything by uh, programming maybe your tax calculation maybe maybe your emi calculation you don't have to think okay i will go to excel just think can't i write it a small one in python so uh, that that's what uh, that's what is important uh, to have have you a view about uh, writing scripts so uh, again coming back to the linux and in linux is was originally developed by this guy and as i told you and this is the uh, the, the this duck is actually uh, um, like organism is a penguin actually so uh, is a uh, is a symbol of linux and uh, this is was developed in 1991 and by a finnish guy for linux tor worlds and then uh, it becomes so popular that in the if you are in the bioinformatics you will hear every time are you using windows no no don't use linux so and many many systems use linux because in linux there is no question of uh, 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 buying something is is the open source you can build up on a lot of resources are there and therefore people are using and uh, it's safe also because the pro windows market is very big and therefore the viruses and all uh, uh, will happen and a lot of people will hear uh, uh, fake calls and all uh, f- f- that they will repair their windows and they, these are there so in linux the most important thing is the terminal and we so uh, so i have used my terminal open at black box kind of things this is uh, and there i have just open uh, a text editor called using uh, gedit and uh, then i have also r- st- tried to run python here but the when i say word python my terminal do not understand it and then uh, what i did was uh, then uh, my then my uh, script is saying uh try python 3 probably giving kind of a hint i then i run python 3 and then i see that python 3 is available in my computer not python and so uh, uh this is uh, this is terminal and uh, what is the message here is do not be uh, do not fear out of this is black box actually you enjoy the black box the more you enjoy it so it's your friend it's not your enemy and several things you can do in a command line and it was uh, shortly called as Uh, cli yes command line interface and uh, so we'll see today some examples of command line interface so uh, suppose you in you are in a terminal and you want to see what is inside the terminal so what i did was i went to uh, went to uh, my own computer it looks very fancy right so basically what i did was uh, since i'm uh, doing uh, uh, writing scripts and uh, analyzing data so i have Uh, colored my according to my choice and in there is there are ways in the terminal uh, you can color it so it says my computer uh, my bio bin uh, inside i am in in a uh, software called hulk hulk is a software and i want to see what is inside the hulk uh, hulk folder where which i have taken it from github so there master option is also coming and uh, so it says make file read dot md md um, and run hulk.py the python script src third party products uh, three fold folders are there 
So if I list, so LS is a list as given above. And then if I just, if you just write LS in your terminal, if you are having terminal, you can try now also and you can try later also, but uh, you can get it. And if you would say LS minus LHSA, just now I, just now I run when you, uh, Dr. Pankaj was giving talk. So you see time, other side you are seeing the time frame because I just learned that I have to teach now. And I like that some of the, uh, some of the, every time I present a slide, some of these things has to be totally time bound and totally new. So the, uh, this time I was made, other side is saying time and the command number. So that I have an idea which one, which one and what, what when I ran. And uh, then uh, when I am saying, okay, the LS star, star is the wild card. Yeah. So wild card like Abhishek uh, Kumar. And then you want to see, how many Abhishek's are there in the file? You can say Abhishek star, then it also uh, show Abhishek Mishra. Suppose I had a 20, I had 3000 participant and yesterday uh, it was showing that some of them put not put email. Last night I was sending them a reminder to join today. And I see that uh, out of 3000 plus, some of them put their names in email rather than putting email in the email field. And some of them put forgot to put dot com or dot, uh, Gmail. And then uh, uh, I have to clean those names. So basically I can use a wild type to see how many Abhishek's are there in the file the out of 3000. I'll just say Abhishek star and it will print me all. All. So in this case, I've said list uh, uh, any file with name a star dot MD list any file with name MD uh, ending with name dot MD. And then there was a one as you saw in above, yeah, as you're seeing in the above. So that uh, readme.md is printed. So that's how uh, that's how it will be uh, showing you the result. And, and uh, yes, the as I told you, this is boil card. And obviously, uh, you can do less. Less is so less the file name that will show you the uh, show you the initial content. Less and more. You can also do more. Yeah. And so uh, another thing is that if you do not know about a program, Linux program, suppose in this case, LS, I'm showing you here, you can use a manual page command called man LS. And I'm doing it, I did it just now uh, for you in another terminal. So I have several terminals in my computer. Is, uh, so LS is equal to list directory content. So it will list directory content we saw last slide. And then, uh, then the, it will also give you flags, which is the minus sign minus ls minus uh, you, if you do what will happen so basically if you want to learn you will use ls minus one by one all of these uh, these in your terminal and then uh, you will know what is the best uh, use and what you want to do then according to that you will use the command okay so uh, you should give ls uh, if you have a terminal with you uh, or if you do not have terminal uh, get your terminal and uh, then use this command so any command if you want to do uh, use if you don't know how to use it just do man in the linux machine or even in mac it works and then uh, i want to change my directory so after ls man i just check my directory if you want to check your directory it will be uh, command pwd so it shows user abhishek yeah so user abhishek because i am in the mac and those who know mac will know that uh, in mac it starts with user in the linux it starts with home home username and uh, so uh, uh, it shows that uh, user abhishek and then i want to change the directory i will say cd change directory shorter form is cd cd to document and then i again check what is the path the path since I moved to directory CD, uh, the directory document documents using CD, it is now showing path uh, of the di directory to uh, use uh, user slash Abhishek slash documents. So, uh, and now in my terminal, uh, there it is the arrow is also showing that I'm in the document. So I've said you can actually go to your uh, you can go to your bash. Uh, if you are using bash, you can go to bash dot bash uh, profile. And uh, so there is a bash profile where you can 
define what you need for, from terminal when it is running and uh, or uh, when the bash is running uh, ba or any uh, any uh, terminal is running and there's there its feature will be invite from there every time computer is uh, every time terminal is running so there i have defined i want to see it in this red color and this font and this way so that is that the way it's showing and this is by the way uh, not mine uh, i forgot uh, i took it from internet so i like it so you can it is available in github this this fonting and this system is available uh, maybe i can also put it in my my uh, my uh, github and again uh, again i'm coming back and i'm saying you that terminal is not your enemy because that's when i want you to understand that uh, you have to practice more terminal and get you used to without fearing that your computer will break down so in the computer as i said you there directories are there in linux directories if you remember it says you slash user slash uh, slash home slash uh, slash slash user slash abhishek right so in uh, linux the directories are placed in a very systematic order the slash is called root or admin in, in other way root root is the main 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 organization root and from root has all this application folder means there is the software will be been been uh, uh, other pro, uh, command line uh, programs you see it etc library system information users and in my case user was abhishek then temp folder and the other volume cd efg were what is in windows and then in the lucy or a uh, users folder well, abhishek folder there will be by default some directories will be there like desktop music as you see in windows and then you can define what you want to do maybe you are working on a project maybe you are define working on several projects you will first create a project folder inside the project folder you will have you will have a project directory and in if you are working in a uh, by and friends there are a lot of guidelines how to use your project so you will, in a project folder in a general sense also what you need in a project for, for folder you need a reporting directory where you can report a script directory where you will use the scripts or uh, uh, maybe to do uh, directory where you will some uh, collect your to do so you can define your uh, define your uh, to do uh, to do list and uh, that will uh, define uh, define your uh, uh, that will define your uh, uh, folders and you can place it you, you yeah and by default is called document you can call it my document you can tell it x document y document z document folder uh, or um, several people modify their word uh, windows uh, also right uh, that directory system so by default this is the this is the one which is obviously thrash you need to uh, default throw your um, um, uh, unwanted files and then in the script you will have a uh, cell script that, that is yes, uh, dot s uh, sh text is uh, script uh, python script dot py uh, py and then perl script with or then test dot p u uh, p l and if this c this is called dot c yeah? so uh, it doesn't matter which programming language you have developed and so that's what i showed you already and uh, that you need a command line uh, command then option parameter and the file name and then it will Uh, it will uh, br bring you the options and that's what we it has done in the and uh, pwd as we have already seen and then if you want to change directory which we have already did uh, earlier uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, so the i will i will answer the questions later so there is some question coming up but i will quickly go because maybe i am losing the time yeah so i guess that is for signal for time so uh, yeah so this there there are uh, change directory you can change to slash home slash anil, anil you will reach the anil folder and if you say dot that means you are in uh, it will show you are in the current you want to make changes in the current directory if you do double dot one directory back that means if you are in an anil if you say cd dot dot you will reach one directory back means you will reach home if you are in an anil okay so make directory is the you want to create the directory make directory test then you have you want to move something from 
one so uh, one uh, to other one file to another file or one folder to another folder you say move source through destination and you can do destination so in this case i am saying move file 1 to file 2 so file one will be not be there anymore afterwards, and it will become file two. And then second case, you want to move file to directory. You are making so that will be from wherever it is. It will go to the uh, directory inside the directory. And move uh, one file from one place to another file in within the directory. And copy is the again you copy file one to file two source destination. And yeah, source uh, copy file from one directory to the specified directory. And you can do recursive uh, copying. And then you can also man, uh, man CP yeah, and test it when you are trying. And so these are some examples. I'm not uh, what time. Is. So if you are removing file, you have to be very careful because removing will delete your files, which may be a new requiring it. So in Windows also, you have to be very careful when you're removing files. And uh, removing directory will be RM minus R. And RMDRL will also remove directory, but the funny thing is that only remove empty directory. So therefore, it's, it's of some use, but not fully, fully of use. So better to use RM minus R. So I'm not going to the content. And if you want to continue it, uh, you continue it by cat command. And continue it means uh, suppose you have file one, file two, we have a 50 email ID in the first file and 15 second file. You want to have a fun email ID, uh, all 100 email ID into the same file. You say cat file one, file two, and um, you can create file three or print on the terminal. Okay, so uh, I will skip this and then obviously, you can have a user read write command. So if you understand Linux, you will start you understanding that if Abhishek has permission, so it's similar in Windows 10 also nowadays, that uh, you have, you can only, user can only use some portion of the uh, operating system if they have permission to use it to read write and execute. So we'll skip this permission now and then because you have to do some programming test as well, the time is going G edit of uh, edit text editor is it is. And the programming, why Python or programming is required, I already told you. Python lets me come to the Python. Uh, okay, and if you write a program in assembly language, this big it will be. When you write in C, it will be this big. And you write in Python, it will be one line. So uh, result equal 10 plus 5. So like if you want to compute five, sum of 5 and 10, in Python is one liner and assembly is multi, maybe 8 or 10 lines and C it's at C five lines. So basically, the, the more lines, the more chance of error and it's more difficult to learn and remember. And so therefore, uh, Python is simpler. That's what the whole idea was. And Python was developed by uh, Guido Van uh, Rosam. And uh, obviously, his free can read. Uh, but what I want to show you that there are two version of Python, one which is uh, which has come to an end this year. Uh, to Python 2 and Python 3, if you are starting from as of today, uh, you can use Python uh, 3. And uh, obviously, you can use several text editors, gedit, text wingler. In, uh, and if you are using Windows, you can use Notepad++. Plus plus. And in terminal, you can use uh, uh, Mac or Linux. You can use terminal for uh, writing program there. But there are still ways for using Python nowadays. In a 45 minutes time, I cannot cover all, but it we do run a course over what two months or so, so that those we can enjoy if you are interested in joining our team or getting tra full training. So uh, the Windows uh, in Power in Windows you can use PowerShell, or in, also in Windows you can uh, use now Linux terminal is available in Windows 10. So uh, and obviously on a terminal you write Python 3. That that that's what I did right here in the right side. And then, uh, yeah, so the, the, therefore, I when I ran the Python script, I ran Python and then Python 3. And it, so Python 3.8.2 was running in my, uh, by default, was available in my Linux machine. And when I want to run my script, I can say Python 3. Dot, um, Python dot pi. So here we are showing you one example. If I am running a, 
running uh, print hello world uh, print hello world and you say in the program actually i have on the screen i have written it modified it and said just print hello it says print hello but when i say slash n slash slash n twice it printed uh, by two new line character uh, saying hello and that is a new line since it is a new line character it is also printing if you want to print tab you just use uh, at uh, slash t slash t hello world or slash t hello in this case i have printed on the screen uh, you see that uh, hello is printed so the way you want to print you can print the way you want to modify your data you modify modify your data so uh, you can run uh, run uh, yeah so you uh, most of the uh, most of the time you see sh uh, shashbang uh, um, uh, user bin in five and three or something like this that is for telling come uh, telling a machine which python uh, uh, from where to take it and uh, and also for user to know uh, which python i'm using yeah so that in your computer if you are a complex user you may have several pythons and therefore you want to know which script is using which python and so here what i have done is that uh, for those who are biologists i have taken a py run the something some message is coming just a minute uh okay so some private messages coming i will answer those questions later uh, let me go to the uh, let me go to the script oh sorry i'm in the chat now okay so uh yes yeah, so what i have done here i have taken a large protein script okay and then we want i said uh, this pro sequence a small sequence first uh protein uh, protein equal to uh, uh, in the bracket i put this sequence yeah so you, you can just put your name abhishek or jack whatever is equal to protein and then you can in python you want to know the length you just say length the uh, uh, string where you have put the pro in this case protein i just said uh, length get the le length in the bracket protein and it will give me length of 23 amino acid okay and then i just say uh, dir it, it shows me the uh, the what all what all functions i can use inbuilt function of python i can use with this so there is a lower and i said lower and when i said lower something something happened but then i said lower dot pi then something something happened nothing happened actually i made an error but then there is a way which in which you have to do it so my syntax was wrong i was not pulling the if you pull sync syntax wrong i'll make an error so then what i did was i just take the uh, take out the uh, put it like protein dot lower and then in the lower i see that uh, uh, protein small protein equal to be, uh, capital protein dot lower and bracket means all the input will be taken out so you see that the 23 characters which is a uh, larger uh, in caps in upper uh, portion Uh, uh, become uh, became a smaller uh, a smaller uh, a small letters yeah this lower letters uh, it it converted to lower letters and you can take any protein put it like this uh, as i have put it and practice this some of this uh, uh, dir uh, dir uh, dir variable name uh, and then you can try some of the uh, this and lot of this will work actually and so this is was a live session where we had practiced it and from there i have taken the example uh, this was done on the uh, one month earlier maybe i have some more example for that but what is important here that you uh, start using python on a terminal and uh, and the python uh, full course on the python will be available on youtube as well from uh, mr manish and uh, uh, then if you want to use it you uh, go to the python in an interactive cell and uh, you can use uh, help and get uh, help from the uh, suppose you don't know what print is doing say help inverted commas print and then print will print and you can go to online uh, doc tutorial and say 3.2 tutorial and then it will place your uh, place your uh, queries and with this uh, i think i have taken a lot of your time uh, i will uh, i hope that i have put your uh, stimulated you to learn programming you know, my whole idea is to give you an insight and this is what the first uh, for beginning 
beginning when somebody is joining my lab i we provide them this kind of ideas to discuss on ideas and ask them to do it and we check whether they are uh, if they are not knowing if they are knowing they have different then they have different requirement then they have to directly come in and develop databases for us but the, those who don't know they are also very useful in other sense they will uh, if i have asked you for interview i know where i can use you otherwise i will not even waste a minute yeah uh, so uh, 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 there you will uh, you will know uh, know that and then i am now answering your questions let me stop the video uh, let me uh, stop the share okay let me stop the share so the python course will be available and now i see the some of the questions uh, which are coming is there a feedback link sir actually you can give feedback by email uh, what is the project okay now i see that i am also seeing the old questions sir can you send more material on our mails eg to learn linux on biology students as we have lot of problems in performing dynamic simulation in gromit see if you are not knowing and knowing linux and you cannot do dynamic simulation you have to uh, break down so again I, um, uh, suppose i want to have uh, want to cook biryani on the very first day of my cooking it's not possible there is biryani is a special dish so you have to first start cooking rice chicken separately learn over the period of time or whatever experience you gain you use it and or you take an ex help of an expert and uh, molecular simulation in gromac will be not an easy task I mean, many people are listening on youtube and they probably will help you out and uh, uh, and you are not only one who is facing the problem so whenever you face a problem you have to google it before you somebody else has already faced the similar problem and see how they have faced 99.99 time if you think something same thing you are facing in life whether it's personal or professional somebody else or else before you have faced and nowadays in the era of uh, internet they have placed some solutions at, or at least a a suggestion to solve the problem and no problem is very unique the way you solve it is important so if you are not able to use the software uh, please do, uh, do train yourself uh, and ask the some expert on that and uh, for learning material it can be provided uh, a lot of learning material on linux is available and obviously uh, you can train with us also some of us are training uh, for the training and also this year uh, the missing semester in youtube is a very a very comprehensive 12 hours uh, video from experts where they teach a thorough linux yeah a missing semester course yeah on youtube you will find out so uh, let me go to the youtube questions uh, i do not have the access currently but uh, let me go there So I have to change the user. So since I was talking, I do not see that. Um, and any further question, please ask. Yeah. So, uh, Doctor Abhishek, thank you so much for this wonderful session. Yeah. So uh, let me take the questions uh, from some of the audience. So yeah. one question is: uh, Is the online site provided here teach by you? or your institution iit jodhpur okay obviously that that you can answer and my my team if you want to train with my, my team and my coordinates you always email me and we'll provide you solution what, based on what you are looking for so uh, we have we have lot of training programs and if we cannot uh, help you in your prog python programming we have connections with Uh, uh, experience python programmers from several in uh, industries training industries like tribors is a data science training they are running Py uh, uh, they are running python program and data science program and there are several other associates and then uh, my team members uh, gaurang and vinith uh, they are very uh, 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 pradeep is a good uh, genomic data scientist i am not sure where he's uh analyzing some sequence now or uh, we are he is watching in youtube but they are very good at it and then um, if you have a certain uh, certain questions you can reach out all the pis who are attending the conferences 
and uh, sometimes they can answer sometimes they cannot answer so they just uh, do not bother if they are not answering because they are busy in their lives yeah so some of them will answering you and uh, then uh, start you will start training so i train myself by asking others so i i know uh, the power of uh, training and we do train time to time yeah we do train we organize this is second conference in the year and uh, we expect to have a very regularly training come session and especially in a, an era where everything is online uh, mm, uh, it is more much more va value than before so uh, please do uh, do uh, do come uh, to the uh, do come uh, to us uh, uh, to dr pankaj uh, if if you are one uh, so a, a, by area wise by area wise and but do not bug them maybe you can write an email today like sometime i see the student start writing whatsapp message at 2 o'clock in night yes, sir can i work with you and that that's uh, make a rule that in 10 am to 10 pm you only you write somebody a message and i am seeing i am big beginner want to so next uh, so a next question probably is also good i think uh, how what's the difference between bio linux and ubuntu ubuntu sorry ah okay bio linux uh, bio linux was uh, developed by bela tiwari when she was working with, in uk and now she no more working uh, there she is working somewhere else so bio linux is involving 500 software packages Uh, from uh, in the ubuntu and uh, repackage it and uh, they are giving so basically if you under start understanding uh, uh, so uh, understanding linux or suppose you are have windows 10 you in, uh, install install lot of software inside it and uh, copy it and um, uh, 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 place it uh, place it for the user so one easiest way which anybody can do is like a, a virtual box uh, in virtual box you can install things and uh, uh, give copy to others yeah so in my team no, uh, nobody is uh, installing their own ubuntu so we have a, we have already um, a virtual uh, system where they every computer is looking same and so, so uh, basically you can do so the bio linux is actually one of the version of linux it's ubuntu itself with 500 package and they ha have all also uh, local galaxy in it but now the bio linux is focusing only only on cloud bio linux and the, so last one was ubuntu 14 now this is ubuntu 20 primarily because in research uh, organizations uh, bela tiwari is no more working there but they in 2014 uh, onwards i am using it and there is still way to use it in 2020 uh, we are using it uh, that you is install ubuntu 20 and then uh, look and google it you can install all the packages of bela tiwari uh, or bio linux uh, you on you from your terminal you need little bit expertise uh, and there are lot of uh, material available uh, available and then uh, you can update all the packages uh, in one shot Uh, maybe it takes three days initially, and then you can actually um, uh, develop it. Uh, so the credit to Bela Tiwari, and maybe you ask uh, Bio Linux question to Bela Tiwari by uh, googling her name and email ID. Uh, that was a credit. One of my friend uh, uh, who is now in um, uh, Ireland, and he, his name is Vimal, and he developed Vimal Linux long back, and there he was using lot of biological. Okay, so basically, I told you literally, you can develop your in your own name, and uh, maybe ten of your say, I ten of your ten of your master students can uh, develop. And if you are interested in developing, we are also have interest to develop a specialized uh, bio Linux version. Yeah, uh, because Bela, I'm, I'm not sure Bela Tiwari will develop further, so we can call it some other by other name, and uh, we can develop. So there's a real. I'm constantly looking for a person who want to. Uh, Uh, get in touch with me for such development because it's not a one man it's a community based we still you need 20 people at least to uh, do different type of things and then chalk out the plan yeah so some, some other question so well, i is a last question probably uh, what's the how can we uh, make uh, boolean uh, networking in python boolean um, uh, network in python yeah, so I, yeah maybe i can answer this yeah, so sure. there, is a, there is a package in python so you can use that py boolnet so there you can develop python net boolean networks based on different logical constructions 
So uh, yeah, so I think I hope that answer your question. So uh, maybe we can uh, now. One question which I see in YouTube, I want to answer it. What is the what is the approach to take research in a predicted data set in absence of experimentally validated data? Uh, experimentally validated is the so you make a prediction and you make your best effort to predict and then say this is not validated. However, uh, this this is presumably correct. You never claim even if you are doing experiment, you make some assumptions. So. any experimentally validated data is not 100% full proof of accuracy yeah so that, that's that's when yeah, and there is a no divide you should not divide those who are doing experiment and those who are doing a uh, computation there is no divide it's actually common it is a common cause so uh, we make lot of papers where we make predictions and then others are using it afterwards because that accelerate their experiment so you have to understand it's a vice versa if there is a validated data it will help us and if there is a no validated data it helps the experimentalist to uh, use the prediction so it's like a, a shaking hand with the computing and experimental uh, areas and and it is occurring in all the areas you can't say your papa is uh, was doing better in your family than your mummy so something like this both are equal partners because otherwise you will not get born if you if they are not cooperating with each other properly and growing you together so uh, same thing applies to the experiment and by uh, and computing uh, and all areas of research so in a company also if python developer will not talking to uh, software other software developer they, they they you are looking for communication all the time so that's the answer actually yeah thank you this is last question i'm uh, uh, glad that we are organizing a lot of good questions came thank you uh, pankaj yeah thank you again dr abhishek this was a really wonderful uh, explanation so um, we look forward to the next uh, guest uh, doc mr arpit deepak yadav so mr arpit deepak yadav is working as artificial intelligence and machine learning researcher at tensor bureau in hyderabad so um, we really look forward to him he is also working as corporate trainer in python so i hope he will be able to give you a, an in depth understanding of the python con python concepts and data science concepts so um, yeah please admit uh, mr uh, arpit uh, team yeah uh, so uh, yeah so it's my pleasure to introduce him he is currently also pursuing his doctoral uh, work in machine learning from uh, indore and he has done pgp uh, uh, diploma i think in artificial intelligence and machine learning from great alex in hyderabad he has done mtech uh, in vlsi design and be in electronics and telecommunication engineering he is having about 11 years of experience including vlsi research and uh, he also has plenty of experience working in it industry and it's great great pleasure to have him on, on board to explain about data science and different approaches that are used in data science so he is more technical person so i we really look forward to his uh, session thank you so much arpit for having us uh, for for being uh, on the board yeah, yeah so stage is yours now thank you dr pankaj sir yeah yeah thank you very much thank you shall i start my session uh, before starting session please let me know my screen is visible hello yeah it is yes and my voice is clearly audible yes you are audible yeah my voice okay. is clearly audible. okay thank you very much thank you very much i am starting my session thank you very much dr pankaj thank you very much yeah uh, good afternoon all the participant i welcome all of you in the international conference on data science in biology my name is arpit yadav today i am going to give you a overall gist about the world of data science machine learning and artificial intelligence and today as we are learning about how we are applying the data science in the biology concept so i will be also giving one gist about the project of cancer detection using machine learning algorithm how actually we people are working into the companies so we i, I will be explaining you the overall concept in the most easy way so i welcome again all the participant i hope that you people are doing well and safe with your family during this pandemic situation first of all before starting the session i would like to say something whenever we are learning any technology in the world any new technology in the world always ask the three question to ourselves 
okay whenever we are interested to learn any technology three question we have to ask ourselves what are those three question first question is what is this technology about second question is why companies are using this technology and why this technology is very famous in the market and the third question is after upgrading the skills in this technology what are the advantages that i will get after upgrading the skills in this in this technology either in terms of job or either in terms of research so let's start the today's session in the most effective way before starting the session i would like to give something short overview about me my name is arpit yadav i did my b in electronics and telecommunication engineering and m tech in vlsi design currently i am pursuing my phd in machine learning i did my post graduation program in the world of artificial years of experience parallelly due to my passion i am having the 8 year of experience in the corporate training recently i have been awarded as a inspirational scientist award in artificial intelligence i am having the three patent out of his two indian patent in artificial intelligence domain and one australian patent in artificial intelligence i am having five plus top most international journal papers on the machine learning and deep learning topic i did 70 plus certification in the world of data science python machine learning deep learning and artificial intelligence currently i am working as a research scientist in artificial intelligence and machine learning at tensor brew hyderabad i am also working as a thesis supervisor at upgrade bangalore i am entering certification program in artificial intelligence and machine learning by enict academy iit guwahati i am i am also associated as a subject matter expert at white pandas technology for data science in bangalore i am associated as a freelancer live session expert and mentor in artificial intelligence and machine learning at factual ai bangalore i am also associated as a freelancer data scientist at sudiksha analytics hyderabad and i am also giving consultation in artificial intelligence and machine learning domain at iiot labs nagpur and due to my passion that i want to impart my knowledge to the upcoming generation i am also working as a corporate trainer in the data science machine learning and artificial intelligence so this is a short overview about me now let's start our today's talk that is what is the world of data science machine learning deep learning and ai and how we are applying this concept in the biological world so first of all first of all we it is very necessary to understand what is the world of data science then we can apply this concept to the different applications that is biology is one of them so let's understand the overall process so in the very first slide i have given the three question to you so that that three question in terms of data science and machine learning will become like that first question is what is this data science and machine learning technology second question is why the companies are using this technology and why it is so much famous because now right now it is a top trending technology in the world and the third question is after upgrading the skills in the world of data science and machine learning what kind of opportunities are waiting for me in the market in any terms either in terms of job or either in terms of research so i will be answering this all question in the most easy way i will be explaining this overall world of data science in most easy way so that if any non technical person is attending my talk today he will also understand that so i will be explaining in most easy way don't worry so i will be covering who can learn data science machine learning deep learning and ai what is exactly the meaning of data science and machine learning in the company why it is so much famous nowadays technical point of view how this technology is impacting our day to day life and using this technology and what is after the components we are using in data science what are the data science process and after upgrading the skills in the data science what are the job role available in the market what tools we are using in the data science and machine learning world what are the application and challenges so i will be covering all this process in the most easy way so first of all it is very necessary to understand the world of data science machine learning and ai then i will be explaining you how we are applying this concept for the cancer detection using machine learning algorithm so let's start the session whenever i am giving my talk across the world so i am having the very good questions from the participant that who can learn the data science the ma the major question that i am getting from the participant that who can learn the data science and in that major question this is the question 
many experienced candidate is asking me a doubt i am having xyz i am having any year of experience i am from xyz field fresher student those who are recently pass out they are asking me the question i am pass out from xyz branch undergraduate students are asking the question i am learning from this branch so whether it is possible for me to learn the data science or not or if it is possible then what is the right time to learn this technology so i am having the very interesting thing to show you people i am having i will be giving this answer by showing some very interesting thing that will be called as a motivation for me for us the interesting thing is he is mr siddharth pilli he is mr siddharth pilli seventh standard student working as a data scientist in hyderabad i am also working in hyderabad this news is correct news and true news because he is uh, what we can say interview has been telecast by many news channel he is mr siddharth pilli seventh standard student working as a data scientist in company similarly he is mr tanmay bakshi 16 year old boy 16 16 year old boy he is a international personality he is very famous he is working as a ai researcher with ibm company only 16 year old boy and he is giving talk across the world in the world of artificial intelligence and machine learning you can search he, about him after my talk so he is mr tanma bakshi working as a ai engineer with ibm company and finally he is mr sarang sumesh he is 8 year old boy 8 year old boy making the artificial intelligence robot again he is very famous his episode has been telecast by history news channel so he is 8 year boy 8 year old boy making the artificial intelligence robot now i want to ask the question to the participant if small children can learn this technology then why we can't why we can't learn this technology answer is very very simple anyone can learn this data science and machine learning technology only the things required are learning attitude and your time and patience if you are having the learning attitude and time and patience so obviously you will be learning this technology in the most easy way and finally who can learn this technology anyone can learn this technology that i will guide you in the most easy way and what is the right time to learn this technology already we are late if we are interested to learn the data science and machine learning world so already you people are late we have to start from today because nowadays school children are learning this technology and they are doing so much good then it is it is our responsibility that we should upgrade our knowledge in this technology now let's go for the next process why this technology is very famous why every company is using this technology data science and machine learning because if you search in the google also this is a top trending technology and hottest technology in the market so because all the multinational companies in the world are having the huge amount of databases with them again i am saying all the majority company all the multinational companies in the world are having the huge volume of data with them and from that data company want to make a business that's why company has declared that data is their fuel of 21st century and because of that data which is stored in their databases huge volume of data they want to make a business from that by solving so many project how because they want to solve the problem of demand and supply that's what they have declared data science and machine learning is a very attractive career because data science and machine learning is changing our technology and it is it is it is changing our world in so many aspect and because of this overall reason company has declared that data science is the future data science is the future now the question is arising in your mind that what is the exact data science from company point of view because we people heard the science word so many times so what is the exact meaning of data science so i think that responsibility that i will be explaining data science in most easy way so that non technical person can also understand so what is a data science what is data science data science is nothing but science of data to make a business very simple what is data science data science is a science of data to make a business because we are making data work for you that is a what we can say practical approach of data science so now the question is arising in your mind that how we are going to make a business and what kind of science of data you are talking about now let's understand this process again in the most easy way just remember as per now what is data science data science is a science of data to make a business how we are making the business that i will be answering 
Now break the data science into two part. Break the data science into two part. Data is separate and science is separate. Now according to the company, what do you mean by data? According to all the company in the world, data is divided into two categories: structured data and unstructured data. Again, what do you mean by structured data and unstructured data? Structured data means very simple. In your computer, suppose you are having Excel sheet, okay, and any information is filled in that Excel sheet. For example, any college is having the Excel sheet, and they have a student information in that Excel sheet. All all information is filled correctly. All is that kind of data is called well formatted data. So what do you mean by unstructured? Video, audio, and text. That is unstructured data. Again, I am repeating. What is unstructured data? Data available in the form of images, video, audio, and text. That is unstructured data. So, according to one analysis, it has been said that out of hundred percent data available in the world, seventy to seventy-five percent of data is unstructured data, or we can say eighty percent of data is the unstructured data in the world. now what the data science people are doing now we know that data is available in the form of structure and unstructured so what the data science professional is doing in the company they are applying science to that data science means what some technical process to that data so that data will giving you the hidden information okay and from that hidden information company is making the business so see very simple company is having the huge amount of data available with them structure and unstructured majority category is unstructured data so company is want to make a business how they want to make a business so in the company they are hiring the data science professional and what is the responsibility of data science professional they are applying some technical process to that huge volume of data and after applying that technical process data is going to reveal the hidden information from that that means what data is trying to tell you huge volume of data is available what data is trying to tell you so that hidden information that data science professional is finding and from that hidden information company is making a business so very simple what is data science science of data to make a business every company is using the data to make a business and finally we can say like that data science is an art data science is an art to find the insight from the data that is a data science process now again the question is arising in your mind that how the company is gathering the data how company is having the huge volume of data along with them so for that purpose we people are responsible how how we people are responsible for that because you people are under observation for if you are typing the messages in whatsapp and facebook if you are uploading the photo in facebook and if you all the generation has uploading the videos in tiktok you are doing any online activity that is purchasing the any uh, you are, so you are doing e commerce website you are doing the online activity in e commerce website like amazon either ola and uber if you want to go somewhere you are ordering the food from zomato and swiggy so it indicate that you people are generating the huge volume of data and your data has been collected by that that you are safe you are having the password in your phone but whenever we are downloading any app so that app is asking please allow to share your gallery please allow to share your content and we people are happily saying yes yes so our data has been leaked we are sending our data to the companies so it indicate that we people are responsible for generating the huge volume of data and companies are observing you one more example after my talk after my talk what you can do just go to the amazon app if you are having amazon app in your mobile just go to any product but don't purchase that product go to that product but don't purchase that and come out of the amazon app after 2 hour or 3 hour when you will going to other app social media app you will find that same product will be highlighted there so it indicate that amazon company has observed your activity that one user has entered into the amazon app view one product but didn't purchase that product might be due to certain reason so it is a responsibility of amazon 
to show that product in the different social media where you are login to motivate you to purchase that product so that is one kind of data science okay so you people are under observation and every day intentionally and unintentionally we people are generating the huge volume of data okay intentionally and unintentionally we people are generating huge volume of data nowadays political parties are using data science to win the election how whenever political party is posting the post in facebook and suppose we are liking or putting any comment on that post so that comment or any like is analyzed by the company and after analyzing they are giving the report to political party that this post has 80% of positive review so you are going in right direction so that is the one example i am sharing with you so in this way you people are generating the huge volume of data and according to one estimate it is said that up to the year 2025 every day we individual will be generating 463 billion gb data together in the world every day so you can imagine 463 billion gb data we are going to generate so for that purpose for that purpose company is having the big big server to store that data hence because of the data science world because of the data science world cloud computing technology is also booming in the market cloud computing means what big servers are available at the different corners of bring the so that's the data science because of this reason data is declared as a new oil information and asset in the company we people are living in the 21st century and we are enjoying the industry revolution 4.0 we are enjoying the industry revolution 4.0 and industry revolution 4.0 has been declared the era of machine learning and data science up to this slide i am saying that every company is having the huge volume of data because of that they have declared that data is the new oil information and asset and industry revolution 4.0 is the era of data science and machine learning that's why this technology is very famous majority of project available in this company majority of research going on in this world that is data science and machine learning and hence because of this reason we are enjoying the data science world today after that many international organizations and research institute has done the analysis on data science and machine learning harvard university is one of them so harvard university has already given the report that according to their study and analysis they have declared data scientist is the sexiest job of 25 our all majority companies are doing the outsourcing project and we are giving the outsourcing project to america europe germany uk and so on so in that country also data science is the top most professional data science is the top most professional that's why there is a again reason that india is having the majority of data science job or data science project so in this way we are having the huge volume of data science uh, we can say opportunities in the market sir nowadays you are observing majority of universities are opening the data science and machine learning branches in the undergraduate program so that's what i am suggesting the participant those who are fresher those who are listening my talk please choose data science and machine learning is one of the career field because anyhow in future you want to learn this technology because company will be asking you to upgrade your knowledge in this technology now finally how this technology is impacting our day to day life as i said intentionally and unintentionally we people are surrounded by the world of data science machine learning and artificial intelligence how every company in the world is using this technology for example automation industry they are making the driverless car google has made the driverless car tesla has made the driverless car uber has made the driverless car they have started their services also outside india social media are using the machine learning and artificial intelligence and data science marketing industries are using banking industries are using to detect the fraud sales industry healthcare industry traveling industries are using the data science and machine learning after that e-commerce industry manufacturing finance and so on it indicate that we people are surrounded intentionally and unintentionally by this technology you are not knowing that you are using that technology but you are using that technology every day intentionally and unintentionally 
that's what data science is impacting your day to day life and these are the other industry where data science is also impacting their process that is healthcare robotics cyber security education and so on all this industry in fact i will say that no industry is left in the world those who are not planning to diverse themselves in the world of data science and machine learning because this is a profit nowadays so working with the data science and ai is a profit so up to this process up to this slide it is very clear that what is data science data science is the process to find the hidden information from the data and that data may be from the any industry today i am going to explain you the biology after my talk so our data will be from biological industry data science process means what what is a data science process we will be applying we will be applying our technical knowledge to that biological data to find the hidden information so this is the process we are following in the company and what kind of data we are having in the company we are having the structure and non structured data in the company so this is the process we people are following in the company and finally that why this technology is famous technical point of view why data science is very famous from technical point of view after my talk again i am asking the participant please search in the google that what is machine learning you will came to know that data science machine learning and artificial intelligence that means is already introduced to the world in the year of 1959 again i am repeating the word machine learning has already introduced to the world in the year of 1959 why it is famous today why it was not famous in 1959 why it is famous today because there are some some reasons are there some factors are responsible for that and these are the reason these are the reason for that if any one ask you in future why machine learning and data science is very famous nowadays you have to give this four answer this technology is famous nowadays because of this four reason first reason is availability of data as i said today data generation is very easily on a single click we are generating huge volume of data second reason is we are having powerful computer systems today when i am talking about powerful computer systems so powerful computer systems in two way that is memory capacity and processor capacity memory capacity means we our computer should have a good memory capacity and good processor like gpu then only we can able to do a data science and deep learning project third is powerful algorithm today in the company we are having powerful algorithm the world of machine learning that is algorithm means the world of machine learning and deep learning where we are applying algorithm to the data so that data is going to give you hidden information and the last reason is open source software tool so these are the four reasons which is very famous and because of these four reasons data science and machine learning and deep learning is famous nowadays and open source software tool means what many participant is having misconception that what is the open source software tool they are saying that open source software tool means freely downloadable yes free downloadable is the one of the feature of open source tool but let's i will be explain this open source in a very easy example python language is a open source language python language so python language is open source so how it will be helpful for us so let's see the example actually let's take an example if we are a expert in python language all the participant are expert in python language so anyone in the world can contribute to the development of python language how suppose you are making one library in the python language which is written by you and no one has written that library in the world you have written that library after that you are giving that library to the python professional community for approval now that python professional community will view your library and they came to know that yes this library is very useful for society so when the next version of python will be launched your library will be included in that so in this way as a single individual you can contribute to the development of that language and that is a meaning of open source software tool anyone can contribute to the development of that tool that is a meaning of open source tool so because of this four reason this technology is very famous now finally if you want to learn this technology and up to artificial intelligence you want to learn this technology so this is a smart road map this is a smart road map to learn artificial intelligence you cannot directly learn artificial intelligence without learning this deep learning machine learning and so on so i will be explaining this diagram in the again most easy way let's take an example artificial intelligence is the five floor building 
it is a five floor building artificial intelligence is the fifth floor name and you want to go to fifth floor so how you will go you will not bring the helicopter and directly go to fifth floor that is a wrong approach what is the right approach you will go step wise that means first you will go to the first floor that is the floor of language many language available in the world python java r language matlab language many language available but why i have written here python because python is the most dominant language in the world it is very easy to understand and majority of project in the company is in python language so after learning python language we have to learn data science that we are talking that is our talk is on data science today so data science is nothing but science of data to make a business so we are analyzing visualizing and interpreting the data of any project i will be explaining after this slide don't worry so second you want to learn data science and mathematics because mathematics is the soul of machine learning and deep learning and ai after learning data science and mathematics learn machine learning after learning machine learning learn deep learning after learning deep learning learn ai so these are the smart way you have to learn the artificial intelligence because this is the relationship between artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning artificial intelligence is the bigger umbrella whereas machine learning is the subset of artificial intelligence and deep learning is the subset of machine learning now again the question is arising in your mind that what is artificial intelligence what is machine learning and what is deep learning so again i will be explaining this concept in the most simple way what is artificial intelligence very simple artificial intelligence it is a process to make such a machine which behave like human that is ai again i am repeating what is artificial intelligence artificial intelligence means it is a process to make such a machine which behave like human now the definition of artificial intelligence lies in the word itself artificial intelligence break artificial intelligence into two part artificial and intelligence so what we are doing we are providing intelligence to the machine artificially that is the world of artificial intelligence second word is machine learning again very simple what do you mean by machine learning machine learning means machine is learning from the data past data and after learning from the past data machine is ready for prediction for future data that is machine learning very simple again i am saying break the machine learning into two part machine and learning who is machine participant is thinking that machine may be a computer yes computer is one of the machine but alexa alexa is also one machine sofia robot is one machine robot is the machine drone is the machine so machine may be anything that machine is learning from what machine is learning from the data that's what in the previous slide i have shown you this that machine learning depends on data because machine is going to learn from the data so machine learning means learning from the past data and predicting for future data and finally deep learning what do you mean by deep learning the world of neural network see what why this neural network came into existence because the neural network came into existence because scientists are inspired from our human body inside our human body there are billion of neurons available and all neurons are responsible for making the communication with each other and that's why our human body is functioning so by taking the inspiration of neuron scientists has make the artificial neuron and that world is called as deep learning world so in the world of deep learning we are learning from the data that means who neural network is learning from the data and predicting for future data so that is the relationship between ai machine learning and deep learning so what is ai ai is the process to make such a machine which behave like human what is machine learning machine learning means learning from the past data and predicting for future data similarly deep learning means what world of neural network we are learning from the data that is neural network is learning from the data and predicting for future data that is the process of deep learning now finally when you are planning to learn this technology so you are making a plan so first plan is language so when you will be learning this technology and searching in the google what are the top 10 skills in the world you will find artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning on the top most always remember whatever the searches you will do in the google blindly you will find always artificial intelligence and machine learning is on the top 
similarly if you search in the google what are the top 10 programming language in the world you will find python on the top you will find python on the top because it is so easy language to learn anyone can learn this language now finally i will be explaining the project flow whenever any project is coming to us in the company so how we professional are working in the company in the world of data science machine learning and ai and i will be explaining this project flow with the help of one example of the biological example only let's say cancer detection so i will be explaining this project flow that is the workflow of artificial intelligence in the industry now let's take an example all the participant we are a employee of one company of machine learning company that one as one project project learning algorithm cancer detection using machine learning algorithm so what our team will do first of all as a we are employee of the company so company is having different different team so our project name is cancer detection using machine learning algorithm so very first responsibility of our team is that we have to collect the data related to cancer patient because we have to work on machine learning so machine learning and data science and ai is totally data dependent so first our responsibility is that we have to collect the data related to our project and our project is cancer patient detection using machine learning algorithm so we are collecting the data related to cancer patient so that team in the company is called as big data engineering see this diagram there are three blocks in this diagram a b c block number a block number b and block number c what is block number a block number a name is big data engineering so this team is responsible in the company for collecting the data related to your project and our project name is cancer detection so this team is collecting the data related to cancer patient from the hospitals from the hospital real time data and they are using the tools for collecting this data technological tool called sql hadoop and spark so that's why it is called as big data engineering because they are collecting huge volume of data of cancer patient huge volume not 10 or 20 they are collecting lakh number of cancer patient data from the hospitals and finally after collecting the data they are keeping the data in the database in the company at a very starting i said that company is having huge volume of data of different industries in their databases so here this team is collecting the cancer patient data and keeping in the database now after that this a team is giving the data to the b team the b team is the hero of our today's world and we are talking about that only today data science and machine learning world so what that b team is doing that b team first team is data science team in the b team first team is data science team what is data science team will do data science team will analyze visualize and interpret that cancer patient data again i am repeating that a part has collected the data and they have keep the data in database of cancer patient now b part b team will be doing what is the responsibility of b team in the b team first team is data science team the data science team will analyze visualize and interpret the cancer patient data for that purpose they are using the tool called python and other visualization tool called tableau and power bi visualization means observing the graph so the data science team is having the responsibility of analyzing visualizing and interpreting the cancer data cancer patient data and this process in the company is called as data cleaning this process in the company is called as data cleaning and after cleaning the cancer patient data they are giving to machine learning team and deep learning team or ai team and this team is responsible for applying algorithm to that data algorithm to the cancer patient data so that that data will reveal the hidden information so when this data science team will clean the cancer patient data with the help of python language they will give this data to machine learning team where machine learning team will apply the algorithm to cancer patient data so that cancer patient data will reveal the hidden information what is that hidden information that machine is learning from that data which data cancer patient data so when we apply the algorithm to the data so data will process through that algorithm this concept is called as machine learning that machine is learning from cancer patient data that if this is the medical input of the patient then patient has the cancer if this is the medical input of the patient patient does not have a cancer that is the hidden information and that hidden information machine learning will give 
so see the block number b output of machine learning is a model so this model is having the hidden information of cancer patient data and that hidden information is available in our computer in the company okay in my laptop for example i am working on that project so it is available in my laptop so how do i make sure that project is applicable to common public so that common public can also avail the facility of that project suppose my model is working very perfectly after doing a lots of testing so at that portion we are using the part number c deployment team cloud computing team so this deployment team is responsible for converting your model which is available in your computer in the form of app or website deployment team is converting the model which is available in your computer in the form of app or website with the help of cloud computing now let's take an example we have converted our cancer patient model in the form of app with the help of cloud computing this cloud computing is aws amazon web services google cloud platform or microsoft azure any one of them we can use and we have converted in the form of app now that app is available in the play store so you will download or common public will download that app cancer patient detection so after downloading that app that app will ask a medical input that app will ask a medical input we are feeding the medical input to that app and finally that app will give the output you are not having cancer so in this way in the company we are working i have explained once just simple workflow how we are working in the company in any project and i have taken the example of biological project but after my talk i will be showing how the cancer we are detecting with the help of one uh, practical example also i have prepared that file for you people just i will finish my talk today so this is the workflow and in this workflow we came to know that part number a big data engineering team is responsible for collecting the data related to project they are using the tool called sql hadoop and spark part number b team is responsible that is data science team is responsible for analyzing visualizing and interpreting the data related to project for that purpose they are using the tool called python or other visualization tool called tableau and power bi the word analyzing interpreting and visualizing in the company is called as data cleaning is called as data cleaning that is the data science in the company cleaning the data okay so that is the process we are following in company and this diagram is showing that before giving data to the machine learning team we are cleaning the data and i am sharing one knowledge with you people in the world of data science and machine learning whenever we are working on any project so 70% of time we are spending on data cleaning why because the more you will clean the data the more machine learning will learn effectively so always remember data cleaning means what analyzing visualizing and interpreting the data for example you are having excel sheet of cancer patient data in which some information is missing so you are filling that information by your knowledge that is called as data cleaning process okay that is one of the example i have given to you so 70% of time we are spending in the company's data cleaning and after cleaning the data we are giving this data to machine learning team as i said and this machine learning team is responsible for applying algorithm to that data and when that algorithm is learning from the data that concept is called as machine learning and after applying that algorithm to data that algorithm will find hidden information from that and for that purpose we are using the tool called python or other domain knowledge that i will explain you so python language we are using and mathematics knowledge we are using because algorithms are made from mathematics and now finally as i said quality in Input desired quality output. The more quality input machine learning will get, more quality output machine will give. So this quality output is nothing but hidden information in terms of model. So output of part number B is a model. That model is we are getting from the machine learning team, and that model is having hidden information. And that hidden information we are giving to a deployment team for converting that model in the form of app or website. And for that purpose we are using the tool called Amazon web services Google cloud platform or Microsoft Azure so this is the process we people are doing in the company and finally i have explained you the overall workflow whenever we are working on any project in the world of data science suppose you are working on automation industry project collect the data of automation industry and follow this process in this diagram first collect the data of that project and store that data after that do the data preparation called as data cleaning after that explore the data observe the graph 
after that apply the algorithm to the data and do the prediction now you people are suppose from the background of biology this process is common this is applicable to all the industry in the world only domain is changing now you people are working in biological domain so if you are working on any project so first collect the data related to that project and then apply this process this process that is collect the data and store the data of that project clean the data observe the data apply the algorithm to the data and go for the prediction so this is the process we are following in the company that means this this whatever i have explained in the part number abc is the same seven step of machine learning world first gather the data related to project prepare the data that is clean the data choose a model means choose a algorithm when we are applying the algorithm that algorithm will learn from that data and that is called as training and after that once the model got trained or machine got trained you have to check that machine is working properly or not that is evaluation testing and after that it is working properly then go for prediction so this is the process we are following same this process if you search in the internet you will get this also so all those thing which i have explained in this diagram all those thing which i have explained in this diagram this diagram this diagram this diagram and this diagram is same discovery means what collect the data related to project data preparation means what clean the data that is analyzing visualizing and interpreting the data model planning and model building means what apply the algorithm to data and operation means what after applying the algorithm to data data will give the model as a output and check that model is working properly or not that is operation and communication result means what after getting the good prediction you are communicating the result with your stakeholders in the company that is the process we are following discovery means collection of data data preparation means data cleaning in the company so world of data science means data cleaning okay just keep one word in your mind after that model planning and model building means what applying the algorithm to the data operationalize means test the output of the algorithm and communicate the result with your stakeholder so finally finally if this process we have gone through whatever the raw data of our project is available we are giving that raw data to data science team that data science team will prepare the data analyze visualize and interpret that is data cleaning after cleaning the data they are giving the clean data to machine learning team that machine learning team will apply the algorithm to the data data will give the model as a output and that model we are deploying to the common public with the help of cloud computing so this process we have gone through and finally exactly when we were start when we will start working on the project okay when we will start working on the project so whenever data is available of cancer patient for example you are having the python language and data science knowledge so you will analyze that data first after analyzing you will came to know what happened in that data that kind of analysis is called as descriptive analysis whenever we start analyzing in one project practical so you will came to know what happened in that data by applying python language or data science knowledge to that data so you came to know what happened so this kind of analysis is called as descriptive analysis finally further you are going for analysis you came to know why did it happen that kind of analysis is called as diagnostic analysis finally again you are going for further analysis that after what happened and why did it happen further analysis you are going that is predictive analysis that is the world of machine algorithm so always remember predictive analysis means machine learning what could happen in future that means you want to do prediction so after doing and up, applying the machine learning then we are giving the recommendation that is called as prescriptive analysis how to make it happen and finally the world of ai called as cognitive analysis if you are if you want to make a product of ai cognitive analysis what to do why to do and how to do so these are the, the theoretical process i have shared with you and finally about the tools as i said every day number of tools are coming in the market today we are enjoying the python language in the company who knows after 3 years one new language will come in the market okay so we have to learn that language so we have to learn that language so always keep upgraded your self or your knowledge with the recent tools because tools are every day evolving in the companies and finally this is the data science skill set we are looking from the professional in the world of data science person should have the knowledge of mathematics not complete mathematics only four chapter that is the probability calculus statistics and linear algebra again i am repeating only four chapter we should know statistics probability 
calculus and linear algebra then machine learning knowledge you should know algorithm the world of algorithm computer science knowledge you should know computer science means does not miss computer science branch computer science means one language knowledge either python r or matlab so if you are having the knowledge of python only that is sufficient even though i don't know r language i don't know r i only know python so you should know the uh, language knowledge then data cleaning knowledge and then you are ready for job domain expertise means what now let's take an example today i am giving a talk to you people in data science and in biological term biology is not my domain i i don't know biology honestly speaking i know data science but if suppose people in the company don't know the domain suppose today i explain you cancer patient data we are engineer i am not a doctor so when the data is given to me so it is not is possible for me what is that variable about i don't know so for that purpose companies are taking the help from domain expert that means directly from the doctor so we people that means in the company data science and machine learning scientists are sitting with the domain expert and then we are discussing together to solve the project similarly today you people are the biological domain for example i am from the data science domain so you and me will be sitting together that is a domain expertise you are having domain expertise for example so this is the skill set as i said statistics knowledge you should have domain knowledge is important visualization advanced computing and data engineering now finally once you are having all this knowledge of this statistics visualization that is observing the graph machine learning and deep learning knowledge then you people are job ready and for that purpose after learning the python language you have to learn the data science these are the seven libraries in the world of data science without learning python you cannot learn data science library so that's why remember that my five floor diagram first learn the python then learn the data science by the use of this seven libraries in the world of data science you are going to do the data analysis that is data cleaning so these are the library pandas scipy numpy i am not going in technicality deep only i am showing just for the sake of information after learning the data science learn machine learning these are the four types of machine learning supervised unsupervised semi supervised and reinforcement okay these are the four types of machine learning that is algorithm inside this all four type algorithms are there after learning this machine learning learn deep learning that is the world of neural network and these are the four different architectures of neural network okay unsupervised pre trained network cnn whenever we are working on project of images and video then cnn architectures are used recurrent neural network whenever we are working on the project called languages texting that is twitter or suppose we are writing the messages in whatsapp text text data then rnn is used and finally recurrent recursive neural network so these are the architecture of neural network of deep learning after learning the deep learning these are the libraries we are using in the deep learning world uh, might be this all the technological term to you people guys don't worry just i am showing for the sake of information if in future if you are planning to learn machine learning and deep learning these are the words are going to encounter in front of you so in this don't you are, you don't have to learn all the word all the blue color text are the name of libraries only five library you want to learn which are those on the left hand side column top two library that is scikit learn and tensorflow and from the bottom from the same bottom two library that is keras and pytorch and on the right side column cntk only five library if you learn you are job ready you are job ready and finally after learning deep learning learn the ai world artificial intelligence are divided into three category artificial narrow or weak intelligence artificial general or strong intelligence and artificial super intelligence as i said remember the definition of ai very simple artificial intelligence is the process to make such a machine which behave like human so what we are trying to do we are providing intelligence artificially to the machine now finally we are comparing human intelligence with artificial intelligence that is machine intelligence so we came to know that after comparing when we compare machine intelligence with human intelligence we came to know that today still machine intelligence are far far behind than human intelligence machine is only ahead with compared to human intelligence in two aspect first is memory capacity and second is faster calculation for example we human being cannot remember 100 mobile number 
बट मशीन कैन रिमेम्बर क्रोर मोबाइल नंबर मशीन कैन डू अ फास्टर टास्क देन अस सो ऑन दैट मशीन इज अहेड देन अस बट इन टर्म्स ऑफ इमोशन दैट इज वी ह्यूमन बीइंग कैन फील द इमोशंस स्ट्रांग एज कंपेयर टू मशीन सो व्हेन वी कंपेयर ह्यूमन इंटेलिजेंस विद मशीन इंटेलिजेंस वी केम टू नो दैट टुडे आल्सो मशीन इज फार फार बिहाइंड दैट ह्यूमन इंटेलिजेंस दैट कैटेगरी इज कॉल्ड एज आर्टिफिशियल वीक इंटेलिजेंस नैरो इंटेलिजेंस दैट मींस वी स्टिल डिडंट एबल टू मेक सच अ मशीन व्हिच कैन बीट ह्यूमन इंटेलिजेंस इन ऑल एस्पेक्ट दैट इज नैरो इंटेलिजेंस Finally, scientists are trying their level best to make such a machine which completely behave like human. That kind of category is called a strong intelligence. That means a day will come where human intelligence will exactly equal to artificial intelligence. That is machine intelligence. And finally, finally, a day will come that is the most dangerous one. A day will come where machine will be completely surpassing the human intelligence in all aspect. That is called as artificial super intelligence. so these are the process i have explained to you all of you up to the artificial intelligence and finally after upgrading the skills in the world of ai that these are the tools are needed to get a job or to do a research in the field of data science first learn the python then second learn the libraries of python that is data science library that is panda matplotlib scikit-learn and so on after that learn the four types of machine learning algorithm after that learn the architecture of deep learning and is all are the libraries name that is tensor flow pytorch keras then after learning this overall process you are having the knowledge of language of python mathematics knowledge machine learning types deep learning type data cleaning process then finally after upgrading the skills in this technology that is after having the experience in these tools you are getting the job in the company and these are the job role for you people in the company that is data scientist machine learning engineer nlp engineer and so on so these are the different designation in the company of the data science professional top most is the data scientist i recommended all the participant if you are planning to learn this technology so data scientist go for data scientist because data scientist is the top most position in the company and with a good package so finally these are the team role in the company data engineer data analyst data scientist and machine learning scientist data engineer please remember my that diagram abc part number 8 is big data engineering responsible for collecting and storing the data related to project this is the data engineer responsibility okay and for that purpose they are using the tools called sql and hadoop and python so this is the data engineer finally data analyst in the part number b first team data science team is called as data analyst they are responsible for analyzing visualizing and interpreting the data related to your project that is cleaning the data for that purpose they are using the tool called python language mathematics knowledge and visualization knowledge called tableau power bi and so on and finally after data scientist machine learning scientist that is our machine learning is the person those who know which algorithm we have to apply so for that purpose they are having the knowledge of python language visualization knowledge they are having the deep learning knowledge they are having the mathematics knowledge so this knowledge machine learning team is having and finally finally data scientist versatile person in the company that is hero this data scientist is responsible for finding the hidden information from the data data scientist know how to clean the data python that means one data scientist can act as a data analyst or act, act as a machine learning scientist also so data scientist is the versatile engineer responsible for finding everything from the data so become a data scientist i will like to suggest and finally these are the team in the company data engineer data analyst data scientist machine learning and so on and finally after getting the job in company this kind of application you are going to make in the company for example i am after my this session i am going to give one just fast overview about practical how we are detecting the cancer so we are applying the artificial intelligence technology in biological domain in different way drug discovery personalized treatment smart electronic health record disease identification radiology clinical trial and so on there are n number of ai or data science application in the biological domain we are using that for me biology is one domain 
and i know all the technical process and for me biology is one domain suppose if i am not having the biological domain knowledge so we are taking the help from biological expert and biological expert and i will be sitting together to solve the project that is the concept we are doing in the company and finally these are the various applications of machine learning again in biological term bio image informatics Uh, that means we are observing the genes also Geno genomics is also one kind of application very hot application in the world of machine learning and data science drug design analysis and so on this is all the process of application of data science and machine learning in the medical applications and finally there are different applications also that means speech recognition alexa okay of siri alexa of amazon siri of apple google this application we are making in the company called as robotics industry okay robotics industry means where we are giving the intelligence to the robot artificially this is the application automatic machine translation from one language to another we are using in the company finally instant visual translation uh, automatic driverless car we are making in the company transportation companies are using data science and machine learning food companies zomato and swiggy is are using the data science and machine learning and finally what are the challenges we people are facing in the company i am going to give you within a very short period don't worry so i up to this slide one concept is very clear to all of you i guess everything in the world of data science machine learning is data we are totally depend on the world data that's why data is declared as the new oil information and asset in the company so whenever in the company we are working on any project but we are not getting the data related to that project that is the biggest challenge we are facing in the company suppose i am working on any disease but i am not getting the data of the disease very easily that is the biggest challenge we people are facing in the company second challenge we are facing in the company we are not getting skilled manpower to work on that technology that is skilled professional many colleges are also blaming that companies are not coming for recruitment i am talking about tier 3 colleges so uh, obviously skills are not there in that student that's why companies are not visiting many a time startup management is not giving financial support to r&d department of data science team many times unavailability and access of data we are facing in company data is with the third party they are not giving permission to access and there are privacy issues in the uh, data collection for example if i will ask you people to please collect the cancer patient data from hospital and i will go to collect cancer patient data that hospital will say that who are you we should have a first agreement then we can go ahead and finally lack of domain expert we are having so this is the process we are following in the company and lastly how we can make a career in this field learn this skills machine learning deep learning and so on and after learning all these skills apply in all industry all industries are waiting for you people to give you a job once you upgraded yourself in this direction and finally what is the today's take away today's take away is that we came to know if we are working in the data science domain this is the life cycle any project we are working on that is the business objective project name is a business objective and always remember companies is selecting only those business objective those who are having the business okay so after having the project name so we are collecting the data related to project after that we are collecting the data then we are analyzing and visualizing and interpreting the data after that we are giving to machine learning team for applying algorithm output of algorithm is model we are testing that model that is evaluation after that we are giving to deployment team to convert that model in form of real time application so that common public can use and finally you are monitoring that so this is the life cycle we have gone through and uh, finally we came to know data science means what it is the process to find hidden information from data different technical tools we are using what is that technical tools knowledge of python mathematics visualization and algorithm this four knowledge of python mathematics visualization and algorithm when we apply to data data will reveal hidden information so different job roles we have gone through different application and challenges we have gone through so finally i have found that many participant when learning this technology is having planning of learning but they are having wrong approach they are expecting to learn data science and machine learning within one and two month from any online certification and from any institute and directly they are doing rocket science project without knowing the basic concept directly they are doing the rocket science project so this is a wrong approach so at the end of the day you will not hit a target please see the left side diagram you will not hit a target 
but what is the right approach this is the right approach don't keep any time duration learn the basic concept of data science and machine learning learn the mathematics behind that after learning everything very easily then do small small project first baby step project and understand the working behind that baby step project once you are confident on that then do the big project do the internship case study participate in hackathon and build your profile very strong and finally you will hit the target so that's all about my today's theoretical webinar i hope that a picture of data science is very very clear to all of you my name is arpit yadav and i am working as a research scientist in ai ml domain uh, this is my linkedin id if you want to connect me in mobile and if you are having if you want to connect me in my email id also you can connect so this is the world of data science and finally i will be showing only within 5 uh, minute how we are using this data in world of kind detection so python actually and this tool is called as jupiter i don't know that participants are aware of this jupiter notebook or not but i'm showing you a just journey how we are using that so our uh, topic name is breast cancer detection using machine learning algorithm so what we are doing first of all collecting the data related to the project so we are having the data of breast cancer uh, in the python language only so in uh, see i don't know how the cancer is happening <laughs> honestly speaking to you people i am from engineering background this is a medical topic so in the cancer there are two types of cell benign and malignant okay so these are the two cells from which we are declaring that if the malignant cell is there so the patient will be having a cancer or if the cell is benign then patient is not having the cancer so that we are doing so what we are doing that means we are reading the data with the help of this data science library see these are the data science library so this data science library i have shown to you in my slides also seven library after learning the python language you have to learn this data science library on the top position once you learn this library then this libraries are using we are using this library for data analysis and data cleaning so we are using this library and after um, importing this library whenever you are learning any language any language so we are importing the library related to that projects so these are the library data science library after that we are loading the cancer patient data which is available in that library itself load breast cancer data so this data set is already ready made available in this library so we are using and loading that data with the help of this library so we are having the cancer patient data available and that cancer patient data after reading and analysis we look like this. okay this is the middle analysis at initial level but finally when we are converting in terms of table so this is a data science or what we can say breast cancer data set so i am not knowing the meaning of this mean area mean smoothness so that's what if i am not knowing the meaning of this we are hiring the domain expert from the company who knows the breast cancer domain very well so we are hiring the doctor and the doctor is helping us to know what is the mean area of the cell what do you mean by the mean parameter of the cell perimeter of the cell and finally in the last column this target column is having the information zero means this patient is not having the ca cancer that means it is a benign cell so this is the past information of patient patient number 0 patient number 1 and patient number 2 and these are the medical input of that patient medical inputs of that patient we are collecting and finally we are analyzing this is called as overall analyzing process in the world of data science we are analyzing that data that column names and its data type and after that we are visualizing the data also see i will show that data visualization this is the data visualization see this is the graph this is the graph we are analyzing in with respect to each variable in the company and finally finally that means there are different type of visualization we are doing again this is the visualization out of the complete patient available in the data set how many is having the cancer how many is not having cancer so zero means not cancer so up to 230 patient is not having cancer and up to 350 patient is having cancer one means that patient is having cancer so that kind of analysis we are doing this analysis is helping us to know that in the given data set more cancer patient is available because one information is more and zero information is less so this is called as data analysis and finally after doing this all kind of analysis this is analysis after doing all kind of analysis we are applying the algorithm 
and these are the algorithm see these are the algorithm right now it will be very earlier uh, to explain this because might be you are not knowing this just i am showing the tour how we are applying this algorithm or after cleaning the data and after applying the algorithm algorithm is ready for prediction that means it is going for prediction so in this way we people are working in the company in any project and first of all we are working only when the data related to that project is available so that's all about my today's session i hope so that you people have enjoyed this today's session now if you want to contact me you can reach me out in this information and now open for doubt solving session if anyone or any participant is having any doubt please feel free to ask me the doubt thank you very much yeah thank you so much uh, mr arpit yadav it's a great pleasure to have you here so thank we you, really sir. had an expert view on in data science and yeah. i'm very uh, i'm very uh, sure i'm confident that the audience and participants would have really learned a lot from your uh, yes yes insights so yeah um, thank you arpit uh, i will raise some questions from reading from um, youtube yeah yeah and please amit please. ranjan is asking is it possible to classify different subset of breast cancer yeah see actually uh, honestly speaking uh, it is possible from a data science point of view i can say it is possible but uh, for a breast cancer how it is happening that knowledge i am not having because i am from a different background yeah. so but basically yeah, if... i can add it to it so basically yeah. tomorrow i'll present where we will show you some example of breast cancer Yeah, uh, yeah. It, uh, uh, image self uh, okay. deep learning okay. uh, and correlating with my uh, uh, rna seq data so okay. basically there are several things is rapidly uh, machine learning is changing several areas of research yes 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 and in breast cancer also you can start distinguishing uh, yeah classes so, and yeah. ask yeah. ask uh, questions which are very good for your career because he has explained you uh how to become a data scientist so yes, yes. Uh, today every person who is uh, watching us or who is not even not watching us mm -hmm. uh, uh, if they train themselves uh, in a good way they can become a uh, data scientist uh, yes, and yes, data yes. science uh, user in the long yes, run yes. and so therefore he build up the career over 10 years right Yes, yes. Next ten to fifteen year, obviously, this technology is on the top. <laughs> yeah. So next twenty years is only about data. Yeah. So yes, yes. How do you? How do we validate our model? Mahendra Singh is asking. See, validation means what? Whenever you are testing the model, so there are different evaluation metrics available. Okay. Suppose the accuracy of your model is supposed down. okay it is not coming good so might be that means we have done some wrong data pre processing there are so many reasons behind that for example underfitting and overfitting concept is available underfitting concept is there so it indicate that we are not having the sufficient amount of data so that our model is learning from that again we require more amount of data that concept is called as underfitting underfitting very easy example suppose i am teaching one subject to student there are three month of class and i only teach one month of class syllabus is not completed that is underfitting i have one teach completely to the student similarly in terms of machine learning complete data is not available related to that project that is underfitting so in that process your model will not work properly second process is that you are provided sufficient information to the data that means over excessive information for uh, uh, what we can say um for a only 2 minute answer i am giving you one hour answer that is overfitting that is called as a noise unnecessary data you are providing to the model at that case also your model will not work properly so in order to avoid this two concept if you want to validate or you want to test your model very perfectly so under overfitting is avoided by using the cross validation technique and regularization you can improve the model performance and under underfitting you are uh, means uh, improving by applying sufficient data to the model so model means very means uh, we are working and giving a very serious concentration on making the model very perfectly so cross validation technique is useful for applying or removing the overfitting concept in the machine learning and for underfitting we are giving the more data to machine learning so that it will learn properly and it will give the good model as output
So uh, there are some more questions. Yeah. Which kind of data science project might be considered as a baby step in order to stand off into okay. potential future sharpening skills. So that's what I'm saying. I'm also teaching this concept because I'm parallelly working as a corporate trainer also. So in the world of data science, suppose you want to uh, enter one plus one project. If you want to do one plus one equal to two, then work on first Iris data set project. Iris, it is one flower data set project. Apply your all knowledge, whatever data cleaning you learn, apply to that Iris data set. That is one plus one equal to two project, baby science project, we can say. Baby step project means one plus one equal to two in the world of data science. Because once you understood that project, once you understand the concept behind that, then you can go for some bigger project. After that, you can go for house price prediction project. Okay. After that, you can go for, we can say, uh, in the Kaggle website, is there one Kaggle website, very famous. All the data set freely downloadable in that website. You can take any kind of problem statement from that. So start from very baby step project apply your concept in that in the world of deep learning go for that handwritten digit identification okay fashion image classification project baby step project and then finally after having a confidence then go for bigger project yes to, so i will add to this uh, from biological side perspective or clinical side perspective first yeah. start understanding the data suppose you are working with the genomic data how yes. genome annotation works and then only we can bring it to machine learning why you're using machine learning to improve what is existing. Yes. yes. And so the, if your data, if you start understanding the data, so uh, 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 for instance, if the Facebook will not understand user requirements, they cannot solve it or sell yes. it to a company, the, your data. So basically we have to understand our data of the field and do that. You just have to do initially very basic from the data. So without Python, the entire data science will not work since yes. the same way without knowledge of the basic sequence analysis and NGS and others omics data, you cannot do data science of genomics. Yeah. Yes. So exactly. the same, same applies. And then some more questions. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Uh, one question I, uh, okay. So, uh, there was one question the thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. There are a lot of questions. Normally, uh, cannot. Be yeah, yeah. I hope, sir, sir, participant enjoyed the session because I am not. Uh, yeah, they are asking. Me. They are asking you to start a company and they want to join. Okay, I already giving the I mean, sir, training or uh, giving the guidance to so many people because it's my passion, sir. I found one concept. Many people in India. I am a international speaker now. All of going in the wrong direction to learn. I want to stop that. First, my agenda is that please learn in the step wise. I have shown in this slide. Also yeah, yeah, sure. That five lower building. So this is my agenda. All the participants, please reach me out. I will help you out to learn in the proper way. And uh, parallelly, I am also open to spread the awareness regarding this. Learn in the proper way. That's it. That means if you are going in proper way, surely I will give you a guarantee that after one and two year, you will be a master of this technology. Just go according to guidance. How difficult it is to the biological background to get in the field with IT background, such as a data science compared to someone with IT background. <laughs> I have already given the answer in the most easy way. If the small children are learning that technology, so why you people can't? That means, see, any person, if you are having a learning attitude, Believe me, you can give me your 10 standard student also, but that student should have a learning attitude. Okay. That's that student should be serious about learning. Then I can challenge you after two months, that student will be having the knowledge of Python and data science, that type of guarantee I'm giving you. Why? Because this is very easy. Anyone can understand. Although you are from any background, I'm talking about 10 standard student. Those who I want enter college also, there is no background also to that student. That student can also learn. And one information to all participant, I would like to add here for your kind information, all the participant. Government of India has already started giving that data science and machine learning training to the school kids. So please learn this technology, otherwise, upcoming generation will throw you out. <laughs> that means they will they are learning this technology in schools also. So please, please learn that because I have given that slide also. Just a second, I'm coming to that slide.
anyone can run either you are from biological background or you are from mechanical background any background even though you can take my example i am from electronics and telecommunication background okay i did my engineering in that but after that i upgraded in this technology and you can see that it is possible so this is that diagram i have given at the starting of my slide small kids are learning this technology small kids why you can't seven standard student mr siddharth pilli tanmay bakshi you can search after my talk search about tanmay bakshi he is very famous person working with ibm as a ai researcher so if you are from that biological background so you are having one advantage you are having domain knowledge of biology learn this data science and go in the research domain and in fact one thing lastly i would like to add that in overall world right now in healthcare sector there are many project in the world of data science and machine learning healthcare is on top because there are so many project in this okay now there is a question which is interesting is data yeah. argument is possible in the machine learning like we use in a deep learning for imbalanced data yeah imbalanced data we are see whenever imbalanced data is available so first of all we are balancing the data okay imbalanced data means what suppose i am having the 100 example 100 data set available your uh, and output is yes and no output is yes and no so 90 yes and 10 no i am having so it is imbalanced data so first of all we are doing the data balancing we are making the ratio between yes and no in the balancing way and then we are going ahead for analysis mahendra singh as is asking in terms of biological data which learning technique supervised or non supervised is applicable okay i will explain that very easy way supervised learning means what suppose you are having one data available and in that data output is available okay it always remember if you are machine learning having four types supervised unsupervised semi supervised and reinforcement so whenever you are working on one project you have collected the data related to that project and in that data suppose output is present then you have to apply supervised algorithm is totally depend on the type of your data then we are applying the algorithm remember always that's why machine learning people is hired when to apply which algorithm suppose in the data output is present then apply supervised learning and if in the data output is not present then there is you you only have to apply unsupervised learning that's why name has given unsupervised no output in the data so it depend on your problem statement and data if you are having data and no output apply unsupervised and in data output is present then apply supervised learning i hope that that doubt has been resolved if suppose your doubt has not been resolved you can connect me in my uh, contact information i have shared with you people and i will be happy to help you out people because it's my passion now to guide the people in the right direction okay good so good afternoon uh, good afternoon sir good afternoon good abhishek afternoon. sir Yeah. So this is Grago. Actually, I was watching your session right now. So actually, I am right now in the field of you know I am uh, gathering more knowledge into this one, the drug discovery okay. using uh, DL methods. Can you guide me on that thing if it is possible? Sure, sure. For DL also, I am having one smart roadmap available. If you want to learn deep learning, then I will guide you. Sure, for that. Yes, It's my pleasure because I am already guiding. <laughs> It's my pleasure. Uh, you can connect with me. Uh, this is my contact details. I will be guiding you in the most easy way. Just follow that guidance. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. I hope that participant enjoyed the session, uh, organizer, because chat is not visible to me. I hope that they have enjoyed the session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that they have a lot. Uh, you can have a look at the YouTube afterwards. Uh, yeah, yeah. uh okay so there are lot of questions and then we have tried to answer all the questions thank you very much uh, yeah. uh arpit and yeah. uh, this was a really great learning because we are yes, coming yes. from a slightly different background yes and yes, yes. Uh, yeah so basically if you make a little change in you every day so if, yes. if you learn first python program writing yes. python program today and may, may every month every day you write one program 
in two years yeah. you, will, you will write 700 programs so basically <laughs> yes, yes. the approach towards um, i'm discounting uh, holidays so yes, yes. therefore i said 700 and uh, uh, then in two three years you will be able to start learning uh, when to use supervised learning and when to use unsupervised learning yeah so uh, and then discuss discuss with others yes, yes. Uh, make forums make forums of your friends and uh, arpit uh, you can always reach arpit and also to us and yes, yes. Uh, to many others yeah so there is a no, no limit in their uh, digital age you can reach harvard to ranchi to ranchi to jamshedpur jamshedpur to jammu and jammu to yes. connect and you know me this is very easy this is very easy yeah 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 very easy once after uh, after studying this technology when you will start the journey after six months you will only say that it was very easy and before six months i was having a fear of this a yeah, very easy don't worry okay so finally i am very thankful to dr pankaj and dr abhishek for just inviting me and i really enjoyed by interacting with the very enthusiastic participants i really enjoyed the session yeah so with this uh, i think we have a break of uh, approximately 20 minutes and 2 o'clock we'll meet and uh, so uh, those who want to stay and those who want to uh, uh, have a break and quick lunch because the next session will be uh, on Galaxy by um, uh, Dr. Ashu and Harpreet and I think they're here nearby and uh, so uh, uh, have a break uh, please, uh, please eat something drink water keep water with you because they are they're coming with a little, four uh, trainers will be there in that session and they will be training you on galaxy okay okay sir so shall i leave sir yeah i mean uh, we really thank you all and a clap for him at once uh, once everyone <laughs> thank, and, you, sir. Uh, thank you so much sir thank you yeah, thank you and, thank you, uh, so uh, thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you okay I thank, thank you. you. Yes. Sir, one last request, please send me the, uh, what we can say, a YouTube link, sir, YouTube link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you will get it. You will get it. Uh, okay. YouTube link, all the, all the media, which is uh, covering you will be sent yeah, yeah. and also general ones. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Kumar? Dr. Kumar? Yeah, I'm here. So Dr. I Kumar, am... we are breaking for lunch? Yeah, we are breaking for lunch. Okay. So All right. we just so we'll... stop, it, stop it for now. And then uh, we need a, we need a, a testing, a testing, a, a, we need a testing uh, 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 Zoom channel uh, because the speaker may some is of the speaker want to test the link. Okay, okay. so uh, uh, yeah, so we uh, 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 yeah, so le let's break for some time and then yeah. we'll come back. Right, okay. sure, sure. If you want, we can put up a slide over there showing. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, it's yeah a lunch break. We are getting back. Right, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Noel. Yeah, I'll do that. Sure. Me. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's meet at one o'clock, everyone. I will also get take a biological break. It's already one, sir. Oh yeah, yeah. One forty-four. I mean, <laughs> one for. So let's meet at two o'clock. Actually, sorry. Okay. All right, two o'clock. So uh, um, uh, yeah, time zone difference. <laughs> so okay. uh, uh, yeah. So basically, we meet at two o'clock, and uh, Ashu, Doctor Ashu, and uh, Harpit will be there, and with uh, they have. Uh, other team members and they will introduce them as well so uh, yeah we are looking forward
Hello. Is Dr. Ansu already joined? Yeah, hello. Hi. Hello. Yeah, hi, Dr. Ansu. So, uh, Dr. Abhishek, would you like to uh, probably yeah, start, start the session? Yeah, we'll start the session. And so, uh, Harpreet is also joining, I guess. Is there? Okay. So, uh, let us uh, come to this uh, third <coughs> of the uh, of the meeting today. Uh, that third portion of the workshop and Dr. Uh, Anshu Bhardwaj from Imtech Chandigarh. And uh, she is coordinating Galaxy India, which is uh, on the way. And she will be training uh, along with uh, Dr. Harpreet and uh, others. And she will introduce their team members. And so she is coordinating uh, Galaxy India project and uh, on uh, which uh, obviously she is a, a researcher working on various areas and tomorrow will, tomorrow uh, when the conference is starting you will be able to hear what she is doing in, and uh, apart from that she is very inter much interested in reproducible science and application of galaxies she is bringing galaxy to India Indian version will is coordinated by her and supported by CSIR uh, CSIR, I guess, and so she will introduce uh, uh, about it. And so, uh, Dr. Anshu, uh, stage is yours. Uh, thanks, Abhishek. Thank you so much for having me here. Am I audible? Yes, 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 you are. Okay, so let me start by sh sharing my screen. Uh, can everybody see my screen? Yes, I'm able to see and I can check that. In... Okay, it's going on in YouTube as well. So that shows is everybody's seeing. Let's go ahead. Great. So a very good afternoon to everyone and uh, thanks. Uh, IOB and IIT to put this uh, wonderful workshop and the conference that starts tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to various talks uh, that are going to be there. And I've been on and off since morning listening to various speakers of previous, uh, like from the previous levels today. And I'm pretty sure that all of us have learned a lot from them. So as a follow-up of uh, how do we basically do reproducible science, as Abhishek was referring to, uh, the effort for our um, uh, initiative here, like now and next 45 minutes, and then after again 45 minutes is to introduce you to a workflow system called Galaxy. Okay, And we'll uh, learn during the uh, talk why do we need to do this, how it can be of real help, and what are our efforts to ensure that we have a wider uh, infrastructure that can be made available for the Indian scientific community to make reproducible uh, workflow systems. Now, just to start off, uh, the title of my talk says Introduction to Galaxy. Now, if you go and type Galaxy as a keyword in Google Images, this is what you get. So you really don't get anything more, more than this. You get more and more pictures of Galaxy. So if you are looking at Galaxy Workflow, you should write Galaxy Workflow and you start seeing images like this. Yeah, for people who actually have worked with Galaxy before, it makes sense but the newcomers out there may need to know more about what's going on here. So what I'll do is I'll simplify the task for uh, the new people on board who want to understand what workflow systems are. So to put it in a very, very simple uh, words, what is a workflow? Now, if you see here, it is, a, uh, it is a conveyor belt and on a conveyor belt, there is a pizza dough. And as the pizza dough moves forward on the belt, a particular uh, pan is adding a specific amount of sauce. The next one is adding a specific amount of cheese. And the last one is adding a specific amount of mushroom. Now, this workflow clearly indicates that every time a pizza is coming out of this workflow system, the, uh, the quantity and the amount and the way it is being thrown at the dough is the same. So your expectation would be that the taste of the pizza at the end of the exercise is going to be reproducible. It's going to be exactly the same. Now, the minute I replace these saucepans with something which is more manually done, you know there's going to be variation, right? And 
the whole point is that these variations in PISA may not impact us so much. But if we have these variations in the way we do data analysis, it's actually going to mean something completely different at the end of the book. So in most of our uh, cases, this is how our workflow looks like. So we actually don't work with simpler problems. We are have several steps, irrespective of whether doing a computational experiment, whether we are doing a wet lab experiment, there are several steps to it. And there are several decision points, right? Now assume that I have executed a huge project and I have these so many steps where I took decisions, right? At some point, I don't want to basically do this, right? Now, if I change this step and I have done each one of this step manually, What's going to happen is everything that comes afterwards, I'll have to repeat the whole thing. Okay, if I make a small, small change here, things upstream and downstream, I need to change this. If I continue to do and run individual applications in a manual manner. This is what Dr. Abhishek was also referring to at his lecture when he was teaching you Python, that in a programming concept, everything has to be streamlined. You change one thing and the rest also needs to align it aligned to it accordingly. <coughs> so having said that, your workflow design can have several challenges and to overcome these challenges, what you have are workflow systems. So a typical workflow system is basically the main objective is to perform routine, extensive, com complicated tasks. And if I replace it from making a PISA to data analysis, it can mean anything from data transformation to data mining to data analysis. So point is, it is a repetitive exercise done by a system. So that will, again, means because if there is no manual interference, there is reproducibility. Every time you expect to get the similar result, irrespective of who is doing it. You can share these protocols. So the details of the methods are shared with somebody else exactly how you did it and not by writing it in materials and methods in a paper that can sometimes miss a very critical point and render the whole exercise non-reproducible. Transparency in the protocol. So the, again, the point, if I have done some analysis and I want a field expert to review it, I can actually send the entire workflow, the analysis pipeline as is. Somebody can look at it and say, uh, okay, at step eight, instead of point eight, you might like to put up a value of point one. And I don't have to do everything again. It at the end, just rally on the full tree. So it's giving me advantages of reproducibility. It is giving me advantage of sharing, transparency, and it is basically a community-centered exercise because not, as you can say, with more and more interdisciplinarity, as your previous speaker was also referring to, the minute the interdisciplinarity of a subject increases, it actually indicates to the point that many collaborators start working on the same project which means that you need to have transparency in protocol and understanding of what's going on with each of the partners. Now, to give you an idea, uh, let me just go back and see if there are any comments on not so far. All right, so we are good. Okay, so now uh, this is basically a cartoon showing that we are, being, we are actually drowning in the big data. And I'm not talking of big data as Arpit was referring to from many, many perspectives. I'm just focusing on genomics. And if you see the genomics data projection is at one zettabyte basis per year by 2025, which is not far away. Which practically means that if we need to make any sense of this data, we need to have workflow systems that allow us to churn information from this data in a reproducible fashion. And as already highlighted by previous speakers, in addition to workflow systems, or you want to use workflow system, there are several components on top of it that one has to learn today. You must learn data analysis, which includes machine learning, AI, network science, predictive modeling. There are several domains that one should know today. And workflow systems try and help you put it together in a simpler fashion. If you have developed something and it has to be used by somebody who is not an expert in the field, a workflow system allows them to be used by a wider community. And this is again Menayan from bench to bedside. So the point is your, your sequencing machine practically looks like a pen drive right now. So the data size that we are talking about is only going to increase in future. And with increasing data size, the skills in data analysis is what is the current and the future market is going to be. And of course, people who are doing data science will also be need 
you know, the, you, you are, as data scientists, we are required to provide our applications and platforms in a way that somebody else can use them without learning too much of everything, like a mobile phone. So for somebody who developed a mobile phone, we don't know how it is developed, we use it, right? We still can use an application which we really don't, which we cannot build on our own. But data analysis protocols today are very, very difficult for somebody who is not from a, a computational background. So we need to provide these workflow systems in an easy to use fashion for a wider community. So that brings us to Galaxy. And what I'm showing here is actually applicable to any kind of a pipeline based or a workflow system. So a simple thing is that you have a question in mind. And with that question, you start with an input. Like say, for example, I have sequenced a new genome and I would like to now know how many proteins that sequence has so that I know the functionality or the capacity of that genome. So say, okay, this is the kind of function this genome can do. So that genome file becomes the input. My job one becomes, say for example, doing the structural annotation of the genome. So I can use gene scanner. I can use several other methods to really identify how many ORFs are there. Then those ORFs can become the in output one because of their output of job one, but they become the second input for job two. With job two means, now I know that these are the uh, the, these are the fragments which may code for an ORF and now I need to functionally annotate them. So my job one becomes structural annotation, my job two becomes functional annotation. Once I have done the functional annotation, I would like to do a pathway alignment. Once I have pathways, I need to do more beyond it. So depending on what my question is, I can keep on adding the number of steps to a workflow system provided what my question is. So I know my question, I know my data, and then I'm trying to do a stepwise analysis of that data and building my workflow system. Now, as you can very well realize that the question that you are asking versus what I'm asking you differ. So we need to basically mix and match these uh, jobs in a way that suits our requirement. And that is why any workflow system which has to be used widely should be modular. I should be able to play with the components and it should not be a rigid structure which says, okay, this is what you have. These are the steps you need to follow and no modifications. That won't work because every question is unique and, you, and every question needs to be addressed in a very specific manner. We can still use the same combination of tools, but in a different fashion. So that gives us, you know, an infinite choice uh, of combinations in which we, which we actually we can run these. So in order for us to understand what I'm talking about, I have taken a small example. Uh, so for, uh, for a very simple understanding, um, if you see here, this is nothing but a eukaryotic cell. And we know that we all have a, a nucleus which has a DNA, but we also know that there is something which is called as mitochondria. And mitochondria, there are several in uh, a single cell. And each mitochondria, when you bloat it, you will see that it also has its own DNA. So it's a semi-autonomous organism. Though the DNA is a small, it actually encodes for 13 protein coding genes, 22 dRNAs, 2 rRNAs, and some non-coding uh, uh, segment is also there. But more than 3,000 proteins that are required for mitochondrial function are encoded by nuclear DNA. So the point is what you have here is, you, is a circular DNA, which looks like a bacterial origin DNA, because this, the nuclear DNA is not circular. So the point is you have this small DNA and the reason I am focusing on this DNA is the following. Mitochondria is responsible for several diseases. And if you see this graph, we did a representation a few years ago in our paper. We have showed that in past 15 years, the application of mitochondrial DNA sequencing in medical research, as you can see by the increasing width of this green uh, bar, is increasing over time. Why is it happening? One of the simpler thing is this. Though there are a very large number of tests that are available to diagnose mitochondrial diseases, they are not affirmative to 100% value. In the sense that just by one test, you cannot diagnose it. That is why the Mitochondrial Medicine Society has recommended next generation sequencing as the first line of diagnosis of mitochondrial diseases, which means that when a patient comes and the doctor feels based on clinical symptoms that this person can have a mitochondrial dysfunction, the first step is to sequence the mitochondrial DNA and not the last step. So it has actually has a direct clinical application. So now in this context, where does a workflow fit in and why do we really need it? 
So if I can take you to the next slide, you can see that this again is a circular representation of a mitochondrial DNA. And the only difference is this time I have mapped all the genes and a few tRNAs that mitochondrial DNA encodes for. And on the outside, I've listed all of the clinical diseases that mitochondrial DNA has been shown to responsible for. The issue is that there is a huge overlap in terms of symptoms of these diseases. So one-to-one -one correlation, like if you see here, uh, a small uh, section, there are so many diseases caused by a very small number of tRNAs. And sometimes even a single uh, modification sometimes can lead to several diseases. So there is a genotype to phenotype complexity that even after sequencing is hard to resolve. And given that it's not just ATP, mitochondria is involved in several functions, you still see this heterogeneity of symptoms. So the point is now all of this data, the sequencing data and the clinical data has to be put together to make some sense and to do an accurate diagnosis. So my lab has been developing several algorithms for past more than 12 years to basically diagnose and understand how a patient mitochondrial DNA can be used to identify prioritized set of pathogenic variants. So this is one of our first, uh, first results, which we called as MedSNP score It's a pipeline. And at that time, if you go to the original paper, this was not built in Galaxy. This was built like a routine uh, web server. So the point is that for ataxia or Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease, obesity, we could show that despite the mitochondrial DNA has very large number of variation, our pipeline can identify a very small set of variation that can actually be pathogenic. And then we need to supplement this information with respect to different population groups. So we then developed MitoLSTB, which is nothing but a repository of more than 5,000 individuals coming from several uh, ethnic groups in the world, because we know that a specific mutation background has an impact on the phenotype. And then we did, uh, also developed visualization using a browser. The problem is, despite the fact there are three different uh, applications that even you know developed only in my lab, I actually find it a nightmare to link all of them together. Forget about linking all the resources that are developed in the mitochondrial community so far. So even the applications that I am developing, I have the source code, I have all the know-how, despite the fact moving from one application to the other that we have developed was extremely hard. And that is when we actually made a decision to go ahead with integrating all the applications that we have developed. So basically putting the data together, which can be searched using a query builder for mitochondrial mutations or for the proteins encoded by nuclear DNA to variation analysis, which is not just the application developed in my lab, but also other tools which are developed by other people other groups and how do we visualize data and of course uh, you will see and learn from both Rakesh and Tina downstream that how the applications uh, can be cannot work in a similar fashion and can lead to different set of uh, results so you need converters and mappers we'll come to that so this is basically a workflow system uh, this is how Galaxy's interface look like so what you have on the left hand panel is uh, is the tool uh, list all the tools that you have in the center is a canvas and on the right hand side is a history so exactly when i'm when i told you job one uh, output you know input one job one output one input two job two output two this 14 15 16 17 18 is exactly representing the same thing these are basically outputs of individual jobs that you have executed and you can see them on the canvas so what MitoLink currently has, it also has a library, which is coming from uh, 5,000 whole genome uh, sequence data sets, over 600 populations, 27 different phenotypes, and more than 1,30,000 variants. And all of this is now available. So anybody can actually uh, now ask different questions. Like say, for example, as you can see on the screen, I have shown data on diabetes. Now, I told you that there is a lot of overlap in different mitochondrial diseases. So now if I would like to basically segregate or understand what are the differences between neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's versus uh, metabolic diseases like diabetes or obesity, how do I segregate the two? So I can actually ask these questions using a workflow system saying prioritize mutations for diabetes, prioritize mutations for Alzheimer's, show me the overlap with gene they belong to and can I now visualize them on a browser? So all these uh, questions can now be asked 
and we are not limiting anybody to ask any question on this data. So which makes it easier for everybody to reuse and rebuild several types of analysis workflows. And again, it gives you a very large number of information and uh, more than 3000 nuclear DNA proteins with mitochondrial function are also available. So the point is, despite the fact that my lab published so much of, uh, of mitochondrial DNA work in past 12 years, till the time we put all of that together in a single workflow system, which is MitoLink, it becomes very hard for it to be used for any clinical application because the data was available by 10 different places and you would, cannot expect a clinical setup to actually do this analysis going to separate windows. And because it's a, it's a hard decision for, for patient therapeutic intervention that you need to have everything at one place. So now we are actually, so I'm working with the mitochondrial disease sequence data resource consortia. It's a global consortia of majority clinicians who are uh, working, uh, who basically see mitochondrial DNA patients on a daily basis. And we are trying to develop MitoLink as a platform where the clinical data also comes into picture because we know that we cannot release clinical data out without uh, you know, compromising on patient uh, data security. So the point is uh, we are now developing MitoLink next level to make it accessible for clinicians. So once they sequence mitochondrial DNA from a patient, they can import it here and do any kind of workflow system development to uh, basically have a clinical applications of what we developed in the lab. So this is basically a simpler overview. Subsequent to uh, MitoLink, we also like parallelly have been developing other workflow systems. This one is particularly for people who would like to uh, work with drug discovery. This is called Molecular Property Diagnostic Suit. And as you can see, it has several modules. I'll not go into the details of this. Um, Rakesh and Tina will, after our session is over with me and Hadpreet, they will tell you how to install Galaxy, how to integrate tools, how to in basically integrate workflows. And Dina is going to take a specific example of how do you start from uh, nano core raw data all the way to identify a phenotype of uh, antimicrobial resistance. So she's going to explain you that in much more details. The job here that I'm doing is to tell you what our lab does in context of the mitochondrial diseases and not so much the infectious diseases. The other thing, uh, don't get confused by too many things written here. The whole point is that you can integrate applications, you can run those applications, and you can actually write APIs to migrate and show these applications on lab notebooks. So you can actually convert the entire protocol into a workflow system, which is like a computer program that also can be shared. So this is basically trying to say that maybe there are two labs or three labs that are generating these resources, but since Galaxy can be made available on cloud, they can be accessible by a very wide range of research community. And because they can actually uh, you know, share and reproduce and redo what has happened, this actually is one of the first, uh, like a very strongly recommended platform for reproducible science. So I would recommend um, as many people to use it. Now, this is basically a timeline of projects what I have handled in my career so far. And if you see here, uh, Galaxy will appear at several places as early as in uh, 2010 when the Galaxy community just began. And this is when we started doing using Galaxy for drug discovery projects and subsequently Galaxy for several other aspects. This is a uh, Galaxy for MitoLink and there are other things with Galaxy we have done as well. So, but I'll not take you through everything. It is to show you that time and again, I, we have been uh, revisiting Galaxy because they are, the, as a community, I'm a member of the community. Uh, the Galaxy core commu community actually keeps on adding more modules and tools and making it even more exciting for us to see how do we apply it in our projects. Now, galaxyproject.org is the place where you go and look at uh, all the resources that Galaxy has to offer. And as you can see, there are uh, used Galaxy resources, public servers, commercial clouds, containers. So you have a lot of information on Galaxy that you need to read. 20 minutes is not the time to really cover all of that, but I need to give you pointers so that you can follow up. And as you can see here that uh, we have Galaxy in EU, we have main Galaxy, which is from the Penn State and other places. And then you have Galaxy Australia. And these are public servers. And as you can see, one of the first public servers listed here is AB Open Lab, which is the, which I showed you in my previous slide. So we, whenever we publish something in Galaxy, uh, Galaxy centrally offers us to basically advertise them on their server. So you get wider visibility of the tools that you develop here. 
So a strong recommendation, build your tools, import them in Galaxy, put it out there, a very, very vast community will be able to access them. So this is a slide that I wanted to share with all of you and Harpreet will also join me in explaining this. So the point is that we uh, were, both of us were asked to uh, share our plans on uh, Galaxy India. So we thought if there is a Galaxy Europe, if there is Galaxy Australia, can we think of Galaxy India and make it like a more centralized workflow system for our scientific community. And we presented a few ideas that we have uh, during this Birds of Feather meeting, very, very, which happened uh, uh, two months ago. Uh, so this is basically what we are planning to do. We have uh, Harpreet who's gonna tell you about BioClues and how we are basically harnessing the network that BioClues has already developed to set up the Galaxy community in India. And we have Prashant who has been leading BioClues for since the very beginning, he's a founder. And we then we have international advisors like Sonika, Kiran and Truti who have developed immense number of applications in Galaxy and they teach it to the rest of the world and none of them are based out of India. They are uh, faculties all across the world. So we actually have some loosely built structure in place as of now. And the plan is, can we have, uh, if Galaxy India has to materialize, we need a few things. First of all, we need to immediately start. So we were thinking we can use the CSIR resources, the CSIR MTech resources to uh, already uh, launch the Galaxy India project. Uh, of course, the Galaxy also, like as I have shown you, we have research projects hosted on Galaxy already, which are published. So I don't see a problem there. But of course, it needs to scale up for infrastructure if we need to provide it as a service to, the, uh, to a wider scientific community. Then we need to have partnerships so BioClues has come forward in a big way and Albrecht will tell you more about it as we go forward. Then we need to have outreach training and workshops because as this workshop is organized by Abhishek very, very proactively, I think this is an outreach activity where we are informing the community of that, uh, uh, about the fact that we are interested in launching Galaxy India. And for, of course, we need funding to make it sustainable. So just a very, very quick point is before I hand it over to Albrecht. Uh, we wrote, uh, so Dr. Pratik uh, Jagta, he's at University of Minnesota and uh, MTech and Pratik wrote a, a joint proposal to into, into US Science and Technology Forum and we have, a, have funding to basically organize Galaxy specific workshops in India. Because of the pandemic, the plans are a little dwindling, but this will happen very, very soon. Uh, if not physically, we'll do an online uh, event which is heavily focused on Galaxy, but uh, revolving around specific biological problems. Then we were also thinking of riding on the Jigyasa program that CSIR already has, where we have interface with a couple of uh, uh, thousand school kids across the country. We can actually use Galaxy for education modules. And as you know, we have four to six month training program in India. We can customize it then so that the, youth, the students actually uh, learn Galaxy and become ambassadors of the community and make it more widely applicable. And when I say this, believe me, and Galaxy is a one platform that we can use because of the ease of how to set it up. And you will learn that in the next 20 minutes, how easy it is to set up and how easy it is to integrate workflows and tools. But of course, for reproducible science, there are other, other workflow systems already also available. I have used a few of them. And after doing all that uh, exercise, I still would recommend Galaxy. But if you have more ideas on introducing other workflow systems, I think that is something as a community we should discuss. And we should organize thematic workshops, as I told you initially that we will, we are doing a few. This one is also one of them. And uh, how are we leveraging on BioClues community is BioClues is uh, something that Hilpreet will tell you about. The only idea is that we are trying to uh, use BioClues network for operational purposes and also to see if they can launch awards for demonstrating reproducible workflows. That is a way of incentivizing the community in the right direction. We have the National Knowledge Network. We can partner with them for dedicated infrastructure. This is something which is in discussion right now. We don't have answers because this has to be uh, done through a proper uh, channel of uh, you know, making it really functional. And why we recommended MTech because of several reasons. We are currently number four among all institutes in the world who are providing uh, biological specific data sets to the community. But as you know, Galaxy can be used for anything. Of course, it's a biology heavy community, but of course it can be developed for other applications as well. And uh, this is just for selling my institute or telling you more about it. We are the informatics and big data analytics unit at MTech. We work on several uh, aspects. 
our uh, servers get over oh, several million hits uh, per month from many many institutes across the world and we do organize uh, trainings and workshops and we're really very happy to uh, do more and more workshops uh, focusing on galaxy as the central point and since we have interfaced to a wider student community and i think hrithreet has interfaced to even wider student community can uh, really do a good job at popularizing it and of course this is again to show that we publish with very young kids even when they are in school so we engage with the scientific community in a very very uh, serious manner not just for outreach but we engage them so that they can learn how to do science and this is a paper from my lab where the first or third uh, the like puja happens to when she published her paper she was practically in her school so it's not that we are doing only outreach we want to do serious science so and that is what we thought that if we have the capacity to do that why not uh, guide our younger generation to towards doing reproducible work and for that we need to have platforms because of the sheer size of the data we are dealing with the number of applications that come every day the number of data formats that are out there there has to be some consistency reproducibility requires that all of this information has to be made available in a systematic fashion and yeah we work with many many students these are all all undergrad grad student school kids uh, that have published with me over several years this is just to show that i personally um, the reason for me engaging with the, with the galaxy india program was the, the fact that i really like community engagement and this is basically before i say thank you because i can understand there will be several students watching it on youtube and as well as here Now, this is a drug discovery hackathon which is going on right now with the government of india to solve covid-19 problem and uh, it's specifically focus on drug discovery but there are other things that you can do please go here and see if you can apply your brain in addressing the pandemic and with that i would really like to thank uh, all the people who i have learned from so much and would request uh, dr harpreet to uh, take over and tell us about Uh, the bioclues organization and how bioclues is coming in a big way in uh, basically uh, you know we are actually have to thinking of having galaxy under the umbrella of bioclues and harpreet will tell us more about how do we plan to do that thank you anshu uh, it's a very nice talk and we set the stage by giving an overview of uh, what uh, workflows are and how workflows can be implemented uh, in in the big size and today is a era of community you know projects we are solving very big problems and so uh, we need to know about the systems like galaxy and just for your knowledge though uh, entire world is working on community projects in india still uh, except few labs and few uh, you know much aware scientists Uh, most of the peoples are not aware of what is the power of community science what is the power of doing working in big teams or even working in teams uh, so uh, uh, let me share my screen so that i can pinpoint on what we are doing here so that's why uh, just to make uh, uh, people aware of community projects and particularly the work uh, uh, galaxy is providing uh, we are trying to launch uh, a galaxy india community and uh, as janshu uh, pinpointed uh, we had a very good good uh, discussion during our bcc 2020 conference and uh, it's very good that we got another opportunity very soon uh, to discuss about galaxy india plan uh, so before launching of community uh, you must understand that uh, community launching is also a very big task very you know require much more manpower much more thinking much more networking and luckily in india we have bioclues organization which is you know master in doing networking uh, and uh, it's a, it's a very good community already developed in india uh, so what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, leverage uh, uh, the networking the experience uh, the ethics of bioclues uh, just to uh, you know make uh, galaxy india happen as soon as possible uh, so uh, most of the people Uh, might be aware of bioclues organization uh, but i uh, felt it's my duty uh, to introduce bioclues organization to all the speakers and giving getting the opportunity of this platform so bioclues organization if it's a, a bioinformatics club for experimenting scientists uh, 
and uh, it was founded by dr prashant survajala and prithish was was in 2005 uh, we have a present uh, pre- president dr g n shastri narhari shastri he is a director of cir nist and it's registered for not profit organization and we are very much adhered to the creative commons license we have more than uh, 4300 members across 40 countries and many of the students are uh, have been mentored by bioclues for doing large number of projects we have finished many uh, projects particularly 30 virtual projects and uh, involving uh, uh, around 220 scientists from different uh, research institutes across india in fact across world we have a lot of collaboration i will show you in detail when i move to my next slides and uh, we have been affiliated to international society for computational biology as well as the asia pacific biomedical network in india uh, just to uh, extend the the core team the something about the core team uh, we have uh, uh, a team dedicated team uh, with secretary john secretaries uh, financiers women and biology chairs in fact we have really uh, recently established a bioinformatics for school chair uh, also a student chapter chair so we are trying to involve as many people as can uh, to make bioclues reach the enti- all the roots of uh, this country each and in nook and corner of this country so that people can take advantage of this growing science of bioinformatics and computational biology to make you know their projects to take your project to a next level we also have a honorary advisor the great scientist uh, who uh, need no recognition gps ragwa pg gupta kavi kishore hs balian dps verma and uh, uh, many uh, of the others so this is a journey we have launched in 2005 uh, we start mentoring the students in 2006 we started offering fellowships to needy students in 2008 we started a women in biology chair so that the 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 uh, women folk of the country the scientists cannot be left behind we also got uh, affiliation with ap bionet and iscb in 2010 we introduced the bird ward i will let you know what is the bird wards are in 2011 we launched our own international journal for computational biology in 2012 we launched our own cloud based servers so that different data sets and server developed by bioclues uh, research and innovation cell they can be put there for use by the general public in 2016 onwards we started uh, introducing student chapters and we also uh, initiated some somehow bioinformatics for school children because we thought that the grassroots level the school level is, is is you know an ideal place an ideal time for student to engage in science 2019 uh, till and uh, we had a very good partnership right now we are extending or we are trying to build a very strong partnership with galaxy community so that the galaxy bioclues joint community can be launched in india uh, very soon and we have a vision in uh, up to 2020 to make you know bioinformatics uh, 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 well established in this country uh, and bioinformatics and bioclues being playing a major role in, in the all the uh, major projects so these are the this is the mission and based on four uh, uh, alphabets like more mentoring outreach research through awareness and entrepreneurship if we go uh, if we talk about mentor mentorship uh, so we are having uh, more than 4000 active members and already many uh, of these members have been enrolled in various research projects we have a women in biology f- forum where we try to involve women biologists or women members of the society to do some good research we have been generating many publications around 25 publication in the recent years and we are actually a thriving bio community these are the new sh- initiative as far as the mentoring is concerned uh, we have created bio clues in trust groups which are the whatsapp groups facebook uh, uh, in trust groups so that different uh, uh, you know people working on different areas of science like genomics plant biology and computational biology uh, big data analytics they can be uh, they can discuss their problems day to day with the mentors and so that they can they can solve their problem they can learn new things 
and also we keep on posting the research and developments the recent research and developments happening in their respective areas in their respective interest groups additionally we have a carrier group for north chapter and south chapter also we have uh, the groups like microbiology agri biopods structural biology and genomics we recently introduced a uh, cyversation uh, keeping in view the covid pandemic and keeping in view the importance of uh, uh, virtual uh, events so we 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 try to have a weekly uh, conversation of students and all other members uh, with the with the mentors in biology so that they can discuss their problems in detail and they can be made aware of what is happening uh, inside also we uh, we already we launched uh, it in 2016 but it we made it operational uh, and we revive it in in 2020 the things called bioinformatics for schools so bioinformatics school is right now uh, launched in a pilot as a pilot project where around 20 students from different parts of the countries are are learning bioinformatics how bioinformatics can be used to solve different problems outreach uh, we are uh, trying to align to the new normal uh we all already having uh, uh already conducting many workshop and conferences and the notably the inbix series the intern conference on bioinformatics is is the hit for from bioclo society and uh, we had planned to uh, conduct the inbix in may but due to pandemic this has been postponed uh, for indefinitely uh but we try to fill the gap we in the pending time we uh, try to arrange many virtual conferences many uh, panel discussions on burning issues like secondary agriculture india covid diagnostic and uh, functional genomics and so on so this is this is what we are trying to follow as a new normal and we uh, our recent discussions or recent conferences upcoming conferences have been listed on the website right now research and development we uh, carry out research in different areas uh, including functional genomics system biology big data analytics and we also encourage training and educational programs we also uh, try to make people aware of different uh, uh, employment opportunities through women in biology and general club we try to discuss various burning issues so that uh, the new uh, research can be initiated and we are trying to make uh, many people involved in joint research papers uh, so that uh, some of the new people the novice one uh, they can have idea of how to write research papers how to uh, you know how to do a real bi uh, uh, biological problem how to solve a real biological problem and so on we also uh, as a part of our research uh, through awareness we launched bioclues innovation research and development board awards and it's a procedure award which is uh, given after a very thorough process uh, for the scientists working professionals medical professionals and other uh, people working in the area of functional genomics and bioinformatics by nomination nomination are awarded each year and in fact the call for the recent nomination is open in september 2020 in 2019 uh, we were not able to award uh, the bird award because uh, none of the participant Uh, they met the expectations uh, at that time this is a list of different persons uh, who have been receiving the bird awards for the last uh, 10 years and uh, uh, some of them have reached many new heights and they are you know heading the genome for example vinod sakaria he has been instrumental in uh, handling the genomic revolution in india uh, from igib new delhi he was Uh, awarded bird award in 2014 so you can sense the importance of these awards how critical these awards are and how much work bioclues does in recognizing people who are doing real work in the area of bioinformatics we have been conducting many projects and these are some of the project which have been mentioned uh, here uh, in collaboration with the cancer institute chennai uh, gudwasu university ludhiana and so on we have been expertise in uh, uh, many areas but ngs and system biology are the main theme in which we are working uh, uh, very much so this is a ngs pipeline which we uh, you know uh, we have been developed uh, in, uh, in in our labs and we are trying to make people use that pipeline so now uh, we try to we are trying to you know use galaxy uh, workflows so that this pipelines 
can be extended the use of this pipeline can be extended even the people the students and the uh, and the mentors working in the colleges and, and uh, the remote parts of the country they can also be make aware of how this big data uh, created through ngs experiments can be used to ask uh, very specific questions and how that question can be solved using uh, big data analytics and the workflows available in uh, galaxy these are the services which we provide mentoring graduate students in bioinformatics we annotate and curate ngs data sets we do transcomic and uh, genomic analysis of ngs data uh, pathway analysis and so on i think there is no area in bioinformatics which is which is not been touched by uh, the mentors of the biocool society they have been expert in all the areas leading uh, ranging from the medical genetics medical science to agriculture science environment they are working in all aspect of biology how we sustain this is something very important we uh, have a paid membership it's very nominal one only 300 at a student membership and 2000 for the live membership we also have a 100 us dollar corporate memberships per year we also try to generate some money through virtual and outside conferences we also try to earn some money from project sources but that is only on the voluntarily basis we also uh, thrive on various grants and funding to support our endeavors these are the collaborations iscb ap bio bionavit technologies pine bio uh, nanotemper technology and recently we will also be joining hat with galaxy community to launch galaxy india and uh, with this uh, uh, much uh, uh, you know information on uh, bioclues uh, i am thankful to organizers of this uh, this international conference of data science and biology and uh, especially abhishek kumar and i am also thankful to uh, my co speaker anshu bhardwaj uh, for planning this workshop in a very short period of time thank you very much if you have any question you can get back to us thank you thank you ashu and thank you harpreet and uh, so basically this conference is also supported by bioclues yeah and uh, so we uh, initiate uh, initiated it but this can be also the second conference of bioclues so we are quite open for that yes exactly and we expect somebody else to take over the uh, totally two groups to take over and organize next year and if not two group one of us will participate and well, like a tandem or three uh, um, a new person to take over uh, the conference next year and they yeah, are so bioclue is is very supportive to that and i am checking in if you have some you, youtube question uh no uh, let me see uh and okay there is a question how one can become member it's very simple go to bioclues.org click on the membership page and uh, just pay as per your eligibility uh, by pay you money online transfer if you are a student you can you are eligible for a uh, student membership yearly membership of 3 300 rupees and if you are a, a working professional and i we will encourage you to uh, be a life member it's very nominal only 2000 rupees Okay, so for uh, for my group members, uh, it is a rule if they get their first author paper and we publish in uh, BioClues uh, Journal, International Journal of Computational Biology, they get get gift from my side uh, the life membership uh, as the award for their first author paper. That's really a good initiative, uh, very motivational. Yeah. Yeah. So that can be also be done. So if, even my trainee students and MSc students. where they are writing paper and we submit there and we they get a life membership or even if we submit anywhere they get life membership i will give them an award uh, yeah so uh, thank you abhishek thank you uh, is there any other question related to galaxy or is ashun Ash has already answered there what yeah so abhishek uh, what i was wanting to do was there were certain urls uh, which i thought it would be nice that the um, uh, participants who are asking questions should have access to it yeah so yeah sure to youtube and provided them with your those url links because they had very specific questions on their pipelines getting um, disrupted when they are doing rna seq analysis or they cannot import deg data sets 
So I'm pretty sure there must be other users facing similar issues. So let them look at those uh, FAQs and chat windows once. If the problem yeah. persists, of course, uh, they're more than welcome to write to any one of us or any one of the Galaxy Core members. So, be so, this, uh, so we have a RNSC uh, co coordination meeting. And I think the students are from there. So if they are from there, they will report me. We'll invite you again in a local meeting, uh, which is happening uh, with uh, some other groups, uh, uh, RNSC analysis problem. So there we can discuss. Uh, uh, so raise it if the question was from the RNSC team from our, ours, they write me in WhatsApp. Then we'll ask Ash, Ashu to join us in one of our meetings in your future. And in a, you know, in one day we cannot uh, run entire process. That is true. And the next uh, next speaker us uh, so will invite who will provide some more training. But uh, these questions can be answered uh, uh, step by step. And also, also the queries are there. So uh, so there are several things which we have to understand when to use Galaxy uh, USA and not when not to use. Yeah, or when to use Galaxy Australia. So the and these are a lot of tricks in behind that. Yeah, so primarily each of these uh, galaxies have several, as you can see, the number of tools. They yeah. are not uh, always common. So you need yeah, yeah, to they're, see which they're one. developed by independent uh, um, groups. So basically they provide as the requirement of the country or the area or the researchers in that particular co-researchers in the area in the beginning. And obviously if, uh, if they're different, or then only we, I have account in all of them. So, uh, uh, so the, uh, the the whole idea is that if the RNSC people uh, have the question, we will get it get it solved uh, later when a personal meeting as well. But you know know that we are reaching to the people who have the right resources, yeah, to help us. Uh, yeah, so uh, please invite your. Uh, we have a break, right? For. We have break. Yeah, so that is what I was asking. Uh, should we break for some time and then just be online and start in how much time? What would you recommend, Abhishek? Uh, we can have a uh, maybe uh, somebody has to drink water or something like me also. So maybe we just uh, have a keep answering question for five minutes and then they can start. So if they have a question, but BioClu provide a structure based drug designing and how do I reach do the BioClu's project? Okay, we all are member of BioClues and many of us are doing uh, drug structure based designing and there are a lot of questions coming about drug structural designing. So maybe in three months time, we'll organize a separate drug uh, docking designing uh, meeting so that uh, we can answer your question better. And uh, so I'm, we are thinking, so my team is also working on uh, uh, drug docking. So basically once they have some results and confidence, we can organize a meeting and say nine in 90 days and a lot of people are already doing so, uh, but get in touch with the NEPI who are here and they have, they may have a drug design project actually. So I do have, I'm looking for a person who can take over. So <laughs> I uh, think Anshu's lab is working on that part. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, she showed. She showed the picture of Raghu and I thought Raghu is in the <laughs> I was about to write Raghu. Hi Raghu, how are you? <laughs> so maybe more of uh, drug discovery projects tomorrow. So my lab has two verticals. One we are focusing on infectious diseases and the other one uh, on rare diseases. And I have worked on uh, some portion of drug design and discovery for the infectious diseases company. So tomorrow uh, the entire talk is on that. Okay, so yeah, so get in touch with uh, Kritika and Avani of Avani Kaur is asking and get in touch with us, uh, uh, Anshu, me, and other structural biology. Uh, India is full of structural biology and drug discovery groups. Yes, right? yes, exactly. So uh, it's a land of uh, drug discovery and structural biology. So uh, get in touch, and some of us definitely will uh, give. Uh, my, my team is trying to uh, develop uh, a SARS-CoV drug uh, docking uh, experiments only for sake of learning. Uh, sake of learning means maybe we cannot do publish for this virus, but next virus we want to counter it better. 
So there are a lot of papers already published, but we are targeting different drug strategies. So it's a weekly discussed in our team. And uh, so if you want, you can participate as one of the uh, training member. Yes, my mail is already, um, uh, I can say, uh, Bishak dash iBioinformatics dash org. Yeah, you can make it out. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and everybody's email ID, you do, just Google their names, you'll get it actually. So there's no, uh, no hard and fast uh, uh, issue. Even my uh, YouTube channel is an email ID actually. So if you just combine it, at put it at gmail.com, you'll receive an email. So e basically you understand each uh, YouTube ID itself is a potentially a Gmail ID. Uh, so you will, you will reach, uh, reach there. Um, yeah, nice presentation. Now no more questions. So let's uh, start next section if the speaker is available. Uh, yes, yeah, so the way we organized the uh, next section, Abhishek, is that, uh, you know, what happens is that we, like, I talked about Galaxy in a very bird's eye view, that, you know, this yeah. is what data is, this is how you analyze, this is how you do for clinical applications. What I was thinking, it, it will be nice because, see, 45 minutes is not good for a hands-on workshop, but two of my PhD students who are about to finish their thesis in a few months, they both have uh, prepared two sets of presentation. The first one is a demonstration of how do you install Galaxy? How do you integrate tools and workflows? See, some of the things are already there in the Galaxy EU platform. But sometimes we develop our own applications and not all tools are available in the uh, public Galaxy servers. So if you need a customized way of you, you want to integrate your own application into the, the, into Galaxy, how do you get that done? How do you create a workflow to do visualization? Then in order to provide better hands-on, because as everybody is saying since morning, day, big data is, is, the, uh, is the future. So we thought we'll take Nanopore uh, raw data sets and then with a question in mind, that what is the question that we are addressing? We'll see how do we process a Nanopore data set in a specific series of events to answer the same question. So Rakesh is gonna take care of the first part, uh, Galaxy installation, tool integration, workflow visualization. Tina is gonna take the second part uh, in terms of what is antimicrobial resistance and how starting from a nanopore data set, you can actually understand uh, the genetic, ge genetic determinants of EMR. So uh, I would first like to request uh, Rakesh. Uh, Rakesh, are you around? Can you share your screen and please uh, proceed? So let me see if Rakesh is here. Yeah, I see him there. Uh, Rakesh, you need to Rakesh unmute Kumar, yourself. Yeah, we have to make him co-host. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you can you start it? Neol, if you are there, just make him uh, co-host. Yes, I am not able to present my... Yeah, no, no, you will be, you will be in with him. Can you repeat the user's name? Rakesh Kumar. Rakesh, yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah uh, now I can share. So mm, I'm just sharing my screen. And I think it should be okay. Is it visible? The full screen? Yeah. It's visible. Yeah. So, uh, uh, good afternoon all. Uh, so here uh, I, I uh, just uh, uh, start with the introduction to Galaxy platform for the installation and uh, how to integrate the tool. That's the main objective from my side. So uh, I take all these uh, slides on uh, data from the uh, Galaxy training here I should mention the URL that you can find the same material over here. But I, I just a little bit customize it for my uh, talk. So uh, with this uh, with this thing, uh, uh, this is my uh, main uh, index slide that I can say 
but i'll first i will just let you know that what is the galaxy and the what is the generic workflow that is my mind already uh, speak about it and then we can go for the how to we install the galaxy and how to re integrate the tool so let's start with the galaxy so uh, as uh, already with them man said that galaxy is a uh, web based platform and we can integrate the main core value that galaxy has is the accessibility repeatability and transparency so that each and everyone can share the same thing or share the data as reproducible in a easy fashion and uh, this uh, galaxy platform is uh, cited more than 10300 uh, citation and with the install over the more than 120 public servers in general purpose domain specific and it has a, a tool set of uh, 7900 in their tool set so uh, this is the uh, i take the screenshot from the usegalaxy.eu this is a, a european galaxy here uh, we can see that uh, for a galaxy work we need to give a url any public galaxy url we can put here on for uh, creating or have a use of as a user we should log in or register to this uh, galaxy to keep our data over here and history and use the feature which is provided by the galaxy the uh, main galaxy looks is uh, the, the three pan in the galaxy so uh, the first pan is the tool so here the all the tools that is integrated into galaxy we can look in the left hand panel in the center panel this is the main view panel that uh, all the information display regarding and feature thing or view the data and the right hand panel that is the history panel is uh, show that how we will proceed uh, apply the tools and as a history we can do a lot of thing over here from here so here is the key actions that we can mention that uh, first we should uh, name a history panel that uh, what is uh, what we are doing for uh, and using for the history and then uh, with the starting that i have told you already that uh, the tool panel has a, a option for upload the files or files from the url so you can just click and upload your data from here and after uh, clicking those uh, upload you can see you can uh, provide the upload data in a customized fashion like you can just copy and paste the uh, file address url or you can fetch the data from the local computer and also you can just set the data type if you know it about it otherwise it will try to auto detect if the data is uh, comes from the genome specific then you can just specify the genome also and it you will just click start and will upload the data here for the demo purpose i just take the same demo uh, i just uh, use the uh, fastq file to upload the data and go further so once you upload your data the history panel show the that you have upload the data and you can view the data by clicking this i uh, view data so that it will able to display your data in the middle panel now once we need to analyze this data so we need to apply a tool so fastq tool is a example tool that i have run on this uh, fastq fastq file so first we need to just search the fastq tool and just we need we can see that we can have a fastq tool over here just click on the fastq tool and select the following parameter that shorted data from the your current history and no change in the other parameter and just click execute then after after complete execution you are able to view the history panel and you can just click a galaxy eye icon and you can see the a beautiful uh, graph 
in the middle panel like this. So uh, as a workflow, that uh, the whole exercise you can see as a workflow that I have uploaded the files and apply the fast QC tool. So this is the uh, canvas, a workflow canvas. Here you can just add it or run the workflow by clicking this icon. And after this, it will show these options that what steps you are going to take and what is your input file over here. You can import the history in a new history or the existing history if you want. Here, after uh, run the workflow, it will show you the uh, workflow invocation status. Step by step, it will show all the steps. So after you can just see after executing four steps, it's make the jobs runs. It's showing the current status, and you can also see in the right hand panel that as the jobs are completed, the history panel goes up with the sequence one, two, three, four, and here is still is job is running. And after that, the after complete of this job. You can see a beautiful uh, graph over here by clicking this icon. So it will show you the basic status of the fast QC file and the graph. Also, uh, Galaxy has a scratchbook. This is the uh, scratchbook icon. If you just click it, it will show you. The tick mark to compare with each other at a single place. So that you don't need to see the panel again and again. So just see that the eye is here and you can just viewing the data. The Galaxy uh, data type is Galaxy can handle a several data types. Few are listed by default over here from plain text tabular and fast code that I have already mentioned. You can edit the attribute of input data so that a tool can take it. So this is the uh, first part of complete. And, uh, as a generic uh, workflow of using uh, Galaxy tools is we just start the login then we get the data and we perform the checks on the data that whether the data is cleared or as per our requirement or stats. Then we filter out the data, short the data, and you let's say we use the tool one. And then the tool, the first tool output is uh, taken care for the next uh, process of take the stats off and filter the output of first. And we can this output provide to the next tool. And next tool output can be further check for the stats and filters output. And we need to cross validate. We can cross validate then and there by utilizing or in and taking the uh, status of that. Create the final table and visualization. And we can share the workflow input data and results so that this whole workflow become end. And the same workflow can share with the others so that others can also repeat the same step in one click. So I just show you here already here that I'm already told about it that uh, we use the input data given to tool one, tool one out, output is given to tool input and so on. That we can uh, uh, sequence wise use n number of tools with the that and get the final results and share with the others. So here I just sharing that uh, how the Galaxy is already using uh, in the higher education with a uh, 
different university world. Now, uh, So, uh, when we run the uh, first uh, galaxy, then it simply shows the this uh, first uh, fresh galaxy panel. And for doing this, so we uh, need the uh, galaxy from the Git and install it in a uh, Linux server or Mac OS with the requirement of uh, Python 3.6 or Python 3.5. So after uh, getting the data from the Git, we just need to uh, we can uh, configure the Galaxy as per our requirement that uh, that folder as config dot uh, slash config folder has a Galaxy dot YML that we can configure, and if you want to put the uh, Galaxy across the network, then we can give the uh, network address. And for the, our local installation, uh, we can add our uh, email ID to the admin user. For uh, this, so you can just see the after the login, you can find this uh, admin uh, link over there. So uh, for installing the uh, tools, you can uh, use the uh, automatic installation from the Galaxy tool set, which you can uh, find it in the admin panel. Here you can search the repository and install uh, your tool by uh, choosing this uh, from the list so that it will ultimately handle the, all the repository on their side. And if you don't, uh, doesn't find the tool or you want to integrate your own tool, then you can uh, go for the manually. So uh, for adding a custom tool to Galaxy, uh, first you need to write your own, uh, for example, you have your own code that your Perl uh, code for that you want to integrate with your Galaxy. And uh, for example, here we take the this Perl code, Perl code uh, computing the GC content of the sequence in the FASTA format. Then uh, uh, put the tool into the Galaxy tool directory. So you just need to enter the uh, tools directory, then create a new directory that my tools, and go to that directory and copy your uh, code to that uh, my tool directory. And you need to create a, a XML file for the tool definition so that it can integrate with the Galaxy. And this uh, tool example uh, .xml file need to mention in your tool.conf uh, XML file so that Galaxy can detect that your tool is present in the Galaxy and you need to restart the Galaxy. So here is the uh, view that once you have write the uh, tools example.pl, then uh, you uh, write a, a code for uh, tool, tool example.xml, here, here is the name. Then, you have mentioned the uh, your code tool.example.pl in the XML file here. 
and put the rest of the XML parameter so that your uh, tool is uh, can be executed through this XML file. And this XML file need to be uh, mentioned in the the tool uh, convert XML file, which is actually a Galaxy file which shows the tools. So finally, you can see like this that you can uh, see your tool can be mentioned. We'll see here. And by clicking this, you can see that uh, it will ask for the file. Here I have take the screenshot for the example sequence FASA file, it is showing you here. And after uh, executing this tool, it will show the GC content. So here is the uh, Galaxy resources that uh, you can uh, check out over the internet that especially against the built for the guys for the scientist tool, Galaxy tool and tips and tricks, Galaxy for developers and admin, and the other link for the uh, development in the Galaxy, Galaxy administration, Galaxy tool set, Galaxy training network. And on the live, you can just community have com Galaxy community chat over the guitar. So uh, this is a thing from my side. And I like to show if I have time permit, I can show a little bit uh, hands on on this. Hello, uh, did I have some time? Go ahead, Rakesh, finish this. Yes, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm just, I'm just changing the share screen to my uh, link. So uh, here you can uh, find everything in detail from the uh, Galaxy site. I think I all are can able to see my browser. It is visible. Yeah, yeah, Rakesh, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. So uh, here you can find the many more detail here, how you can integrate the tool and that's more thing. From here, uh, you, you can see the whole exercise is given here already. And you can go step by step and you want to no more, you can just have a uh, URL from here for the next thing. So for the local installation, I just want to show you that this is uh, my local installation. And here is uh, my tool. So So from here, uh, I have integrated my tool here. And I, if I upload my file from my local computer, And I just, um, you can just change the FASTA file or it will automatically can detect it. And I can just say start. So we'll start uploading the file.
and here the view data you can just see the data the fasta file comes over here and if i apply my this integrated tool and i just click execute and show you that the tool is in process and finally it will show you that what is your uh, gc content so in that fashion you can uh, integrate your uh, own custom tools if i log in with the admin panel then here you can find the admin option to administer the galaxy in your local installation and you can just install the tool from this site like a lots of tools are here and for example uh, i can search for a support vector machine svm and you can see here is the svm class for uh support machine wrapper that you can integrate and you can see a lot a list of classifier that you can just choose the uh, latest one to install it and you can just set them like target section that which section you want to add i target for the uh, my tool and i set okay and after that it will start installing these tools it will take a lot of time so i just skip this uh, page and the second uh, thing uh, on the galaxy oh, here is the uh, galaxy intro example that i have already shared the slides show the slide for this and here you can see the data that you can that come over here after the and you can see the scratch proof that you can visualize the data all together so that's how you can uh, use your galaxy and you can create your own tool here is the shared data uh, library history workflow visualization pages that shared by the others so you can use that so with this all things uh, this all from my side uh, thank you thank you for my to uh, is there any question from uh, other side there is no question in youtube as well so uh, okay let me recheck again so th this is a really good yeah. presentation so basically you can also tell that um, even somebody is, uh, is running ubuntu can run it uh, run this in their local machines and the, that also can start uh, working as a galaxy uh, it can be locally installed and also on the different servers but depending on how much size and space you have in your computer you can do a small task in galaxy in your local machine as well so uh, as uh, uh, galaxy india will replicate for larger servers because they will put large amount of resources that people are using but uh, somebody is asking if galaxy is only used for ngs analysis only no 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 it's not only for the uh... and yes and i think you can uh, build your own custom tools as per your requirement yeah so basically the answer is the it can be customizable yeah. for several analysis those who customize they are doing ngs analysis in more frequently but in your uh, main conference pratik is uh, dr pratik is giving talk from usa and he will be talking about proteomics based galaxy and uh, drug discovery based galaxy and several type of galaxy exist and different labs so basically again this is open source so you can optimize what you want to do 
so if you are running a laboratory you can optimize for your own requirement yeah and right. sequence analysis is also part of it right so we yeah, just yeah. want to you abhishek not just for biological sciences people are actually now using galaxy for climate uh, projects also so it really depends on yeah yeah so outside biology also it is used so it's a yeah so uh, now after this uh, tuna is here to uh, present their slides so that they can let you know more about the nanopore okay so good afternoon all uh, myself uh, tina sharma i am senior research fellow at csir intech so uh, today uh, we will be discussing uh, about sample workflow of mapping of amr determinants from nanopore data so basically uh, in this session we will be discussing about uh, how do workflows uh, work in galaxy so as you all are aware that the human genome sequence has profoundly altered uh, altered our understanding of biology and human diversity and diseases the path from the first draft sequence to our nascent era of personal genomes and genomic medicine has been made possible only because of the extraordinary achievements uh, advancement in uh, dna sequencing technologies so uh, when we talk about ngs or high throughput sequencing analysis we basically talk about the big data analytics and which may includes the around uh, <clears throat> uh 100 million sequences or reads per experiments and the sequencing of a random library and uh, there are several uh, popular technologies which are being implemented for generating sequences of uh, uh, sample data like illumina <clears throat> iron torrent and uh, pack bio but uh, here i am emphasizing uh, nanopore uh, min ion technology because the data which i am going to uh, use for the uh, for, for further analysis is uh, retrieved from uh, the nanopore min ion sequences which is an emerging and single molecular uh, uh, strategy that has made uh, significant progress in recent years so nanopore sequencing basically can take a variety of forms but uh, principally relies on the transition of dna or individual nucleotide through a small uh, channel so uh, what if we have a big data which is a computationally intensive we require dedicated tool and data types uh, for this and all of these computational resources uh, Uh, we can uh, use uh, via galaxy so this is how galaxy looks like and rakesh has already discussed about the tools and how do we upload the data from uh, this upload uh, uh, icon and here is the working window and the history uh, menu so let's start uh, with uh, why do we need galaxy so for using galaxy you don't need to have a computer programming experience so if you have the data you can directly uh, integrate uh, the data you can use tool you don't have to uh, you don't have to install a tool so basically uh, galaxy is a scientific workflow data integration and data and analysis persistence and publishing platform that aims to make computational biology accessible to uh, research scientists and uh, <clears throat> the core values has uh, already been discussed about like accessibility reproducibility and the transparency so uh, here is the workflow engine uh, of uh, galaxy and uh, if suppose uh, you have performed some task in galaxy and you have generated some history so from this history you can also make your workflow from the scratch the scratch so uh, here is the some uh, depiction of these uh, type of workflows which you can generate it from the history also so uh, since we are talking about the and talking about the prediction of antimicrobial resistance so which is the basically the ability of a bacteria to resist itself from the antibiotics which were previously used to treat them and bacteria have in turn in evolved many antibiotic resistance mechanisms to withstand the action of antibiotics like here you can see decreased uptake efflux pump inactivating en en enzymes alternative enzymes target alteration so for understanding these resistance mechanisms we need to have the catalog of resistance genes so how do we predict these genes from the nanopore raw sequences data using galaxy this is uh, what, what i am about to discuss <clears throat> so here in this galaxy demo 
uh, for antibiotic resistant det uh, detection, we will uh, basically cover like the questions are how do I assemble a genome with nanopore data? Second is the how do I get more information about the structure of the genomes, like it is chromosomal or the plasmid mediated. And the third one is the how do I get more information about the antimicrobial resistance genes, like their accession number, what is the product of these genes and the gene name basically start and end position basically the coordinates uh, uh, present uh, in the reads. So the objectives of this uh, uh, session is to perform the quality control on reads, assemble a genome with uh, Minimap2 and Mini-ASM and Recon and uh, uh, determine the structure of the genome and obviously the main focus is to identify the resistance uh, genes using the STAR AMR. So in this tutorial, what we have uh, basically ref refer a paper uh, entitled Efficient, Ge Efficient uh, Generation of Complete uh, Sequences of MDR Encoding Plasmids by Rapid Assembly of Min Ion Barcoding Sequencing Data. So they have uh, basically uh, contain, uh, they have basically retrieved some two samples like uh, Klebsiella pseudomonas plasmid mediated drug resistant uh, mechanism, identify plasmid mediated drug resistance mechanisms, and the assembly uh, will be performed using these tools, which they which uh, they have basically mentioned in this uh, tutorial. So here is the screenshot of uh, the workflow what I am going to perform. So these are the like we have the raw if we have the raw sequences of nanopore sequences, we first need to do the quality control analysis, then after quality control analysis, we will perform the either pairwise alignment you can perform or the de novo assembly. And after this de novo assembly, we will do for the scanning of antimicrobial resistance gene using the STAR AMR tool, which have already been embedded. Here is the Galaxy, uh, the, the tutorial will cover basically how to obtain data, importing data into the Galaxy, then quality control using the nanoplot nano plot to nano plot, plot uh, tool and then the novo assembly will cover and the species and the plasmid identification then resistance genes and this is uh, and uh, I, I would also like to uh, note uh, that uh, in this tutorial we will also we are using metagenomic nanopore data but and this complete pipeline can also be used for the other data sets to identify the resistant genes. So basically in this experiment, what we have retrieved 12 MDR plasmid bearing uh, bacterial strains, which in also which includes E. coli or uh, Klebsiella pneumonia, etc. Et, et and nanopore sequencing has several properties that make it well suited for our pur purpose. So uh, after uh, performing nanopore sequencing, uh, we, we get long read sequencing technology offers basically uh, simplified and less ambiguous genome assembly. Long read sequencing gives the ability to span repetitive uh, genomic regions and long read uh, sequencing make it possible to identify the large structural variations. So uh, first what we have to do uh, while uh, performing any analysis in Galaxy, we need to have the empty history. The history should be empty because having completion of all these tasks, we can uh, uh, make a workflow of what you have performed. Galaxy. So uh, first, you need to have a history. Uh, you need to have. A, you need to create a history of your own data set, like here they have mentioned. And for this, you have to click on this uh, plus icon at the top of the history panel. And if this plus icon is missing, you can go to this this uh, setting and then create new from the menu. So after. Uh, uh, generating uh, your particular uh, data set for this. So here is the sample uh, data. Like I have used rb01.fasta is a one sample data which contains multiple reads. And uh, here is the header and here is the sequence. So this is basically the sample of only one uh, organism. So after uh, getting sample sequences, we basically upload, we go to this icon, upload manager, and then paste, either you can paste your data or you can upload your data from your local machine. So here I have pasted this, this URL, whatever given uh, in this particular tutorial, and then 
uh, you have to click to this start icon and here you can check your status whether it is completed or not so it, it is 100 percent completed now your data has been uploaded to uh, galaxy server and uh, now the second task uh, since you are uh, working with the multiple data sets so you need to have a particular folder where you have uh, uh, collect all of this information so for contain for uh, generating your particular folder you have to go to these operations on multiple data sets it's like this click. you have to click to this check checkbox and this this checkbox will give you this build data set list here you have to give the name plasmids i have given this na name because i have taken plasmid sequences for further analysis and after giving this name you have to uh, uh, click this uh, create list to have your own folder of name plasmid <clears throat> Now, uh, the first thing we uh, want to do is to get a feeling for uh, our input data and its quality. And this is done using the Nanoplot tool. Nanoplot tool, which gives you the multiple HTML reports, uh, how your, uh, what is your read lens. So for this, you have to go to this uh, tool panel. You have to uh, give it the name, Nanoplot, then it will give this a particular uh, window and now you have to because you are working with the multiple data sets so you have to select the batch the sequence is, is in the FASTA format FASTA format you will select and then your folder plasmid which can contain six uh, sequence six samples of six bacterial samples and then you will click on the execute so after uh, this this will give this uh, output. There are various uh, reports like stats or HTML reports. So this, is, and you can see uh, these output like this. The HTML report gives an overview of various QC metrics for each sample. And here, uh, if my, if I want to ask the question from my, to uh, to know that uh, what was the mean read length for uh, RB01 uh, sample, so here I can uh, solve multiple questions like. I have only given uh, one uh, example. So after completion of this uh, task, we would like to basically perform the pairwise alignment. For pairwise alignment, uh, they have uh, basically used Minimap2, which is a tool which has already been embedded in uh, <clears throat> Galaxy. And uh, for this, uh, this experiment, may, uh, they have basically used the same data and this means that the sequencing uh, they have basically uh, nanopore gives us the long reads so to find these so we need to find the overlaps among the sequences so to find these overlap minimap 2 is used and uh, this program uh, to run this program we uh, again we need to uh, do we need to go through these uh, tools and we will type minimap 2 and here you have to select a use a genome from history and build index like they are using uh, reference sequences which uh, which have already been embedded in uh, galaxy like they are using some databases to predict these uh, to uh, align these sequences so this is reference based uh, alignment and then again you will use uh, your particular folder in which you have contained your uh, uh, your uh, sample then they are single uh, reads basically so we have selected so you have to uh, like according to your sample data you have to choose these parameters according to your requirement what what, what kind of sample you are having and uh, in this uh, in this we are uh, selecting an output format ta taf format in PAF format you basically get all of this description of your particular uh, uh, reads so like the query name query sequence length, length your coordinates relative strength uh, like uh, forward or negative strength and target sequence name target sequence length target uh, start on the original strain end on the original strand and number of residues matches and all of these description you will get from the minimap two uh, tools and uh, after pairwise alignment uh, uh, pairwise alignment we will uh, we basically have uh, generated an assembly because if, uh, because uh, there are several steps for from the raw raw sequences to 
to the complete genome sequences we have to follow certain hierarchy so uh, we have basically to generate the consensus sequences from the noisy long reads we have basically generated uh, we have used mini asm mini asm tool and mini asm tool basically takes input from the minimap 2 tool which uh, i have uh, uh, described previously as the input and output and assembly graph in a gfa format so if uh, after completion of this uh, uh, step uh, you will get a assembly graph so simply uh, what uh, what is the input input is the plasmic data set contain file and and, of, or, and the uh, minimap 2 two tools the paf file which was generated previously the, so the assembly graph output will be generated and uh, for uh, it is like uh, uh, for uh, if you have generated a uh, assembly so if you want to refine the refinement they have basically used the recon tool for the consensus con construction which i have kept this recon tool uh, basically so the assembly graph which we have generated uh, previously can be used for mapping again with the minimap tool but first the graph should be uh, uh, transformed to fasta format because we have till now we have the data in the assembly format so for consensus assembly we need to convert it into the fasta format for this we will give the input to input uh, here the assembly graph generated by the mini asm and we will execute this to for this for the further analysis and uh, here are the steps minimap 2 uh, what we are uh, using to generate gfa2 uh, fasta format we are giving it as a input and a single and then the plasmid <clears throat> plasmids where the samples are basic uh, samples are uh, present so uh, uh, there is a tool for the for visualize assembly so bioinformatics application for navigating de novo assembly graphs easily so to get a sense of how well our data are, was assembled and to determine uh, whether the contacts are chromosomal or plasmid mediated we have used a bandage uh, tool and this bandage tool can give a clear view of the assembly like you have to give the input data which you have generated from the mini asm tool and it will give you uh, this these it will give you these uh, graphs and as you can see from these bandage output we were we were able to assemble our data into fairly large fragments but were not quite successful in assembling the full circular plasmid sequence plasmid sequences so uh, what we uh, did so this particular problem can be overcome by using the unicycler tool which is basically a refine refinement tool so for this unicycler tool the assembly tool this the assembly tool we used in this tutorial are all implemented in unicycler tool because for uh, for assembly there are several data data sets like s pages and there are several multiple data sets they use so which will repeatedly run these tool these particular tools like s pages or velvets on your data using different parameter settings and so you can set your petting set settings according to uh, your requirements and uh, then we basically uh, give these uh, inputs to unicycler in unicycler uh, the assembly graph image or rb01 assembly with mini asm tool here is the comparison mini asm tool shows one unclear hypothetical plasmid where the output of the unicycler tool shows two clear uh, at least two clear plasmid plasmids and this has already been mentioned in this paper what i have uh, referred so uh, now now we have uh, assembled complete genome sequence plasmid sequence from the raw nanopore sequence so now uh, now we are uh, basically we uh, like to scan uh, some contacts for the antimicrobial resistance genes and there are certain uh, Uh, databases or tools which uh, uh, which are being used to identify drug resistant determinants so like one is the most famous uh, databases the res finder or uh, point finder plasmid finder or car database which is a comprehensive database uh, uh, to identify antimicrobial resistance genes 
so for this uh, i have used star amr tool and uh, this uh, input of for these file is the final assembly collection which we have created using the unicycler uh, tool in our previous step so basically we have uh, Uh, run this and uh, after uh, after particular after ha huh, after uh, these steps and the uh, five they it basically generates five different output files and uh, summary dot uh, tsv file a summary of all detected amr genes or mutations in each genome or one genome per line it gives and res finder res finder basically focus on the acquired resistance genes only so a tabular file file of uh, each amr gene and additional blast information from the res finder database one gene per line and point finder a tabular file file for uh, of each amr point mutation and additional blast information settings.txt and the result dot uh, xls so basically the most important file is the summary dot tsv file which i have uh, given some uh, screenshot of these files so from these rb010 or what sample i have taken the six sample i i i took for this analysis and in, in these samples and you can here uh, see the data see the drug resistant determinants and this is the predicted phenotype whether it is sensitive or resistant here is the percentage identity overlap high score uh, segment pairing length contacts how many contacts start and end position as well as the session id you can and if you want to uh, further uh, go for the if you want the detail analysis of this uh, particular drug resistant de determinants you may go through card database in card database you may get the entire information which are being uh, which has already been published in literature so this is what i have prepared and these are the steps what i have gone, gone through to predict the drug resistant determinants from the raw sequences of nanopore uh, nanopore data and uh, thank you this is what i have prepared one question so any questions Let me see if there is a question. How to? Okay, no, this is not a question for the meeting. Uh, okay, let's see. If we have a question. So, no, there is no question actually. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, so that that was very informative uh, talk actually, um, and it helps uh, other students and other trainers. And then if they will think about it, they'll watch the videos again and again. And let's see how they are uh, working on with it. Yeah, so that's uh, you need to see and practice how to install, how to use. and uh, by practice only again uh, same thing applies to as i was telling in python programming that you need some practice before uh, you start making discovery and uh, yeah so uh, thank you thank you uh, thank you sir if, let's see if they have some question no i am you watching both the places youtube Yeah, so this is virtual meeting, and without cup of tea, people are feeling more tired. So let them have cup of tea. And uh, yeah, so that's that's brings us towards end of the very good session. And I thank uh, Dr. Ashu and Dr. Harpreet uh, for taking on different lanes. Uh, they're telling us about galaxies, uh, India's a uh, future plans, how the budgets will be governed, how the manpower will be generated, how. bioclues will be participating uh, 
it make it happen and also uh, the they have wonderful uh, uh, resource persons in their mtech who, who are trained on different aspect of galaxy already so uh, looking forward for a dedicated meeting when they are coming uh, up uh, in uh, some time and then uh, we all will be uh, joining that time to train ourselves and training is always required so galaxy itself evolved over a year uh, earlier it was only one server now it's uh, three different servers in three different locations and uh, handled by very dedicated teams actually so the teams uh, um, not in us but i personally know in germany and uh, also in australia they are handled by very strong team support and now in mtech uh, uh, is a very big organization uh, and has handled in the world largest uh, database uh, content in terms of number of outputs so and also several research discoveries so uh, it's a backup by strong uh, team uh, headed uh, by dr ashu so we are very thankful that they quickly joined it, uh, us that uh, they provide some yeah, uh, initial training or the detailed trainings they will announce and they'll look, keep watching them uh, uh, on social media and as well as on their home pages. They will come up with a detailed plan in join bio clues and you'll get a lot of ideas. Uh, yeah, so with this, we'll end this session. And we are really thankful again to uh, Harpreet, uh, Ashu, and bio clues and all the uh, team effort uh, and also the participants and the organizers uh, uh, from organizers are part of that uh, everybody is contributing and then uh, we had team a uh, team up with the uh, team up with the e dot uh, software solutions and cassid and other organizations so that they help us in hosting uh, today meet this meeting and they took uh, it's a uh, totally non-profitable system so they, they bring their staff they're supporting us to make things happen and uh, it is a really uh, really tough uh, task actually sitting and uh, hosting now we will end up and we have to edit the videos so uh, basically thank you everyone and uh, there's a wonderful support here and with this uh, uh, we will end the session for today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Arpit. It was uh, a wonderful platform uh, to interact with so many, uh, you know, young, young researchers. Thank you, Anshu, and thanks for uh, young researchers from uh, Impact. They have given a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we can stop the live uh, meeting, actually. Yeah, sure.